time for us to like nope. talk shit about everything. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, we just need a separate podcast because sometimes I really want to have some of these conversations we start and are forced out of by the stream starting. Wow. <laughs> the conversations are actually that interesting. I mean, they're interesting to me. Maybe it's just because I'm a little. I mean, I have fun, but you know, does, yeah. would anybody else want to listen to us talk? Well, sorry, I, my podcast. I don't mean like I, I mostly mean to inflict on other people, not for their own good. <laughs> More importantly, <laughs> would anyone else want to listen to me talk? Nick, That's the real issue. Listen, I'm just gonna go on record again as saying like I find you very charming, and would maybe because it's like I've, I've watched what we do in the shadows and like really love Laszlo, I would totally listen to a podcast from you. <laughs> I, would I think you mean Tommy Day Toda. You're just projecting uh, your affection for Laszlo on me at this point. Yes, re- I'm not gonna regular lie. human bartender. There, is, there has been a, a commensurate uh, increase in my affection for you based on me watching that show. Hi, <laughs> I'm Nick feeling. Daytona, regular <laughs> human <laughs> narrative <laughs> designer. To be fair, to be fair, the last season, this latest season, does make Laszlo a like a 10 times better character and but like surely surely without spoiling anything you could also see the parallels where nick would do a lot of the same things right drew <laughs> all right i'm gonna watch the show just so i can find out how insulted wait 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 wait, wait. you haven't watched he the show at all he hasn't seen it he has no, no idea i've been catching up on other stuff he has it's no idea list. it's an autobiography and when what you is... play 17 D games a week you don't have time to watch tv it's... and that's also Ow. fucking true also frankly true. like I have a I have a very full social <laughs> schedule. <laughs> Running graveyard shifts on these D and D campaigns. Which is exactly this is why he's Laszlo. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I have a very full, uh, very social, full engagement social engagement schedule. Engagement schedule. Having that was copious that was, coitus. The inflection was intentional, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of thing that Laszlo would do unironically. He That's, I am agreeing show. with you. Just watch the fucking show Just already. Watch the show. I, I've, 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 seen, I've seen most of the first season. I'll go back and watch more seasons. Promise. Oh Soon. my god. Soon. I am... <laughs> please. Please. Just, just watch it. I, I, I vow that I will watch all the remaining episodes of what we do in the shadow. Alright, thank you. Thank you. My next, so, session. So, my next session. My next session. Wait, hold not on. Not my next session. <laughs> 100% not by next session. Sounds lazy to me. I feel like you just left it open ended there, and like we have no means of actually holding you accountable, and now I'm disappointed. Uh, anyway, well, let's carry let's on. Backtrack, and it, are you guys capable of holding me accountable for anything anyway? No. No. Oh, that's no. true. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, in Arctis, uh, last session, you all decided to go visit the Dragon's Lair of the Crystal Dragon, Prismata. After encountering a group of uh, El Bandito Incompleto outside, you all decided to uh, murder them with impunity. Except one, uh, which after giving her severe trauma, you brought her back to life and let her run off into the untamed wilderness. Hang on, hang on. I never interrupt your... uh, (laughs) But I fucking have to interrupt your recap this time. (laughs) I offered... Every single bandito I murdered a chance to surrender. Every single one. And all but one of them didn't even think twice before trying to murder the shit out of Flicks. And then the one that was considering got murdered by a sword. Not one of us, a sword. So uh I'm just saying we don't we don't own that trauma. That's that's all that's all I'm saying. Okay. So uh see if you ever you know, you guys have all played World of Warcraft. If you ever say uh something in Baron's chat that's wrong and everybody corrects you, this is how I'm going to do recaps for the rest of the time that we do D D. So I'm gonna do them wrong and then so so Flix hops in and is like, No, 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 this is actually how it went. Oh, and then I can no. just sit Truly. back and I can just sit back and just let him recap the whole thing. And be like, ah, oh, that's how it went. Thank you. Yeah, but now now I know what you're doing, so. <laughs> I, I don't know if I will have the willpower to not correct you anyway, but I know what you're doing. <laughs> Man Crick's wife! Lol! <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, Crystal Dragon, Prismata. Uh, you, yes, you did give all of the Goliaths a chance to surrender. And then, oh yeah, my favorite part when you is when you were like, surrender, and then Akasha Badoms a dude. <laughs> or just like, uh, no, turns into a Tyrannosaurus, and you're like, while he's grappled in the T-Rex's mouth, Surren- surrender! And he's like, ah, I'm being eaten alive! 
I think that guy actually was going to surrender, to be fair, until Flick shot him. Uh, pretty sure he wasn't going to surrender. Yeah. Well, well, now we'll never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move past it. (laughs) So after (laughs) uh, scattering the Goliath pillagers and the giant to the four winds, you all entered the cave and descended deep into the crystal spire mountains of Borealis. Now within this uh, abnormally moist cave, as I described, the first curiosity you saw appeared to be an inn of sorts uh, that was assembled deep within this dragon's cave. And upon entering it, you ran into some very curious twisted creatures that were lurking under the, uh, the tables. And as you went inside and began to investigate your surroundings, Rain discovered that the, uh, the barrels were full of a very interesting blue uh, glittering powder that upon opening seemed to sap the magic and the flight from Flix. Progressing a little bit further into the cave, Flix uh, found another cache of barrels and uh, crates, but also very strange, twisted, crystalline, almost spider-like humanoid creatures around uh, a large um, alchemical jug-like device. You didn't get a good look. But otherwise, you're all, you are all crammed into this uh, very, very tight cave surrounded by spider webs. And you may proceed. So just to make sure I understand, last we, last we met, um, Flix had just come back and given us the, uh, the DL on what was down the corridor, correct? Am I, is that right? Uh, so let mm-hmm. me, I will... Uh, Flix, if you describe the creatures that you saw, at least one of them looked something like this. Mm -hmm. Tattered robes, a crystalline staff, and crystals growing out of its uh, insect-like carapace. Honestly, it it was revolting. It looked very much like the uh, dumb animals that, or at least the seemingly dumb animals that we just fought, but it was wearing clothing and their f- its face was like a uh, like an elongated, elongated lotus pod, if you've ever seen one of them. Hmm. Oh, I always wonder, terrible. why do creatures like this wear clothing? Do you suppose they have some sense of modesty? They just like it because it looks cool, right? And he points to the hat. He's like, this serves no real function other than making me look great. Or because right, it's unnerving. So do they have intricate social lives when they're not invading our realm and despoiling things? Hey, I don't know. We don't really have much like life balance with work, right? We are just always eh, working and, and honestly, we are only really friends because, you know, we, I feel like we have to be around each other. Oh, I think we'll be friends anyway. Not to mention that this is fun for me, most of the time. Oh, it's good to know. Eh, so, before we go and, and deal with whatever this is, eh, you two are not Hey, fully ready for combat, it seems. Maybe gather up and I just, you know, make sure we're all good to go. Uh, I appreciate that. Let's do it quietly, though. They are not far away. Should we back out into the other room? Well, mm-hmm. it already happened. Akashba hit the button, so... <laughs> Akashba okay. slams a prayer of healing. Yeah. All right. That's much better. Thank you. Should we... Uh, it does no. take ten minutes, so if you'd like to uh, do that in the other room, you may. All right. Yeah, come over here. Probably safer. Should we also make sure that No gets that healing? Yes, I I will do it for I will do it for you. Because I think No is pretty fucked up. Yeah. Uh, Akashba, I guess, prays for ten minutes about bear stuff. There's more of those barrels. Can't we at least destroy these? I don't think we should. I think we should. I think we should leave. It's a dangerous weapon that should be eliminated. Eh, how would we, but would it still be in a room? Maybe, like, we have to move them? It seems like... I don't think it will take anything more than destroying those sigils. After all, the amount that Akasha, that uh, rain removed from the barrel lost its potency rather quickly. Give it a shot. Uh, not really my area. It seems like more like a rain thing, maybe. 
Mind you, before we do anything of the sort, I plan to be far, far away from them in the event that it allows their magic draining influence to expand considerably. I am generally a pretty big fan of things that are not actively harming us, that we only partially understand, leaving it well alone so it does not, we don't cause undue harm unintentionally. I don't think there's any reason to destroy them right now. Well, I want to destroy them because I hate them. No, I I understand. I'm saying that that's not a that's not a reason. Um, it it's a most reason. certainly it's, is a reason. It's, it's not, not a very good. reasonable reason. It's a good reason too. Yes, what and what happens if you try to destroy them by pouring them out or blowing them up or whatever, and then you infuse that shit all over your fuzzy little face, well, and then you're not able to fly ever? Face will be far away from them before we do anything. So you want us to destroy them? Well, someone surely. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, everybody make me a perception check, please. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Rain is just irritated. Uh, okay. okay. We're, we're busy bickering and we miss We're just going to get mugged because we're too busy telling Flakes this is a dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking laugh it up, Fuzzball. <laughs> yes, let's, let's blow. Let's Yuck just blow up. up. Let's just blow up the magical trap arcane barrels and see what happens. Sounds great. Okay, well, to business in hand, uh, maybe we just go to where this thing is and fight it there and just ignore barrels for now. Well, do we do we want to go down that hallway or do we want to at least explore some of these side rooms first? Well, make sure we're like not this. leaving something behind us. Well... If we explore these side rooms first, then we're certainly leaving those things behind us. Well, at least we and know given that they're carrying staffs and wearing robes. I'm rather inclined to think that they probably wield some sort of magic. Not something I want sneaking up on me, you know. Yes, I wasn't saying that we should go through these doors and just keep going endlessly. My thought was at least see what's on the other side, make sure there's not like, you know, another room of these little shits waiting. Uh, the second one of those. Let's assume that they are some higher order entity than these calls for help. Yeah, but what if we open door and then other thing hears and then joins fight? It seems like it go bad though, right? Well, I, f- way, yes. I feel like they would have heard our commotion already in this room, and they would have come and they did not. Hey, what if they did? And even by the way, that they're... that western door is open. Oh, I'm sorry. That would that's an oversight. We would have closed it on the way through. <laughs> 13 <laughs> minutes later. Yeah. Hey, Rain, I'll let you take charge here. You just tell me whether you want me to put big bear body. I, I'm not I'm not saying that we should necessarily fully explore whatever's on the other side of these doors. Maybe if it's just like a single room, that's fine. But then we've at least cleared them and we can move on. Or we know that they maybe go deeper into the cavern or something like that. And we just make a note of it just to I mean, make sure that there's not I'm something just, lurking. I'm just not sure what the difference is between... So you're just saying examine both adjacent rooms in order to make sure they don't contain any nasty surprises. Precisely. I I mean, we fought these things in here and those other things didn't come running. Um, but those, who's to say that those things can't... Like, we know these things had some psychic capabilities. Who's to say that those things don't command them and wouldn't call them from rooms away? Great. Excellent. Joshua just shrugs. And Flix puts his little paws on his hips and frowns. I'm uh, fine. Rain is just going to make a perception check on this side of the door. I will assist Rain in perceiving. Shit. <laughs> I did not need to do a goddamn thing. <laughs> Shh, Rain, listen! Listen! <laughs> listen, Steve! Oh, Rain! <laughs> uh, Rain, you hear a low, almost rhythmic rumbling that uh, picks up even under your fingertips. You can press your hand against the uh, the wood of the wall and feel a very, very low bass rumble. Does it have like the cadence of like breathing? No. Um, more of a seismic and random. Hmm. Sounds like some kind of seismic activity in here. Oh, that seems perfectly safe. Yeah, this whole place sucks. Um, <laughs> have we checked these doors for traps? 
I know I didn't check them for traps, so why am I even asking the question? No, we haven't. And you should. You're much better at spotting them than I am. Uh, Akashiba guidance is... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Too well, late. Too Akashiba late. Did you go ahead and guidance for the next check. <laughs> uh, so he just puts his hand on Rain's shoulder and he's like, oh, give it your best. Come back. Rain's already about halfway through uh, checking this lock before you feel the fuzzy paw of Akashiba on your head. <laughs> Bless this mess. Akashiba just giving out head pats like this is a bad slice of life. <laughs> anyway. I want a head pat. No, you are uh, not. You misused the light last time. No head pads for a while. Well, I apologize for that, and the light liked me very much. Thank you. Oh, Bear has very long memory. Now let's focus up. Uh, Rain, <laughs> you, you look at the door for traps, and in fact, uh, the door is missing most of its knob, and it's rotted around the doorknob area. Uh, hmm. You doubt this has a trap, let alone a lock. Well, here goes nothing. Everybody be ready. Yes. I'm going to hide over here. All right. Mm -hmm. like Rain, you open the, the door. <clears throat> Excuse me. You open the door uh, to a hallway beyond. It's a large cavernous room with deep indentations in the door. Or excuse me, uh, in the floor, not in the door. Flix, you going to bring your crossbow over here for a moment. Hmm. Do I sense any hostility? Any warnings from crossbows? No, you do not. Nothing yet. Okay. Well, why don't I take a look a little bit further in? Be my guest. Um. Brace yourselves. Actually, Rain at the doorway is going to make a perception check. Just peering in to see if she can see anything. Okay. Yeah, same. Um, do you want separate rolls or separate rolls, need... please? So, add add your D four, Rain. Well, I guess. Uh, I'll, I'll hold on to guidance for this one. Okay. Like right. a, a D four is not going to make a huge difference there, I don't think. Uh, yeah. the Rain, the rumbling seems to persist, but it doesn't get any louder when you open the door. Uh, Flix, you hear a faint crackling sound coming from inside and to the right. Like, like a fire? Like a like fire. A... Hmm. Do you hear that? It's like a fire burning. Do we hear it when he points it out? Uh, no, you do not. All right. Gosh, well, gosh, rugs. Like I said, brace yourselves. Uh, Christina, do you want me to roll stealth or shall you? Uh, I will roll it for you. Okay. Okay, go ahead. As you walk in through the door, you notice that the... Oh, excuse in. me. Fly in 10 feet up through the door. Thank you. Uh, you look down at the floor and you notice that the, uh, the... The cemented floor has very deep indents on it. Um, they're circular and go down about... About a foot into the earth. And around the corner, to your right, you see a couple of mats laying on the ground. Carpets with fringe, uh, and what appears to be a small, dusty altar. Hmm. Uh, is there anything about these indentations that suggests any kind of animal layer, scratch marks, discarded bits of things that have been eaten, anything like that? Uh, make me a survival check. Oh, um, I'm terrible at that too. Let's see. Thirteen. There are a few scattered remains of bones here and there, but it's hard to tell what from. Something larger, possibly humanoid. Yeah, one way or another, this was a settlement, so it's weird that there are bones scattered around here. Like, there's something notable about that, I presume? But the bones are uh, certainly notable, but there uh, were also some bones in the previous room. But those were probably more from animals. Um, do the bones look like they were splintered? Or chewed on, or are they whole? Uh, the bones appeared to be uh, snapped as if broken in half. Hmm. Do, 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 do. I'll sit back. All right. I'm whispering, but I'm going to speak full voice because Mike's and whispers. All right. In the next room, there are indentations. There are a scattering of bones, uh, possibly humanoid-sized. Uh, 
many of which appear to have been snapped. And there's an altar on the right with some... Were they torches or braziers burning next to it, Christina? Uh, candles. Oh. With candles burning to either side of it. Uh, what did the altar look like? Uh, here it looks like an altar to, to uh, Tiamat, but... Uh... Uh, it looks like a small serpentine altar with uh, multiple headed snakes, each of a different color. Okay, I described that. Hmm. Does that mean anything? Uh, you can make me an arcana or a history check. Religion? I would allow that as well. Okay. I will roll <clears throat> history. All right. You all kind of scratch your heads and think about what that altar could possibly mean. Uh, Rain, your arcana check gives you a, a very unsettling feeling in your stomach. Multi-headed serpents of different colors either mean possibly one of two things where you're from. Hydras, which are also bad news, uh, or more commonly, uh, followers of the uh, deep dragon Tiamat. Well, that's unfortunately on par for, I guess, somewhat of what we were expecting. So you're thinking the, so this this uh, Tiamat, what she doesn't like other dragons? What's the story? Don't dragons well, like each other generally? Well, didn't I think the chorus explained some of this, right? Um, yeah, Tiamat is. Oh no, we learned a bit a little bit about this after we fought the Abishai. That it was you did. some, yeah, it was some creature related to Tiamat, some evil dragon god of some kind. Oh, so you think her followers came here to mess with Prismata? I mean, that's my my understanding is the dragons, different dragons, have different proclivities, and the fact that Prismata is at odds with Rhyme Fang, is it? Yes. Rhyme Fang, yes. yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Rhyme Fang would be one of, I mean, I assume that there was a white dragon, as or white snake head as part oh, of it? Oh, they were, they were, they were multicolored, multivarious. I'm sure that there was a white one. So, I mean... Blue, red, green, white, black. It's it's possible that these are agents at the direction of Rhymefang, or maybe they're entirely separate agents. Well, entirely. The Abishai had at least some relation to the orcs beneath the Geothermic Rift. We know that. They helped it orchestrate the situation to what ends. We're not really sure, and I, I'm pretty convinced that the orcs are kind of witless morons in all of this, but... Right, this is my my attention is flagging because this is a whispered conversation and that's a lot of talking for whispers. I think that there are predators in the next room, but I'm not certain of it. Do you want to traverse it or seal this chamber and check the other? Hmm. Is is it just the one chamber? It's largish. It looks yes. like a natural cavern. Well, I think if perhaps um 30 feet by 40 or 50 feet? Well, I think if if nothing comes out of it right now, I think it satisfies at least some curiosity for now. Um, those things, the indentations don't look like they're holes dug, like something could be lurking in burrows there. I'm not sure. Hmm. I've never studied how the earth moves, so I'm not sure I'd be able to tell the difference. That's fair. Well, I... I'm okay if we check the other, the next room, close this door for now. Um, it can't be locked, but maybe we can barricade it with some of this furniture. Just at the very least, it would maybe take a little bit, whatever it might be in there, some more time to uh, assault us. Uses, starts using Mage Hand to pick up like mugs and starts piling them against the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mage Hand is, can only lift up to five pounds. You start picking Correct. up. Uh, <laughs> light items and start uh, delicately placing them in front of the door. Rain will come over. Uh, Akasha, but can you help me with some ah. of these crates of of tinkering? <laughs> and we will carry some of the crates over <laughs> and stack in front of the door. All right, both of you, please make me uh, an athletics check. Oh, I'm just helping Akashiba, so uh, I'm doing the, I'm taking the help action. Okay, you can, you can help action, Akashiba. Uh, 
Kashiba casts Guidance on his bicep. Nice. He just taps it and he's like, we got this, eh? We can do it. <laughs> Guide these guns. <laughs> Forgive my enemies because I won't. Light cleric guns out, sun's out. Y you have advantage because I'm, I'm assisting. Yes, you have advantage. Okay. Roll another uh, athletics check, please. Okay. So All right. Be 16. 16. Uh, Akashiba, with your gauntlets of ogre power, you are quite, quite strong. Uh, you lift one of these crates with relative ease, and it makes a very horrible clattering and clanging sound as all the cogs and sprockets kind of grind together. Uh, it's very loud. Akashima kind of grimaces, and, and he's like, eh, doing things quietly, not my forte, and then begins walking it over. <laughs> uh, with a very jangly jangle jangle. He walks over to the other side. Puts it down in front of the door. Jangle. Um, <laughs> and then steps back from it, kind of looking at Rain and shrugging. <laughs> you you toss it down, shattering a bunch of the mugs that I piled <laughs> against the door <laughs> super loudly. <laughs> oh my god. Well, if anything was going to hear us, I would imagine it would have heard that. So... Yes, perhaps we should immediately see about dealing with those things down the tunnel. There. I got a crate. I found one. Oh, it's so good. I was like, oh god, a secret entrance has appeared. <laughs> Helping. Great. Great. <laughs> Great. Great crate. Um, well, let me just listen to this door real quick. Okay. You still have guided, so. Oh, do I have well, I'll, I'll watch the other door. Uh, Rain will do perception at this door. I'm uh, I'm assuming the posture of the rebel soldiers before they got murdered by uh, stormtroopers <laughs> in the first Star Wars movie down here. <laughs> right. <clears throat> oh, Rain, you press your ear against the door and you hear the light sound of running water and a almost faint insectoid-like clicking. Oh yeah, there's definitely some shit on the other side of this door. I am um, holding an action to shoot anything in there. I didn't mean to open the door. Anything and anything <laughs> that opens this door. Okay, okay. Um, Akashiba, just help me put some of these barrels in front of that door real quick, and we should be good. There's going to be less clanging. Right, right. Akashiba peers suspiciously at the barrel. <laughs> just don't um, crack the lid. Don't crack the lid. He uh, blesses his guns again. Okay, guns are right. blessed. Uh, I assume you're uh, helping, right? Yeah. Oh, rip. Um, uh, help is with advantage. There, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. So, with it, with the guidance, so twenty-five. All right. Uh, Rain, what are you putting in front of the door? Uh, just these barrels that are full of like the sand substance. They're pretty big, right? Oh yeah. They are probably about four feet tall. Perfect. And just yeah. as heavy as the other ones. Great. So yeah, we just. Stack a couple no, of it's a barrel, of not a crate. Ha. Well, I don't think this is going to stop anything, but it will at least delay it. So, well, at the very least, I think someone should stay behind to uh, hold them off or warn us. Why not? No. No is in a corner. Uh, he is here. He's just in a corner, uh, mending his wounds. Yeah, don't forget to. Did he already get that thirteen hit points? I, I did heal him. Yeah. Wow. He was pretty fucked up. He was really yeah, fucked was. up. Yeah, what, what, no, why don't you look your wounds and warn us if anything bursts through, hmm? But no, no agrees to this. And, uh, let your lizard friend do most of the fighting, hey? Did, uh, did Noah already get the healing from the... He did. Yeah, 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 we just covered that. Okay, sorry. He also has, I also gave him a potion last time, too, so he has a potion, too, if he... Ends up okay. meeting it. All right. I'm frankly a little scared of these things in the next room, so let's murder them as quickly as possible, yes? Well, we just put a thing in front of the door. I assume we weren't murdering them. No, no, no. no, no. The I'm next talking room. about the, the, the tunnel. Uh, okay. But let's do so quickly, or carefully. There is a large, like a reactor, like one of the ones that we found in the, uh, the rift. Okay. So uh, fireballs uh, are not an option. Well... This door begins to rattle to the north. 
Okay. Uh, Akashpa is going to just go ahead and cast level two bless. Wait, this one? This door begins to rattle. Uh, you only need level... Oh, you need level two bless to hit all... Yeah. No, you hit three of us. You only need level one bless. But I'm hitting four of us because I assume no will see some combat. Uh, I am. I will remove no from this combat if you would like to cast a, a lower level oh, okay, bless. Oh, yeah, then it'll be, it'll be a level one bless. I think something is trying to get through this door over here, actually. Should we set up and wait for it to come through? Get the drop on it? Um, can we please move those barrels out of the way? If they burst open, I'm going to be useless. Mm. Flex your crossbow is going off. There is definitely an assault about to happen. And that's not... Is there anything happening on this side of the door? No. Okay, a right, is going yeah. to... I'm going to zip all the way over here. Put lots of things between me and the door. Rain will, like, set up behind the this table. Okay, Akashba will mm. get back here then. All right. Um, Are we not moving those barrels? The barrel, excuse me, the barrel in front of the door begins to shudder as the door goes. Bump. All right, well, I'm I'm holding an action to shoot the first thing that pops through the door that's hostile. Rain, Akashaba, what are you doing? Um, Akashaba is going to prepare an action for if um, at least three of those things get to about here. Um, a crash play is going to cast uh, Radiance of the Dawn. Ooh. Uh, and I am hiding if you want to roll it. Alright, give me one moment. Uh oh. Banger time! <laughs> Let me see them bangers. All right, since you all are prepared and ready to assault anything that comes through the other side of the door, the door begins to shake a little bit more violently now. And the barrel has given you enough time to have a full surprise round as soon as yeah. that door opens. Akashaba, Rain, and Flix, roll initiative for me. Oof. Uh, ooh, three. Nice. Uh, here, for some reason, it didn't take, so I'm just gonna put that in. Uh, mine was 27 total. 27? Oh, that's right, because we have Bless Up, so we get to add d4 oh okay all right so mine's technically a six christina all right it's six for kashima rain is a 10. very good is this piano banger music uh piano banger the door bursts open and behind the door an insect flutters and hovers buzzing looking at you with hollow multifaceted eyes. It lets out a shrill <coughs> and with a buzz begins to fly into the room. Flix, this is your surprise round. You're up. Yeah, uh, I shot it in the face for 25 damage with the first attack. Uh, let me, hold on, let me take a look. I'm assuming that a 19 hits, if not, I'll roll for uh, <clears throat> a 19 hits. Yeah, how much damage? 19? Uh, no, uh, 25. Sneak attack. 25, very nice. The yeah. Castlevania boss is what this music is say, telling me. Are these guys badass enough for this song? <laughs> Are they? And uh, 17 damage. Feels like fucking Sephiroth's gonna burst through the door. <laughs> uh, how much? He just did. How much total, Flix? 17. Oh, total, total? Yep. Um, I'm bad at math. 42? Let's see. 
17 plus. Yeah, yeah 42. 42. 42? Okay. Rob is good at that. Good lands. All right, Flix, your crossbow bolts both hit home, and the thing buzzes and thrums. <laughs> And I would like to see how, try to determine how much damage that I've done to its unfamiliar physiology. Insight, please. Uh, sorry, Akash, but I can hear the music in your uh, browser, in your uh, microphone. Um, I've never seen one of these things before. I have no idea. Yeah, what the hell is that? Rain, is you're up. Yes, thank you. Hmm. I'm gonna insight check it first. I'm actually going to turn it down a little bit. There we go. Nope. No idea. What is that? Dislike. Uh, God, it keeps getting yeah, it is appropriate. One second. I just imagine Rain having the berry from Resident Evil. What is this? Response. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Um... Rain will go ahead and, and cast haste on herself. All right, Rain, you are uh, hasted. I have marked you with haste. And that will be Rain's turn. Uh, do you take an additional action with your haste? Um... I don't think there's an action that I can really do because I can't cast two spells, so. Can't uh, you cast a cantrip with your hasted action? Do you have a range mm, cantrip? No, no, it's one weapon attack cool. only. It's a uh, one weapon attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use object. Oh. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I make another, I don't know, like, actually no, that, that's it, that's our turn. All right, Akashiba, you're up. Okay, uh, Akashiba's going to try to insight it. What would you like to know? Uh, let's see. Um, so we we have an HP bar, right? Like, did we get that from? No, we didn't. Okay, because I'm not seeing it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go with the HP bar for now. All right. There you are. Okay. Um. <laughs> Can I actually even shoot him from this angle? Uh, looks like you can. Okay. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, um, then Akashba is... Oh, apparently my bow's not equipped, never mind. Um, I, mean, I could throw the mace at it, but that seems like not a great use of this right now. In this place made of wood. Um... Shit, I don't really know what to do. Uh, Akash was going to cast a light cantrip. What happened to your, uh... Don't you have a, a range spell attack or a bow? Yeah, I had a bow, and I don't know if, like, when we were reshuffling my inventory, it just, like, it got unequipped, but, like, looking at my inventory right now, I do not see an equipped bow. Uh, let me look at your inventory. I see... Uh, there's your short, short bow. It's just, for some reason, unequipped. So I'm going to click it. There, it's equipped. Because okay. I know you have it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you yeah, refresh... Yeah, yeah. Uh, it should be there. Something happened to my character where all my shit got unequipped, so you might want to, like, go through No, no, it's just, that was, like, the one thing that was missing. Um, and oh, okay, I, just, okay. I always click on the actions tab to know what I can do, so, like, it just wasn't there, so I didn't see it. Um, okay. Akash was going to roll Sherpo. Oof. I'm gonna guess that doesn't hit even with Bless. Uh, it does. It will not. Okay. Um, that <laughs> is going to be the end of Akash Mr. You're... That's all you hear as the arrow twangs into the wall. Akashima looks over at Rain as he does it. Yeah, worth a shot. Literally. Surprise round is over. Normal combat begins. Top of the round. Round two. Flix, you're up. The bug, after bursting down the door, appears eager to come in and is trying to claw its way over the barrel. Um, can I see anything else in the room beyond it? Uh, I... Uh, no, you cannot. You see, uh, more barrels, what it looks right. like. I'm gonna shift over. 
Uh, there you can see pretty significantly down the hall. Uh, you can see what you see. There are more barrels okay. in your line there of sight. Are, there are not more opponents. Isn't there? In your line of sight, you cannot see any additional opponents. Okay. All right. Yep. In that case, I will shoot him. Shoot him! That's gonna miss. Ah, oh, that would that would hit hard. Uh, that will also likely miss, but let's find out just to be sure. It's a thirteen. Both of your shots miss, Flix. You hit well, pieces of barrel with your crossbow. It's merely flailing too hard. All right, and um, I was trying to aim for its head and missing. Uh, and I still have no idea about anything about this except for the fact that its face is gross. <laughs> Why is this so disgusting? All right, that's my round. Rain, you're up. Uh, you are blessed and hasted. Um, okay, uh, Rain is going to go right up here. Is it in range here? Like, is it? Do I have uh, to like step into the doorway? Let's see. You can hit it from there. Yeah. Okay. Seems like he's climbing uh, over the barrel. So. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, I was, he's I climbing over it. Clarify. Yeah. Uh, I will take a series of attacks. Uh, right. Wait, hold on. You're five feet away from it. A am I five feet away from it or not? Oh, sorry. I uh, so this would be adjacent. So okay, you're. So you're... it's not. It's like not coming through the door yet. It, it has not made its way through the door. No. Okay. Because it's so still climbing actually... over it. So you would have to be here. Okay. Um, can I get there? Uh, difficult terrain. It would be double the movement for one square. Okay. I mean, I have ample movement to do that then so yeah that's fine we'll step here uh you kick the barrel out of the way well, gently nudge it with my hip you know you want to spill uh, it yes. everywhere the the gentle nudging of the barrel of this thing is trying to tear apart Monsters, as it climbs yeah. over <laughs> uh so the first attack does six piercing damage and five fire damage okay or a total of 11 Second attack. Mm, probably does not hit, but we'll go ahead and. A uh, second attack. Uh, oh, misses. hang on, let me roll blast real quick. 15. And that misses. Okay, so then the third attack hits for 8 piercing. 8 piercing. Done. At least your rapier can pierce this thing's carapace. Um. Uh oh. Go ahead and insight. Fourteen insight. What would you like to know? Uh, let's go with attacks. Any melee attacks, particularly, I guess. Uh. That'll be most relevant to my needs. All right. The creature makes three attacks with its talons. You can expect something like this with its wicked claws. Hmm. A five foot reach and a lot of slashing damage from those wicked talons. All right, Rain is actually going then to, let's see, that was 5, 10, 10, All right, Rain is actually, oh, shit. Oh, Rain shuts the door on herself. Ah. Uh, Rain is going to go ahead and move back here and take an attack of opportunity. Okay. Oh, is it disadvantage? It is, but uh, that misses, so. Okay. It takes a swipe at you. And that is the end of Rain's turn. Akashiba, you're up. You are blessed. 
All right. Kashpa is going to step up here, which I think would put him within 10 feet. That is correct. Okay. Kashpa is going to go. Ooh. Oh, no, that misses. Okay. And then Akashpa is going to move back. One, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, Akashpa can move back. Great. Thanks, Mobile. Um, <laughs> and I think Akashpa, you know what? I think it's. How long does a summon. I need to check how long does it last. Spiritual weapon lasts. Only one minute. Uh, okay, Akashpa's gonna insight. That's probably gonna be it. Alright. Yeah, uh. Where was that earlier? Ooh, um, what, what would you like to know? Uh, just any other, like, special attacks you want to share. <laughs> Alright. Let's go with this one. These emissaries have a very alluring thrum that they uh, emanate from the core of their bodies. Each creature within 20 feet of the emissary that can hear it, and it is not an aberration, must succeed on a DC 14 constitution saving throw or be charmed for one minute. You can repeat your saving throw at the end of each of your turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. When my enemies are so hot that I lose my free will. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Mod okay. uh, That is going to end the turn. Flex, it's up to you! All right. Um, with all the, right. With this, nope, it's not Flix's turn. It is the thing's turn. Ooh. And it finally crashes through the barrel and moves through the door with a scree. Okay, well, it's a little bit better than that. <laughs> uh, one second, I'm just looking at something real quick. Sexy, stupid, sexy bug. Stupid, sexy bug. <laughs> Stupid, sexy Flanders. It's like it's wearing nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, come on, man. Uh, and it flies forward. Let's see. It's... it's really weird to me that that's a con saving throw and not a will saving throw. Yeah. It gets you right in your... Right I mean, in your we still bits. have advantage because... You give us advantage against charm effects. It doesn't matter what's Charm and fear. Are. Yeah. Yep. The bug no flies into the center of the room and begins emanating from itself a cloud of crystalline spores. They spread all over the room, even landing on the table and in the cups. Everyone within a uh, <clears throat> 15 foot radius, please make me a DC 14 constitution saving throw, please. Okay, literally crop dusting this whole goddamn room. Uh, don't you also get your bless. bless. Yep, you're blessed. Right, but we, don't, we don't have advantage on this, right? Because it's just fear and charm. Uh, uh, yeah. You don't, don't have a charm effect. This. It literally no. says that it. You're, this charm. is a, the wrong. It's this a is one. a different ability, guys. Yep, just making sure. Oh, okay. Well, I rolled a 15. Oh, boy. Got there. DC 14. Ooh. All right. Flix, you roll a 15 and succeed. Rain, you roll a 16 and succeed. Akashaba, you barely make it. But still make it. None of you become poisoned by the spores. Excuse me, I'm burping. But the correspond yeah, emissary spores. does not have a face to look shocked. Top of the round, round three. Flix, you're up. All right, I'm going to use the Rogue Steady Aim uh, ability to give myself advantage on this attack. Oh, Pog, okay. So I cannot move, and I'm using my bonus action to do it. I'll oh, Steady that. Aim. 21 oh, hits. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Flix, 20 damage from your crossbow will kill this bug as it spores in the air. What do you do? So it flutters over and starts thrumming. He just frowns slightly and looks for a spot in between all the carapace that looks particularly pulsy and gooey, and he shoots that. It makes a delightful splat noise. As you hit it right in its thrumming, uh, bug thrummer. <laughs> I forgot what the fucking part was! A thorax? Uh, yes! 
spherical? It could be a spherical. It, like it a, could be. Oh, it could be a spherical. Like right in its spinnerets. In the tum tum. Right in the the tum tum. <laughs> Flix is oh. a center round. <clears throat> um. It does. That's all my actions. Actually, I can't do anything else. All right. Rain, you're okay. up. Can I actually? Can I roll a perception check to see if there are any other threats? You can, uh, <clears throat> it's Rain's turn. Oh, all right. So sad. Mm. Uh, Rain will start with an insight check on the dead thing. Well, no, no. Uh, she'll move here. Okay. Uh, and make a perception check into this room to see if there's anything else hiding. All right. 19 total. Rain, you are blessed by the light, truly, but you see from down the hall a flutter of wings right about to round that corner. Oh, more of them are on the way. That's bloody awful. Well, let's set up and be ready to meet with it, yes? Watch for nods. Rain, what do you do? Um... Can I see it enough to shoot a ray of frost at it? Uh, this would have three quarters cover. All right. I mean, I'll take a shot. It's a cantrip, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, natural 20. What? <laughs> what? Nice. Cover yourself in this fucking frost bolt, idiot. Wow. All right. Oh, it actually rolled pretty well, too. Well, not on the, not on the crit damage. That's embarrassing, but... The rest of it. How uh, much damage, Rain? 15 cold damage, and it is slow to 10 feet. Uh, Lord. He's coming, but slowly. Uh, he is coming, but slowly. Uh, hang on, I just need to look at something real quick. Okay. Slowed by how many feet? 10 feet. And it was 15 cold damage? Yep. All right. And I guess uh, I'll go slowed. ahead and fight him. Uh, you pretty much snipe that guy coming around the corner. Uh, five uh, is not high enough, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not going to roll. I'm not even going to roll bless there. Uh, Range is going to take a step back and prepare herself. That's it. All right, Akashaba, you're up. Eh, how many more did we see today? Uh, just the one so far, coming around a corner. But it's coming from the direction of that other room that Flix found, so be ready for more. Kashba nods. Um, going to prepare a um, scorching ray um, for the first thing that uh, appears. So it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be this. It's from the... Um, thing that I have. The circle of the blasting. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Alright, Akasha, yeah. you hold action? Yep. Yeah. Alright. Top of the round. Next round. Flix, you're up. Uh, uh, Flix, is... you cannot see from your position what Rain is talking about. Hmm. Alright. That's fine. I will... Bonus action to hide, and I will shoot the buzzing thing as soon as it appears. All right, let me see your hide check, please. All right, great. All right, two held actions coming up next. Uh, this thing slowed by 15 feet. 10, uh, 10 feet. Oh, 10, I'm sorry. 10 feet, B speed, okay. Uh, it flies, okay. Okay. Five. Okay, I okay. shoot it as soon as it appears. Here. Okay. All right, uh, go ahead and flick. Perceive me, or do I have advantage on the attack? Uh, hold on, let me see if it can possibly perceive you from there. Uh, I need to look at its... Perceptions, hang on. Uh, 
Uh, are you flying, Flix? Uh, I am. Sorry, I should have adjusted. I am sort of hiding behind the table. So uh, please, ad please I've... adjust your um, height. I mean, I am flying, but I'm like crouched and hiding behind the table. Okay. Um, it will be very important if uh, uh, during this dungeon for you to keep track of your height. So uh, whatever it states from here on out is going to be the rule of law. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, it cannot see you. Okay. Okay, Ooh, is that a crit? crit? It is a crit. Yep. We're really bad at this crit damage thing, though, aren't we? Uh, yeah. yeah. That was almost, what was that like? Just bloody awful. Yeah, I rolled a one on the d6. Yeah, that was awful. That's all right. Because the attack. sneak attack damage Woo! is whopping 15. All right, so uh, 19 and 15, 34. All right, that thing comes around the corner flying. And you just hear a thwack! You like shoot it and it's like insecty throat thing. Um, so I also was holding a prepared action for it, but I don't see it on the map. That is correct. You Flix has a hundred and twenty foot dark vision, so he can okay. see further than you, so he triggers before you. Sounds good. Um Oh, and this isn't well it is my turn. I'm gonna inside check it. Go ahead. Uh what would you like to know? Okay, well I fought the other one, so now I know what makes them tick a little bit more. I'd like to know how many hit points it has left. All right, here it comes. There you go. How oh, beautiful. Wow, I, we wrecked this fool already. That's beautiful. Flix, does that end your round? There are no other actions I can take. All right. Uh, Akashaba, let me know when you can see it. Okay. I can see it. Okay, go ahead and take your reaction. Okay. Uh, roll it just anyway, but I doubt it. Is. And unfortunately, Eleven. that misses. Okay. Um, does it still consume the charge? Yes. If you okay. if you miss and cast a spell, it still consumes the slot. Okay. Cool. Um, and Akashba will insight. Uh, you still have uh, two you, more ways to shoot. Wait, wait. Uh, if you hold if you're holding an action, you only get one action. So your Scorching Ray would be your action. Oh, but it's three rays, so you still need to roll two more attacks. Yeah. Uh, so you oh, get your okay, full sorry. rays, but you won't get an insight. Okay, cool. So, um... Oof. Uh... uh Plume of Beasts? Uh, Eleven? <laughs> Plume of Beasts? No. Okay, and last one... Oh, hey. crit! Okay! Okay, does everybody want a crit a today? So what is it? Is it just double 2d6? So it's 2d4? Or 4d6? Uh, 4d6. Uh, roll damage might do it. Uh, you can just click yeah, you, to it. if you click uh, on the roll damages on the uh, the VTT. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it should it detects the crit and will roll it correctly. So fifteen. Hey guys, we all crit this guy. You did high fives, high fives all around. Uh, between the crossbow bolt, the blast, uh, this thing is looking in terrible condition as it makes it your. As it makes its way towards your position. Sorry, can't talk today. If I were it, I'd just turn around and leave. It's just like, uh, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so you both took your reactions. So now I am going to finish this bug's turn. Uh, because it is still moving, but it is slowed by rain stuff. Um, boop. And I believe that was its full move. Uh, I need to check to see if I can actually make any attacks. Uh, all right, we're going to Desperation Thrum. Okay. Him, him, the bug begins, emanating his alluring thrum. Rain, make me a DC 14 constitution saving throw. And I'm immune. Ah! Rain, you're up. <laughs> He's like the poor orc, like, he doesn't charging, know. He uh, doesn't know. Helm's deep to, like, blow up the mines. Just getting lit up by a leg loss. the bug is like offended, like when you hit on someone and they don't respond, you're like, what are you just not Hem. Hem. Uh Rain will step up and make some attacks. Uh is a 19 hit. A 19 hits? 
rejected and just uh, ooh. takes six piercing damage and eight fire damage. Uh, Ray, so, this strike will kill the spawn. What do you do? Say your uh, name bugs. <laughs> she just like bisects him like at the midsection, like very like samurai set slash. <laughs> and with a final the bug falls silent and flops onto the floor and the room goes quiet again no more thrumming and do you think that was the last of them only one way to find out Ryan will make a perception check while she's in the room yeah, totally. I think that's absolutely the last of them. Mm-hmm. Akashiba easily bounds over the barrel because he's such a mobile bear and then uses a perception check of his own. He's going to guidance himself first. He's going to once again tap his bicep, even though it's using... You're, you are oh, blessed. Yeah. blessed. You have blessed, yeah. And in oh, fact, so. giving yourself guidance would get rid of blessed because guidance is a concentration. <sighs> Never mind. Fuck that. Yeah. How do I work my hands? Uh, and then bless. 14. All right, hold on. I'm going to pause it right there as I take a look at what you can see. There's some blue back here. I don't like that. Uh, Ikashiba, from for what you can see as you take a look around, to the north, you see a faint blue light. And it seems to be emanating from a larger metallic structure. You also see additional barrels around you, some of them turned over and empty. You also see dusty mugs surrounding you, Sac uh, sacks that are currently bulging with God knows what, and a thick amount of spider webs. There's also a discarded can of dried paint on the ground, and a, uh, a paintbrush stained with paint of uh, an unknown color because it's dark vision and you can only see in black and white. To the east, you see uh, the hint of another faint blue light that you can only see a sliver of it. Hmm. There's something, uh, something blue up there. This is a kind of blue light. Otherwise, more paths. You know, any gestures at the barrels? He's like, more barrels? It's nothing immediately concerning. I am kind of glad that we ended up fighting those things and we didn't fight them alongside whatever's in the other room, but it's a little bit concerning that things in the other room do not come with. Uh, that one came from up and to the left, came around the corner, which I think Flix would connect with the room you saw, yes? Probably? It's impossible to know for certain. Well, should we backtrack here and go deal with those scary things while we are still prepped for battle? Well, we have two problems. One, if those things heard that there was battle happening here, then our approach takes us down a very narrow hallway directly toward them. If they are spellcasters, that will hurt quite a bit. Unless we if, try to utilize this other path up here and to the left. Indeed. If we, if that path leads to them, then I think it might give us a more direct approach. Do we to well, check? Sure, but maybe do it quickly while we still have our preparations up. Indeed. I'll be as swift as I can. Um, yep, I will zip this way. While you're doing that, I'm going to go run to the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. Uh, how, how, how hefty are these spider webs, uh, Christina? Like, uh, are they flicks catching spider webs, or are they just These normal... appear to be normal spider webs, not thick or, uh, you know, relatively juicy like you've seen in the previous caverns. Okay, so I don't have to worry about getting stuck in them, basically. No. Okay, um... I am going to. I mean, I'm being quiet to, or or as stealthy as possible, like uh, peeking I will, around corners and such. I will roll stealth for you. Okay. All right, go ahead. And okay, flix one moment as I just describe the scene that you see. Uh, inside this room, you see a large mechanical uh, alchemical structure, has a metallic lid, and a tube that leads to another uh, what appears to be a storage device. The lid on top is connected to a large, uh, a very large glass central chamber. And in the chamber, it appears to uh, be full of some sort of 
blue blue liquid, blue scintillating goo or goop. Um, there are also four other large tanks around it. There's a bunch of uh, dials and labels at a central point uh, around here. All or right. you could potentially uh, uh, control it. Otherwise, there's a lot of pipes and barrels and uh, things in this Let's area if, if you wanted to take Lix a look. learned anything while he was in the volcano. Oh, uh, yeah. Do I have any inkling of what's going on here for the 19 Arcana truck? Whatever is going on here looks to be very similar as to what was happening in the geothermic rift. But the thing that you notice right away, uh, because you had an intimate experience with it, was uh, you, you managed to taste some of that strange orange powder previously. <clears throat> Do you remember that, Flix, in the geothermic oh, rift? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was delicious. Uh, some of those containers and canisters uh, sitting around, this entire structure seems to be uh, like a large version of that. So it's like a giant alchemical battery. It seems to be some sort of a giant alchemical processor. Hmm. Is there a place to put? Is the, Are these places to put the uh, orange uh, stuff? Or is this where orange powder is emerging from, or is this some other substance that's emerging from it? Uh, these things appear to be where the orange powder would be uh, expelled into. Uh, but it is not orange. It's blue. Is it the same awful blue powder that was in the other barrels? Uh, it looks to be one in the same. Alright, you can unpause. Okay. I'm back. Alright. Peeking around the corner. Haha. -ha. Alright, so I can see this fellow. I'm just peeking around the corner, by the way. I'm like hiding put next to this barrel. Let's drop me a little bit. <clears throat> um, uh, you will right need to be at floor there. level. You'll need to be at zero feet if you're going to hide behind a barrel. Uh, okay. Uh, I figured that I was like within that five foot thing. All right, hiding behind a barrel, though. All right. Uh, you see your strange crystalline friend. It appears to be walking about, click-clacking on the ground, and it seems to dip a spindly finger into the blue powder that this machine is uh, expelling. And it lifts it up and tilts its head from side to side as if it's examining it. All right. Okay. Well, before I'm spotted, I'm gonna run. Okay. Actually, uh, before I move, let me get a sense of the measurements because Flix would. Another one. Skitters into view. All right. So, uh, again, whispering. I was correct. Uh, in that this offers us a probably better approach. Um, you can see up where this that tunnel enters the larger chamber, yes? Just know that there's a corner there because I saw it coming around. I don't he, exactly see where it is from here. It's here. Sure. Well, that's a larger chamber, at the center of which is a large alchemical contraption mm -hmm. that's expelling yep. uh -huh. more of that awful yep. blue powder. Yep, of course. Mm -hmm. Rain is, like, rapidly talking to you because she is still under the effects of haste. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, uh, yes, okay, yes, are we, so, yes, yes are we 30 going? feet, we 30 go? feet to the northwest, yes. there's mm -hmm. an entryway, and Great. then two more creatures, 30 Great. feet beyond that. Yes, If kill, we murder. are sneaky murder, and quick, we should be yep. able to mm -hmm. surprise them. I'll go Great. the other way and mm -hmm. distract them. Yep. Yep, got it. Understood. Yep, Ready? Let's go. Okay. Yep. Start moving. As Rain, as Rain is like talking really fast, Akash is <laughs> just doing like the uh, the fucking anime nod continuously. Like, mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, I am hauling ass down this side so that I can distract them. Uh, uh, verticality check, please, Flix. Oh. Hauling ass. Uh, let's do it at. Uh, this is. I've got ten foot ceilings all the whole way, right? Yes. 
Uh, let's let's do five feet. Five feet is fine. Rain basically will count to like six, basically giving uh, Flix exactly one round, and then she's gonna go. Like okay. a normal six or a hasted six? Exactly. Okay. But yes. Uh, and as soon as I reach this point, I'm going to shoot one of them and then duck around the corner. All right, one moment. I think it'd be a little bit awkward. <laughs> Use a pincer attack. All right, all of you, roll initiative for me. Yeah, boy. We roll blood. Ooh. Uh, total of six. Actually, Christina, I given that I haven't shot it yet, uh, can I cast darkness instead? I want to shoot from my little ball of darkness. They probably see through it with my luck, but... Uh, right? You already declared your attack, but... Um... Yeah, but I haven't rolled it yet or anything like that. I'm just... I prefer to do it this way. I will, I will allow you to do whatever it is you would like to do on your turn. There we go. Okay. One second. Okay. I figured my attack was what was triggering the initiative, which is why I asked. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, you think it is. <laughs> Rain's going whether she knows what you're doing or not. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, I suppose that I would have had to have taken the round to... You know what? That's fine. I would have had to have taken I, the round as darkness. Instead, I used the round should, to move should there and shoot. So you, we'll yeah, that. you did. Because I yeah. this initiative is firing off on your shot and not firing off on your spellcasting. So things would happen differently. So I'm going to have to veto you. Sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. It makes sense now that I think about it. Uh, my initiative is actually a 21. 21? Okay. Sorry, I had to roll that because it's not recording. One second. This is this banger is a little too loud. There we go. Uh, top of the round apparently is rain. Rain. Uh, so rain gave basically gave Flix a round to get into position, and she's just going. So uh, she's good. Yeah, this is this is the time. Maybe we were supposed to wait for Flix. <laughs> Akasha was says no, no time. Raid's had like an entire Red Bull. It's go time. Um, Rain can get here. And you know what? She's going to go ahead. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and use our last charge of Blade Song to go 5, 10, 15. Here. Nope, sorry, that's one too many. Here. Um. Hmm. Let me measure real quick. Okay. Okay, get this shit off my screen, please. Fucking D&D Beyond, clean up after yourself. <laughs> she is going to use the Thunder and Lightning effect from the Staff of Thunder and Lightning. Okay. Uh, which will do a Lightning Strike and a Thunder Clap effect. Uh, so in this direction, so just basically through these two guys. Uh, for the lightning effect, and then every creature within 60 feet of me uh, will also have to save against the thunderclap here. I'll just go ahead and link it in VTT, even though it's like a massive wall of text. Oh my god. Okay. Just tell yeah, me what I, I need I to roll. I don't like doing this. All right. So, <laughs> uh, so let's do lightning strike. Let's do the lightning strike effect of this first on these two guys. Okay. Uh, so it's a DC 17 dexterity saving throw. Uh... Okay, uh, FYI, these are going to have advantage. Okay. Dexterity saving throw? Dexterity saving throw. Uh, 17. That makes it. Uh, next one. 
Dexterity saving throw. Great. Mate. Okay. They both make it. Uh, uh, so they... The uh, the lightning that you cast from the staff appears to uh, kind of arc off of the crystal of their bodies, and the magic tends to go. Uh, the magic is going a little weird here, Rain. Uh, they still take seventeen lightning damage. Okay. Um, and then they need to make. Uh, DC 17 constitution saving throw. Okay. Okay, okay. first one succeeds. Constitution saving throw. Yep. Uh, fails. All right, so the first one takes only four thunder damage. Okay. The second one takes eight thunder damage and is deafened. Uh, okay. I don't know if that has any effect on their sensory whatsoever, but... I am yeah. checking, but... Yes. Fucking A. Okay. Um, so now the question is... Do I get closer to get my hasted action or not? No, I don't think so. Um... That is going to... I think that concludes. No, I'm going to insight. Nope. Uh, that is Rain's turn. All right. Next up. The creature turns to you slowly on insectoid legs. legs. And it, too, has a staff. Uh, one moment. Also, like, loud reverberating boom oh, comes yeah, from this that... room. So, like, yeah. It, it's go time. The creature appears to tip-tap the butt of its staff upon the ground. And it sinks into the earth. Effortlessly. What? <laughs> the earth be swallows it up. And it burrows underground. Rumble, rumble. Rumble. Rumble, rumble. What are they, graboids? Yep. Ah! Nothing personnel, kid. And from its staff, it hurls a psychedelic orb at Rain. Rain, make me have a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. Rain, you fail. Roll Hang a d6. On. Nope. Still Ooh, fail. Ooh, the blessed does not save you this time, unfortunately. Rain, you take psychic damage in the amount of 20. Ooh. Uh, sorry, I high rolled both of those. Yeah, that sucks. And you uh, rolled a five. You are stunned. Cool. As the orb uh, collides with your chest. Haste is gone as well. Not that that matters, because I'm still stunned either way, so. Uh, what? What is what is my stun icon? There it is. All right. Wait, did you fail your con saving throw, or because you're incapacitated? Stun. Stun. No, yep. Stun kills concentration. Flix, you're up. Flix. I'm here. Um, all right. I will zip up and, um, hmm. I'll cast darkness. All right, Flix, you can make yourself a 15 foot radius sphere. How do I do that? Uh, so use, uh, in the top left part of your VTT, click on the ruler icon, click on the circle icon, and then click and drag and make a circle until you hit the correct radius number. And then you should have a circle. Oh, it's so fancy. And then you just drag that bitch to wherever you want your darkness to be. 
Uh, you managed to attach it to me last time. How do I attach it to me? Oh, so that's a little bit different, but I can show you how to do that real quick. I'm going to move this so I can delete this one. But if you want to do that, you can do it from your token. Now, I'm not sure if you can do this, but hang on. Let me delete this real quick. So I have to shift you back to where you were. Um, if you right click your token and click on the gear. Um, uh, I can't seem to right click my token. Oh, because I'm not using the right thing. Sweet. Okay. Okay, so if you right click your token gear. and you click on the gear, uh, and then you go over to vision. Oh, auras. Vision and auras will both do it. Um, but if you click on auras and then show aura to all, and then you can pick your color, the opacity, and then the uh, the distance. Got it. And, um, and you can make it whatever color you uh, want. Sweet. I suggest the opacity at like a point three. Uh, so it doesn't look like you're just a, a baseball. All right. Boop. Nice. Yeah, works great. All right, and then uh, bonus action. Um, I am going to use my Hexblade's curse on this one. All right, sounds good. Uh, can I sue that in the VTT, please? Yes, I think I can spit it into VTT. Let's find out. It should be under your uh, abilities, your traits. Yeah, I'm looking for it there uh, beyond 20. Yeah. Did that work? Did yeah, it worked. worked. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, as, okay, as a bonus action, card target's curse for one minute, okay. <laughs> Alright, he's yeah. got the hex. Yeah. Flex, does that end your round? Uh, I would like to roll insight. These have similar body plans to, uh, the other jerks, <laughs> right? What would you like to know? Um, I'd like to know its hit points. All right, there you go. Perfect. All right, yep, that will end my turn. All right, next up, uh, this one up here, who is currently deafened. Uh, one moment. Uh, that one is, let's see. Accursed Orb of Darkness. Uh, this one is going to walk up terrain. And is going to attack with its staff. It raises up the massive crystal staff that's crackling with eldritch energy. And brings it down upon the stunned rain. Uh, I believe uh, rain because you're stunned. Let's see, is stun advantage? It has. It has advantage. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Let's go. Twenty-one. Uh, yeah, hits. Okay. Oh, uh, first Rain one. Rain is dead. Rain is very dead. Rain, you take 17 damage from the first attack. Oh, wait. Oh, that. Oh, you crit. I crit the second one. Oh, well, Rain's just dead. So. Uh, Rain, you, the 17. Uh, sorry, the first attack hits you for 17. Oh, that's the attack roll. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> God. Hey, Rain, you are unconscious. Yeah. Ugh. 8d8, excuse me? Uh, it, it's 4d8, normally. Oh, that's all. It crit. Oh, oh my god. Okay. Uh, Rain well. is down. Akashaba, you're up. 
<laughs> the way Akasha's just been around the corner the whole time, not able to see any of this. <laughs> just about to Donald Glover walk in with a pizza box. Just sets off after rain. Yeah, I think this is 40 feet. Yeah, it's just... Akashima just sees, like, the downed rain. Uh... I... So Akashima also didn't see that the... He heard the boom, but he didn't see that the, uh... Magic went wonky. Okay, um, Akashima's gonna throw his mace. Okay. So Akashima is going to throw the mace, uh, literally on top of rain. <laughs> um, keep in mind that it will do damage to rain. Right? It will. It, this will kill rain. Yep. Oh. Okay, uh, you guys, you guys can talk this out. But yes, there is friendly fire, and yes, this will kill rain. Okay, then we're not doing that. Um. Suddenly, <laughs> Akashima. Puts on the helm of Demon it Command. Be, it's it time. Really fucking on brand right now for Rob to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to let you down one last time. Um, uh, also, uh, GM will um, remind you that you have seen this. Have I seen this? Yes. Uh, Rain triggered it with her um, that they are magic resistant with her staff. Right, right. I'm just saying, like. Just if I'm being like very honest with you, Akashiba was like way around the corner and saw I, nothing. Akashiba, Akashiba heard, heard the staff go off. It is impossible to miss. Yes, but Akashiba did not see that this thing like physically took less damage, is my point. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Take your turn. That, that's okay with you. Like, that would just normally most role playing games like invalidate that to me. Um, uh, unless Rain mentioned something about it, then yeah. you would not know. Akashiba does not know. Okay. Um, There's not a whole lot I can do here. Um, uh, did you end up picking a peeling word? Uh, no, I have word of radiance. And then a bunch of other <laughs> healing spells that don't do things at a range. Um, okay, so out of character question. So Rain has taken, like, damage that knocked her unconscious and then took more damage. Has that, like... She is going to start making death saving throws. Okay, but so, how many rounds does she have? Three? Three. I have less than three. If she's damaged again, it will remove a death saving throw. So uh, these okay. two things both go before you. So if they both hit Rain and Rain fails, she's dead. Permanently. Uh, Ashmo is going to try to inside check this thing. Uh, he succeeds. What would you like to know? Uh, any weaknesses? Uh, yes, one moment. Uh, let's see. Akashaba, choose, uh, you can know one of its immunities, da uh, either a damage or condition. Uh, damage? It is immune to psychic damage. Okay. Alright, let's see. Um... Yeah, Akashma is just going to go for a level three Scorching Ray. Okay. On what target? Uh, front guy right here. Okay. Okay. So this is Scorching Ray is third level or higher. You may create one additional ray, so it should be four rays total. Got it. Okay. Ray one. Hey, that'll hit. Uh, that hits. Okay. Uh, 10 damage for the first ray. Okay, um, with Bless. 13. That misses. Okay. That hits. Okay. Let's roll the damage. Nine fire damage. Yep. 23 hits. Yep. And then... Three fire damage. Okay, so uh, am I correct in assuming that I cannot use a bonus action after using Scorching Ray? Uh, you can use a bonus action, it just can't be a spell. So bonus action, okay, so it can't be summon or chan? No, that is a spell. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's literally going to be it. That's um, the end of Akashma's turn. Uh, let me just look at your uh, 
features and traits here real quick. So your bonus action's available. Yeah, so you have spiritual weapon, but unfortunately you did cast a spell this turn. Uh, or harness divine power. Um, you can regain uh, an expanded spell slot up to level two. Yeah. Um, no, I don't. Nothing else for me to do. All right. Yep. Top of the round. Uh, Rain, make a death saving throw. Fail. You, you fail. Next up, the core spawn. Akashima that you just blasted with your scorching rays. It turns about on you slowly. And it burrows itself under the earth. Raise brow. And behind you, it pops up from the earth. <laughs> and it lifts its staff. Nineteen? Uh, nineteen is going to hit. I'm pretty sure that I don't have any boarding players. Nope, that's going to hit. Uh, Kashba, do you have any radiant damage resistance? Not that I'm aware of. All right, you take 16 damage from the staff. Ow. I can't even roll it to, what is it, a d6? What's that? Oh, uh, no, it's not the orb attack. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Cool. Uh, 15. Does not hit. All right. Uh, Ikashiba, the blow from the staff knocks you prone. Okay. Oomp. Does that take a full action to try to stand up again? No, it is. Uh, standing up from prone is half your move. Okay. Flix, you're up. Uh, Flix zips. Uh, rain. Uh, Flix zips over. Okay. And I'm gonna pour the healing potion that I have on me down Rain's throat. Inventory. Oh, I hope it's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, even a little one will help, right? It's true. Uh, how do I roll a healing potion in? Do I just click it? Yeah, you just click it. And you click the yeah, you click the numerical. Anything that has a B on it, like the D and D Beyond, you can click that, and it'll slam it into the BTT. Oh, okay. There we go. Did that work? That did not work. I'm clicking the thing. You can go into the VTT and... Or you can just roll 2d4 plus 2 if you prefer. Yeah, I'm just going to do that because that's less annoying than this. Five. All right, Rain, you regain five hit points. Uh, and you can see only darkness. <laughs> and uh, bonus action, I'm going <laughs> oh, to... Oh god, I'm go... dead. <laughs> Rain, this is it. I see only darkness. Darkness before me. And then I will go up. Sorry, Rain, I did what I could. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I can't carry Rain. I don't have the strength. No, no, no. But that just feels like a, like a, oh, Rain dies. You're like, I did what I could. <laughs> I did everything <laughs> I could. Flix, does that end your um, round? No, insight check. What would you like to know? I would like to know how these things perceive. Ah, a very good question. These things perceive by two different, two different ways. They have blind sight and they have tremor sense, both to sixty feet. Oh, so my darkness bubble does literally nothing. That is correct. Good to know. I had a feeling. Like, like I this... watch as it tracks my like I zip down and feed rain, and this thing like stares at me the whole time as I fly around. <laughs> I'm like, okay. You're like, uh. 
Good thing I use that insight check because now I have a feeling I'm being watched. Flix, right. does that enter around? No, I'm going to go five feet or higher. <laughs> okay. All right. Now my round is over. Oh, it sees you, but I suppose it is still deafened by the uh, staff and thunder of lightning. It tries uh, to... I, I do make taunting gestures at it for whatever that's worth. Uh, sure. It throws a psychedelic orb at you. Make me a uh, wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, I'm... Oh, I still get advantage? I don't get advantage? This is not charm. I don't get advantage. Oh, okay. This isn't okay. charm? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the frightened effect, I, you would get advantage to get rid oh, of hey. it, presumably. I actually, I actually made it. Nice. Uh, and you're blessed, don't forget. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I don't need it in this case, but I, they, I did forget about the bless. That actually uh, helped a lot. The orb goes uh, neatly under your legs. Whoo! Uh, and with a hiss, the thing turns back around on its arachnid-like legs and looks down at Rain. Akashipa, you're prone. You're up. You're blessed. Okay. Akashipa's going to uh, stand up. And Akashipa is going to... Okay, you use half your move. Yeah, Akashipa is going to dome this guy. Uh, 19 hits. All right. 14. Okay. And is going to summon a uh, level two spiritual sword. Uh, sword Chan is coming out. Come on. This is, I, I'm actually calling specifically for the bloodlusty one. <laughs> oh, sh <laughs> oh, shit. Sword Chan yeah. is full of rage. Yeah, I reach deep into the armoire and pull out the mean one, um, which is going to hit for nine. Uh, is this where... Oh, by the way, I was reading up on spiritual weapon today. So spiritual yeah. weapon does not count as an ally or, or literally anything, so you cannot flank with it. Uh, yeah. And as a reminder, everybody, you cannot flank with reach. You must be adjacent to the target. That's yeah. it. Cool. Um, so sword chain's gonna going to hit. Nine force damage. And I'm going to do an inside check. Uh, you can ask two questions. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the other weakness, the condition, or sorry, the immunity, the condition. Ah, yes. One moment. Uh, fuck. One second. Uh... It is immune to uh, being charmed and being frightened. Um, and then I guess for the other question, um, just like, what the fuck is it? Like, is it like a crystal monster? Is it a bug? Uh, this appears to be some sort of aberration. Not quite human, but not quite of this world either. Uh, this thing appears to be covered in sort of, uh, some sort of crystalline carapace. And at one point, uh, it was probably human, warped now by the magics around it. Uh, okay, Akashima as he swings and as the, the sword... Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, forgive me. Let me, uh, let me fix one thing. At one point, it was possibly humanoid, not okay. human. Thank you. Got it. Um, okay, as Akashima swings and as the sword swings, he's, you know, Akashima yells, Die, damn it! <laughs> Top of the round. Round three. Rain, you have uh, regained consciousness, and as the darkness uh, flits away from your vision, uh, you can't see the creature that brought you down, unfortunately, is still covered in Flix's darkness, but you are alive. Uh, Christina, can I dismiss a spell as a free action? Uh, you can, yeah, you can on your turn. Okay, upon realizing that it was doing nothing, could I have dismissed the darkness spell? The only reason that On I your turn. had it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Rain. Um, Rain will stand up, first of all. And while she is standing up, she will chug a... Actually, you know what? So, uh, sorry, Flix. You can you can end spells whenever you want. End it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's gone. Okay, go, go ahead and get rid of your own aura, please. Yes. Yeah, so okay, so Rain does see this thing standing, like hovering over her. Yeah, I'll I'll allow it. This this one. Yeah, I will. But I don't want a meta game that like. Yeah. 
Sorry, okay. there was just no reason for me to keep it up after I realized that. Yeah, just if you're if you're going to do anything, it's uh, yeah, I'll do it sure on your turn, time. unless it's a reaction, and then you can't do it. All right, Rain is going to chug a potion of heal, uh, superior healing as she's standing up. Okay. Slam it. Do I do I actually get? Oh there my go. God! Whoa! Okay. That was actually not very good. The strawberry and pomegranate mixture infuses you with a new life. A second chance, perhaps. Uh, and as she's just like getting up uh, from her knees, she is also going to go ahead and cast Polymorph on herself. <laughs> oh, what? And she's just going to keep huh? getting bigger oh, no. as she turns into a like giant silver ape. Uh, you have a 10 foot ceiling. Mm, I mean, that's fine. He's hunchy. Okay. Uh, are you are you aping out? Yeah, it's like it's like the Saiyan thing, right? Like she's all of a sudden just t- turns into giant ape, right? All right, I'm going to keep, keep I'm going up. to ape you. This encounter's uh, uh, okay. I was going to ape myself, but thank you. Oh, actually, you know what? Is yeah. the ape huge or large? Uh, that's a good question. A giant. Hold on, giant ape. I have it right here. Giant ape is huge. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's 15 feet tall, 15 uh, feet wide. Rain, the ceilings are a bit, like, five feet too short for you. Uh, your movement speed is going to be halved while you are a giant ape. Fine. It's a big pile of hit points. Uh, you are hunched over, and you're practically filling this tunnel. Uh, God, you are a big monkey. I mean, I'm also hunched over because, like, I'm an ape. It's fine. It's totally, it's totally reasonable. Your back presses against the ceiling. She just goes, <sighs> "Ook." <sighs> <sighs> That's it. That's her turn. She's not even gonna think to insight. Uh, monkey, no insight. Monkey mad. Monkey, monkey, hella mad. Um, hmm. What's? Oh, Akashaba. Are you gonna yeah. are you gonna fight it out down here between uh, you and Sword Chin? I mean, that's uh, the hope. First off, start of the round, uh, we are going to see if we. Oh, is this on a recharge? Got to be on a recharge. Hang on. It's not on a recharge. That's insane. Hold on. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Healthy. Why does it just do that all the time? Why doesn't it do that just every time? Yeah, why is it fucking around with the staff business? Jesus. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Akashiba, it raises uh-huh. its staff. Eighteen? No. I love Akashiba with armor class. Uh, ten. Oh. The thing leans forward. The eyes it once had now just crystalline facets in what can be called its face. And it hisses at you. Flex, you're up. I like with armor too, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this fucking thing is still alive, right? The, oh, you mean trying. this fucking thing? No, yes. The, it, this one down here next to Akashi. Oh yeah, they're both Don't still you alive. Steal this. Don't you do it. There was um, also large it, monkey. On the next round, doesn't it act before you do? Yeah, it acts before you do, right? It just acted. No, it doesn't. It just acted. Yeah, yeah. It just oh, acted. Okay, okay, okay. In that case, um, yeah, I'm gonna flank this one with uh, with Rain. monkey. With monkey. All right, bastard. Um, I am going to. Do I hex? Hmm. No, I don't hex. All right. Flix is having a good ponder. Just then figuring out how to use my resources. 22 uh, hits? hits? Plus 2d6. So that's a uh, 24 damage. Uh, okay, one moment. You see a burst of blue crackling energy come off of its body. 
as your crossbow bolt hits home. And some of the blue energy kind of arcs back out into this fusion reactor. And it takes half of the triggering damage from your uh, initial shot. It'll take 16 damage total instead of 16 plus 18. Also, if you hit it with a melee attack, you're going to take some radiant damage. Huh. The crystals along its body begin to crackle with energy. Well, I'm adjacent, but I'm not hitting it with melee attacks. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying, if you hit it with like a rapier attack, gotcha. you will take damage. But um, well, it says, okay, it says when it hits it, with a melee attack, uh, yes. it deals extra radiant damage. Sorry, go ahead. Keep going. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Ah! All right, yeah, as long as I'm not getting zapped, I'm going to keep shooting this stupid thing. And I'm going to try to sink another crossbow bolt someplace sensitive. Uh, 18 hits? No, with 19 damage. All right, Flix. You start breaking off huge chunks of crystal from this thing's body. And I would like to inside it to see how close to death it is. No. Sorry, Flix. The robes are hiding the damage from me. <laughs> Does that end your round? Your robes are stupid. Now my round is over. What? How dare you? No, your robes are stupid. I'm not even wearing robes, you twit. This is sleek. You're, you're just arguing in your own head. It's like infusing you with arguments <laughs> with yourself, <laughs> with its psychic powers. Uh, Flix, it's going to swing the staff at you. That's a terrible idea. 14? Fortunately, I nimbly dodge out of the way. And a 12. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's like, swipe, swipe, and I'm like, you can't hit me. Uh, you crystalline twit. Uh, and it burrows into the ground. Rumble, rumble. You cowardly crystalline twit. Uh... I'll start looking around for where it went. Akashiba, you're up. Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Akashiba, um, you're currently being flanked. <laughs> well, you know, I always knew this day would come. Um, so what, just to be clear here, can my, can Sword Chan attack first? Mm -hmm. uh, it attacks uh, simultaneously, so you can choose to have it attack first if you like. Okay. So it's going to attack first. Uh, that misses. Okay. Fuck you, Sword Chan. <laughs> um, okay, Akashma's going to Dome then. The one that's almost dead. Um, bit of blast. Uh, blast. A 17 okay. hits. Okay. Uh, Akashma, this will kill uh, this horrible spawn. What do you do? Akashiba just fucking grunts and just slams it over the head. Just, it, it sounds like you break a crystal vase onto the floor. It just makes a shattering sound like glass. Okay. And Akashiba is going to use, so, okay, uh, proposing a scenario. So if, if I were to try to go through where uh, Monka is, um, Akash was a pretty big guy. Is there any chance like he goes under Monkey or can he like get to the side or is Monkey just literally like causing a traffic jam? You can go through Monkey. You can go through friend friendly targets. Uh, you just cannot go through hostile targets. Uh, if you friendly leave targets this space, count as difficult terrain, right? Friendly target. Uh, I, th I believe so, unless you're a halfling. Or have the sweet, sweet mobile feet. I do. I do have the sweet, sweet mobile feet. Um, okay. So Akash is just gonna like book it over here. Uh, and he is just seeing the monkey for the first time. And like, you know, before he realizes it, because he obviously would if he took like a second of thought, he just looks at Flix and goes, Where is Rain? Why is Monkey here? Uh, Akashiba, you're going to uh, take an attack of opportunity from the second core spawn behind you. So my understanding is that it would mobile, that would not happen. So you may, when you make a melee attack against a creature, you don't provoke a t opportunity attacks from that creature for the rest uh, of the turn. Okay, okay. That makes sense. All right, uh, Bokashma is actually just gonna hang tight then. Um, and Sword Chan's movement is um, 20 feet. Yeah, okay, so if we can move the sword over to here. 
Okay. And that is going to be the end of Akashva's uh, insight. Oof, nice try. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 <Doesn't matter. laughs> nope, all good. End of my turn. Top of the round, uh, a giant ape. You're up. Uh, uh, reaches through the hole and picks up the crystalline thing and starts smashing it. The ape would love to. Uh, ape has to find it first. Uh, oh, can you not see it from there? No. Ape doesn't have dark vision. But uh, can I hear where it reappeared, where it burrowed out of the ground? Perception check. Uh, somewhere in Akashiba's room. Be behind you. Um, can I fit through there? No, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to... Uh, we're, this this entryway is uh, not even 10 feet wide, and you are 15 feet wide. So monkey will not fit, no. All right, the monkey's going to throw a rock. Oh, shit. Uh, monkey cannot see it a valid does... target. I mean, I can roll with disadvantage, right? I mean, it, it has 100% uh, cover from your vantage point. AKA, you cannot see it. Is this like some soccer trick shot you're going for? <laughs> yeah, you can't. I'm, I'm looking at your vision. You see Akashiba and you see the dead one, but you can't see the one that's behind Akashiba. I mean, you can literally take attacks at things that are invisible, but okay, sure, that's fine. But I'm saying it's uh, behind total cover. You just can't, you can't throw anything that'll hit it. Oh, oh, it's not that, okay. Like, you throw you throw in a straight line. It's not going to go around corners there, Hawkeye. It'll hit on Kashiba, though, if you're really mad at him. Yeah. Um, all right, then, pass turn. Uh, where? Well, I'm like, where did my combat go? Uh, Flix, you're up. All right. Yeah, Rain, you actually don't know if, if it's here or here or here. It, it could be in any of those squares. Well, I mean, I know where it's not because I can see it's not here. So I know it's it must be like on the um, other side of Akashiba. But for what it's worth, the monkey doesn't need dark vision, right? These things uh, create light. It, no, it's not. It's, it's not, not in that enough light. Of light. It's out of the uh, line of light or it's out uh, of the light's radius. It's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. Go. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Five, ten, twenty. Actually, that'd be five, ten. <laughs> um, yeah, monkey is dealing with the fact that monkey does not have dark vision right now. <laughs> can I occupy the same space as monk? Uh, you are small. Yes, you can. Okay. All right. I'm gonna pop over here. Need a hand, Akashiba. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> There's like one dead one behind him and one in front of him. Yes! Yes, God, please help. All right. Um, I can't generate advantage for myself in any way. So I'm going to take uh, one normal shot. Does that hit? Bless? Yeah, I'm, I'm checking to see if it hits before I bless. I guess uh, 15 like hits? Left anyway, so, so yeah, 17. 17 hits? Uh, all right, so yeah, total of 13 damage with sneak attack. Flix, this attack will kill the spawn. What do you do? Uh, with uncanny precision, he just kind of like zips around uh, the bulk of rain in ape form and almost casually just brings his crossbow up and sinks a crossbow quarrel through the back of its head and it pokes out through one of the holes in its face, and then it falls over. Oh, and as it lands, it makes the crystalline, crackling, breaking noise. And that ends the combat with these four spawn. Flix kind of looks at Rain with a odd expression on his face. Why do you smell like cinnamon? Uh, is, is she monkey forever? How does this... Uh, gosh, we just kind of follow. 
What's this? I'm presuming it's the same spell that she cast to turn No into that enormous lizard thing. I, I hope so. I don't really know enough about the, the magic to, to say. I hope maybe it's not like this forever, though. It's very inconvenient to be this big. <laughs> uh, did, these, did these things drop their staves? Like, do the staves still seem to have magic in them? Uh, the crystalline staves appear to be on the ground, broken into hundreds of pieces. Oh, well, uh, I will I will search their ridiculous robed corpses carefully. Okay, Flix is uh, looting the bodies. Anybody else? Akash is mostly just like mildly like taken aback by watching Rain Ape. Rain Ape. Uh, like oh, Akash uh, is actually just thinking in his head like is is the ape trying to search the room? Is the ape confused about its look? Like Akash is just having a real like existential crisis about rain as an ape. Like, this is very concerning to him, so he's mostly just kind of watching this unfold. Rain ape is specifically looking for other threats. So, it's, yeah, so it's, okay, so is rain ape, like, moving stuff around or just kind of, like, investigating, or is just, like, clomping around? Yeah, rain ape is, is clumsily kind of stomping around, looking for other threats. Okay. Uh, uh, Flix, you find um, some very fine crystalline gems um, in, not up to but including uh, a diamond uh, some fine quartz uh, and some cubic zirconia <laughs> cubic zirconia Hell yeah. precious precious, precious. Cubic zirconia hey, diamonds aren't rare in D&D we don't have zales here yeah, keep it zirconia. Nobody's ever even heard of that shit. Yeah, what's Priceless. that? It's round right, zirconia and, here. And you said quartz? Quartz, yes. Fine quartz, though. Fine quartz. Um, Akashma's gonna roll a perception check next to his door. With glass. So, 16 for this door right here, Christina. Alright. The large double doors in front of you, Akashaba, uh, both appear to be branded with draconic symbology. Do you speak draconic? I do not. Otherwise, uh, the doors appear to have uh, impressions on them of uh, almost like crystal protrusions. Hmm. Kashba nods and walks back over to the group. Uh, Ape does not find anything to smash. As uh, Ape's back rubs across the ceiling. <laughs> Akashiba walks up to Ape. Uh, Rain, uh, are, you, are you in there? <laughs> uh, you... Yeah, the, the fight's over, Rain. Uh, well, you know what? There might be more other dangerous things. We can just leave Rain like this and we'll lure things into the... the... <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to combine the name Rain and Ape together. I just realized what that was. Ah! Uh, <laughs> into the uh, the Ape Room. <laughs> yes. Where okay. they they can get <laughs> smashed appropriately. Okay. Well, there is door over there with what looks like draconic symbol. Oh, it rains normal again. If if you could see before this happens. Before she reverses transformation, if you could, if you could imagine an ape rolling its eyes, that's what exactly, exactly what happened. Okay, so are you reverting? Yeah. Oh, well, I figured you 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 tend to be a little precious about your spell work. I thought you'd want to make the most of it. Oh fuck no! I'm exhausted. We are. I am. I am done. This. I am done. So I shouldn't go zipping around finding new opponents for you to smash. I mean. No. All right. Well, uh, we should rest. Absolutely nowhere, anywhere near any of these rooms with this awful, awful, arcane, leeching dust. But we should get some rest. Uh, okay. Well, before so we do, just letting you know, door over there, draconic on it. I can't read. So, if someone maybe has ability to read, it's over there. If anyone wants to. Hmm, perhaps no. Uh, knows draconic. Eh, true. Oh, by the way, uh, you can you can puff puff pass your helm of comprehend languages around. I, I I thought about it and I'm like I'm okay with this. Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, I forgot. Like I already used it today though. So, do you care about that or? I mean, Rain can literally cast comprehend languages, so it's fine. 
Right. Yuki has the ritual? Yeah, she has most of the ritual spells. Right, I, I'm just asking, uh, that said, I'm just asking, do we want to return the, the helm to its original, like, form, which is just unlimited uses? It is, yeah. You you put it on and you can cast Comprehend Languages at will. All right, cool. Okay. Uh, I do that then, and see if I can read the uh, door. Okay. You go up to the door? Yes, I do. Oh, there's two doors. Oh, it's a giant double door. Uh, you, you put on the hat, and you go up to the door, and give it a good look. It's a little bit dusty. And your Comprehend Languages gives you uh, the kind of literal I, uh, translation of uh, whatever you read on the door. Uh, yeah. and I pass the hat to Rain when she passes by. Uh, perhaps you'll um, understand whatever is written here more well than I would. Oh, uh, okay. In the most you... literal sense, it says, please knock. Sleeping dragon inside. <laughs> hmm. Rain goes back to the device. Take my hat back. Um, it says, please knock sleeping dragon inside. Um, <laughs> please dragon knock inside. <laughs> please dragon knock inside. <laughs> Rain is, Rain is going to study this device. She's pretty sure this has something to do with possibly keeping a dragon asleep. Uh, well, at the very least, it's producing more of that dust. Rain, with your arcana check, um, this here is some sort of uh, Borean shard processing device. Uh, and essentially what it does is the, the shard goes into the processor and the processor will do as intended and it processes the shard into um, some sort of usable compound. And each of these devices uh, will process it in a different way or uh, use this for, for a different purpose. And um, most of these things would be powered by uh, geothermic energy. And this process would take a significant amount of time to, uh, to complete, to have the uh, shard dust be refined into some sort of usable compound. Um, but it looks like this machine is still going and it is not running on geothermic energy, it appears to be running on slow. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever it is refining, it is also tainting. So it also seems to be... Can I see what it's refining? Is that like on the inside here? Or is that where this pipe, overhead pipe, that seems to be leading? So it appears that uh, the, the pipes are probably... Um, some sort of steam that is allowing this to have some sort of energy source. Uh, but what it's refining may, may need a little bit of alchemy to figure out. Hmm. But they all appear to be different forms of uh, Borean shard dust. And whatever it is, it's being poured into these barrels and sealed up. Okay, so this is the source of the stuff in the barrels. It's not running off of the stuff in the barrels. That is but I correct. guess it's 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 running off of slow. So, so slow these... is getting piped in here somewhere. Yeah, so whatever the slow is like the energy source, since it was being powered by geothermic before, but now that's become slow. And it's it's whatever magical resonance is also being pumped into this powder. It's causing all sorts of strange occurrences to happen. Uh, Rain is going to flip through her notes because she took both sets of notebooks from Grisha before, or from Grisha and from Grisha's study, and see if she can find any references to stuff like this. Um, make, Rain, make me a quick investigation check, please. Can I assist? Uh, she's flipping through a book, if you would like to look over her shoulder and how are you reading? Are you reading? <laughs> Probably are you reading? the opposite uh, of assisting, but no, that's amazing. But yes. Oh, did you read that page? Oh, wait, flip back to that picture. Oh, look at that word. What are you looking at, Rain? Uh, the, Rain, you find a couple entries in Grisha's notes. Um, uh, something about uh, it, it's very crude, but it's about slow sickness, about being around 
the magic for, for too long and it actually is uh, affecting the form. The form becomes more mutable, uh, less mm, moored in reality. Uh, some of the varied effects can include uh, disfiguration, uh, loose transmutation, uh, mm. and amplification. There's also a oh. few sketches in there uh, showing uh, a couple orcs with crystalline want, uh, excuse me, crystalline qualities, uh, crystals for teeth, crystals for eyes, crystals well, growing I... out of their uh, shoulders and knees. Well, I think we found what happened to the orcs. They're in the other room, smashed into little pieces. Hey, all of them? Do we think there might be more? Is it easy to mm. tell? I don't know. I think anybody who's been stationed here for any prolonged period of time is probably one of those crystal creatures. Akashima nods kind of solemnly. Uh, the slow and... sickness... <clears throat> excuse me, Rain, sorry. The slow sickness notes, um, the, the basic ones, uh, also discuss uh, how magic unravels and causes things like the wild magic surges to occur. Um... But yes, it is more, and then the notes start getting a little more darker as they start becoming less of notes and more pointed experiments. 1.8 radigens. Not great, but not terrible. Okay, well, um, so conundrum here. Do we want to go into the room with the supposedly sleeping dragon? Do we want to take a rest? Do we want to press our luck? Um, I am pretty spent, but I've got a little bit of gas left in the tank. Um, certainly don't want to be charging into anything again, though that was an unfortunate happenstance that just occurred. For, for what it's worth, Ren, it was very... Normally, I feel like that's my job, and it was good to see uh, you really take the initiative, and, and I'm sorry it didn't work out, but it was cool to see. Yes, well, they... Yes. <laughs> Glad it was great for you. Akashima just does his hello face that he's doing right now. Hello! Well, I'm prepared to proceed. I'm in top form, but it seems as though you're a little beat up. <laughs> eh, I maybe can do a little bit more, but it, uh, I would say another fight might be pushing it a little bit for me. Um, should we retire back to the tavern for now? Do you have any idea how those fuckers see yet? Oh, because yes. I, I got definitely a good look at their behavior. Uh, they appeared, they're, they're geologic in nature, right? So I believe that they were able to sense your position through the ground itself, and they clearly could pierce with the even magical darkness that I was using, which suggests to me that they are just capable of sensing things around them somehow, hmm. regardless of the lighting conditions. Well, they do seem to be psychically aware question we have a place to be on timeline is this if we go back is this kind of like we do not have time or well Lix do you think you can crack that door open just a little bit without setting anything off uh, no promises come here and help me make sure that it doesn't have any kind of traps or anything on it well if you can crack it open just a little bit I can send Eco through just enough and he can at least let us know what's in there and if there's more shit in there then we can not deal with it for now. Uh, so yeah. Uh, why don't you, why don't we, let's take a look. I'm going to assist Rain in checking for traps. Uh, it's 25. Uh, plus oh, plus. Okay, so you're, I don't have bless. Oh. Because I, I died. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, so 25 is the better of the two if you're assisting me. All right, Rain. Yeah. Uh, you take a look at the door and the door is most certainly trapped. Uh, in fact, this trap is a little bit more uh, whimsical, and it's definitely magical in nature. It's mostly meant to keep pests out and not necessarily be uh, wounding. But if you try and open the door, and if you do not trigger, uh, turn off the trap by putting crystals into the depressions in the door, uh, you will be polymorphed into a small animal uh, for an hour. Oh, there's crystals in the door? There are. There are two crystal depressions. Are there crystals to put in these depressions? Well, you... we did smash some crystal creatures. Um, I try the quartz. Um, 
No, it's definitely a very specific size and shape. Nothing random. Hmm. You seem to be missing an item. Rain comes back over here to where these two little shits are. Looks for something that resembles the size of and shape of those depressions. Uh, Rain, make me a perception check. Perception or investigation? Um, investigation. Oh, okay. Let me... I <laughs> like how you ask and then just roll. Well, ah. you said perception first, and it was already rolling because oh, it okay. takes a minute. So, Mid-flight. Yeah. Uh, Rain, you're looking down at these bodies and you're like, hmm, crystal thonking. Uh, and you notice just to the south, you see these spider webs right here. Uh, they kind of waft a little bit. Oh, I already searched them. None of the crystals that were on their bodies work. Rain will, like, clear away some of the cobwebs gently. Okay. Uh, Rain, I'm gonna push right here. I'm gonna push, oh god. I'm gonna push you right here. Uh, oh god. You find there's a, a small sack, half buried in the dirt, uh, caked in a pile of dust. Here's to be kind of a lump in the floor. Does it look... Rain, old, it's not very old. likely that's useful to us. What are you doing? It looks older, older, most certainly. Like, more like the moldering furniture and everything in the tavern? No, not that like... old. Okay. She pulls it out and kind of dusts it off. Yep. And it's just like a little pouch? It's like a little pouch. Opens it up. Inside you find a crystal necklace uh, suspended on a small platinum chain. Oh. Um, does it look like an appropriate crystal for the door? It does. Okay, well, um, I'm trapped, but... Ah! There you go. Are, there we are, go. You, are you better? Yep. Uh, well, I found this back there. Oh. What were they doing there? It's a really good uh, he, question. He puts out his pity. He does gives the grabby hands. Rain, let's flick stake it. Oh, it, it's just one crystal or two? It's just the one necklace. It's just the one. So we need to find another one? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, at least we know what we're looking for. Let me make sure it fits. He, like, takes off, like, well, flicks wait, that flicks, out. Flicks, wait, flicks. But... Just investigating these barrels idly. Um, I'm I'm not actually inserting it. I'm just measuring the pendant of the necklace to see if it matches with the indentation. It does. It looks to be about the right size and shape. Yes, uh, this looks like it would fit nicely. Uh, Akashiko, okay. most of the barrels you're looking at are uh, empty, ready to be filled with uh, the strange powder. Akashiko frowns, walks away. <laughs> okay, so we should look for more... Anu well, we should check these other rooms. I'll start down here. All right. Uh, in absence of anything else to do with it, Flix just kind of drops the necklace over his head. Okay. Uh, Rain will investigate this room. All right. Make me an investigation check, please. What do you suppose these things were manufacturing all that powder for, anyway? Um. Well, probably to taint other ley lines, or to subdue other dragons, or any number of things that they're useful for. Yeah, just general kind of what we would call, like, evil stuff with quotation marks. Honestly, the applied just... industrial thaumaturgy of the things that they're creating in their limitless opportunity. But... Yes, whatever that means. I, I guess it just it doesn't make any sense to me. So they appear here, they invade, they kill the people who live here, and then they just know to use these alchemical uh, processing plants to create this awful pulcanic powder. Well, like the orcs have been studying this for a while. This is not the first ley line, nor the last that they've tainted. Hey, I was going to say, I feel like most of the time we have been to places like this, it's not unusual to see them, say, how you say, stop, drop, and open up shop. It's true. <laughs> uh, Rain, you're it's investigating this chamber. to be orked, everyone. Uh, the, besides the three barrels here that you see uh, that are full of dust and marked with the... Uh, sigil of Forgruck that you found previously. Um, there is a significant amount of 
what appears to be Artificer's Guild, and excuse me, Artificer's Guild uh, Artificery, like more cogs and things to repair these refining machines that you found in this dragon's den. Uh, the last thing you find over here in this pile of things is a bit more curious. <clears throat> uh, you find tonics and tinctures, assorted potions, poultices. Uh, Akashaba, since you're nearby, you can make me a medicine check. Rain, you can make me a medicine check here, too. Ooh. Alright, with blast. This is more you. Okay. Twelve. Okay. Well, uh, what these are you appear- looking at? These appear to be uh, ingredients used in uh, basic medicine. Uh, but the practical application flicks your fair, general fairy knowledge. You're, you're definitely uh, total. more used to uh, natural medicines. And you can tell a lot of these are for uh, pain relief, headaches, aches and pains, uh, like barks, teas. Oh, fever, few, willow bark. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Well, if you've got a headache, I'll set you right up, Ren. I feel like a lot of these goods are things that the orcs have been stealing. I mean, we know that they've been raiding and stealing from various deliveries. Surely they're not making them anywhere. They don't have the manufacturer to do that. Uh, does That's... The... Uh, just quickly, is, does the crate that the painkillers in super old, like all the artificery crates? Uh, they're all yes, of similar agedness. Um, hmm. the the medicine crates actually look like they've been opened previously. Well, that would make some sense, I suppose, if they were fighting off this slow sickness before it took them. Or perhaps our dragon friend suffers from migraines. Well, maybe when you have uh, orcs, you know, with crystals growing out of every which orifice, it, you know, helps to keep them uh, working if you give them pain relievers. Akashba shrugs, I don't know. Um, please excuse me, I heard something fall in another room and I need to make sure the cats aren't mischiefing too hard. <laughs> uh, Christina, is this like a little pouch in a puddle of something? Uh, no, I'm that just... is a upright sack. Oh, okay. It was, it's like the little tippy-toppy of the tide part of the sack. Oh, okay, that's a sack, not a puddle. Gotcha. Okay. Do you investigate the sack? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm investigating the whole room looking for another one of these damn necklaces, I guess. Uh, Rain, inside this sack, um, you find it, it's all eaten away grain. It's the uh, empty shells and harvest. And then your hand closes around something uh, hard and wrapped in leather. Ominous. Pull it out. Um, uh, it is... It's something familiar, but it is another tightly wrapped satchel of drugs. Oh, more drugs. But these ones are not quite the goblin drugs, uh, the the more uh, recreational and fun things. Oh no. Oh shit, do we find the Vicodin? Uh, you yeah. found some pretty heavy uh, painkillers, like tranquilizers. Uh, this stuff taken in excess almost certainly even kill a person. Hmm. Neat. Uh, and this, they're almost gone. It looks like somebody's oh. been stashing them here and using them. Yeah, it's some, it seems like it seems like these guys have been holding out for a while for against whatever the slow sickness is. Alright. Um, actually, Rain's going to take a moment to cast Detect Magic. Okay. And when it's up, does the necklace, now that Flix is just bouncing around with it on his over, around his neck, does it actually radiate magic at all? It does. It has a fine, very uh, very light aura of magic associated with it. Uh, otherwise, the barrel, uh, and these three barrels as well, all glow uh, because they contain the magic warping properties of slow. Oh, neat. Um, okay, uh, she's going to try and use that to try and help out with these investigation checks as she goes room to room to like narrow in on the necklace oh wait a second we haven't gone down here right this is this is new down here you have not hmm maybe we avoid that uh, 
Uh, she's gonna go over here. Uh, investigated this room. This is where we found the last one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh nope, that's where we came from. She will go into this room. Oh great, more double doors. Uh, Rain, you, uh, from to the sorry, to the south. You feel a, a very light ebb of magic. Hmm. Okay. Does the door have the same inscription on it? Uh, it does. Okay. I've returned. Apologies. Oh, good. Uh, well, I'll go investigation. Do I get advantage for this since I've got the detect magic up? Or I will allow it. There we go. You find another pouch here. Boop. Uh, half tangled up in a spider web. It's interesting that they seem to have hid these for some reason and didn't keep them on their persons. Uh, I think it's far more likely that they didn't hide them at all, and the people who lived here originally split them up and hid them to keep them away from the interloper. It's possible. I'd say it's likely. Um, here you go, Flix. Why, thank you. Is this another door just like the others up here? Mm -hmm. It show is. It show is. All right. Well, you know, just in case, here, Akashiba, you wear the other one. Akashiba kind of frowns at it. Oh, okay, Put, puts it on. Let's is it big enough to go over Akashiba's head? Uh, barely. Your ears kind of have to fold down to get it on your massive head, but it fits. Akashiba kind of, like, pulls it down. Tight fit. Oh, let's knock politely and then no, open no, no, the no. door. Just, what? just if you can just crack the door open, we'll send Eco through, and we can at least know what we're dealing with before we decide whether to deal with it or not. It literally says to knock politely, right? Hey, actually, I think Flix may have point. Maybe, well, but that's from that's from a while ago, right? There's, things have clearly changed since that was made. Um, is there dust on the floor, Christina? Uh. Make me an investigation check. Hmm. Hmm. Lots of dust Hang everywhere. You, it's hard a to tell. Plus, uh, I got a ten. All right. Not, well, not a thick coating. That's for sure. There's no scrapes in the dust. Is my, I guess, my point. Like nothing to suggest that these doors have been opened outward, at least. No, nothing. Nothing obvious to you. No. Hmm. Well, it doesn't appear, at least, that these doors have been opened recently. Perhaps they were never able to open them at all. And given where you found the necklaces hidden, I mean, it would be absurd for them to put the necklaces back, right? I mean, I, I want to believe that. I really do. But whatever those things are processing is also tainting things. And we've already seen the effects of slow on just the orcs running around here. I... I hate to say it, but I am also somewhat worried about the state that Prismata might be in. She might be more than simply subdued. And I am certainly not ready or capable of taking care of a dragon right now. I would rather not. All right, all right, fine. All right, no knocking, but let's use the crystals simultaneously. Are you ready, Akashiba? Uh, Rain will have Ego, like, climb out. Okay, ready you, to can, dart in. you can bust him out. Uh, all right. One. Okay. Uh, on the beat after three. One, two, three. And then he pushes the uh, the crystal into the... All right. Well, if I turned into something small, fuzzy, and even more adorable than my usual self, you'll know that this went terribly wrong. And I will carefully crack this door open and, of course, peek through, because how could I not? Okay, make me a stealth check, please. Sure. All right. You very, very carefully uh, open the door. Plus, Twenty-three. Okay. I'm gonna pause real quick. One moment, sorry. Oh god, actually, if at some point we could do just like a quick five minute break, um, sure. I'm actually really hungry and want to grab a snack.
Like, so you crack open the door. Let me just describe this and we'll take a quick break. Yeah. And the first thing you see, Flix, is a stony pathway, and it seems to be immediately illuminated by a flickering blue light. And when you would expect to see a bridge, you actually see almost trails of wispy-like smoke that connect the platform that you're closest to to another platform beyond. And on that jet jetting platform appears to be a strange creature with four legs and crystals growing all over its body and its face ending in a lack of a mouth and beady, bright, crystalline eyes set into its very angly head and wicked claws adorn well, every limb you can possibly see. The massive thing seems to be stalking back and forth. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I will let Eco through, and then just as silently as I open the door, I will close it again. All right. I'm going to put uh, Eco through the door. Squeak. Squeak. Uh, for Akashiba's benefit, I will use my at will illusion to create a duplicate of it above my palm. This thing is in there. It's clearly not our dragon friend. Close the door. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I sometimes forget to physically do the thing. That thing looks just as upsetting as everything else we've seen in here. I'm forced to concur. Let's well, get a boo away from the door while we have this conversation. Yeah. Uh, I could try to patch us up a little bit, and then maybe... Was that the only thing in there? That I could see. That doesn't mean that it's the only thing in there, of course. Well... Rain is just sit at, seating on the, sit it on the floor, and... That's her perception as an ego. Uh, like I said, I could maybe do, like, one more fight. But uh, I, you know, turned to Rain. Rain had a rough time last, last time. And Kashba looks over at Rain, realizes Rain is like paying attention uh, to, to not Rain. Uh, okay. Yeah, Rain is vibing. Yeah. <laughs> bat jamming. Sorry, bat jamming. Bat jamming. Yes. Okay. Hey, how can I break her out of these? How does how this work? Kashpo kind of walks up to Rain and like puts like a paw like gently on her shoulder. Hey, Rain. Hey. Kashpo walks away. Wait, wait till she's. Finished. What? What do you want? I what? can't hear you. <laughs> Kashpo just stares and then walks away. Her, 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 like her, her vision and her hearing are in ego right now. So. No, no. Oh, uh, has figured that out now that you've explained. <laughs> yeah, actually, seeing you talk to. Uh, Rain, Rain can hear you. She's in Eco right now. Uh, uh, Rain, what are you doing with Eco? Just waiting for whatever was going on there before just like tearing off like a bat out of hell. Uh, so Eco definitely sees this thing. Um, it's just kind of like skirting the wall. Oop. Uh, Eco flies over uh, a large canyon, which starts here and goes to here. The only thing that seems to bridge it is this kind of spectral-looking bridge. Mm -hmm. Here is so it does look like a bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, Eco flits over there, and he finds an opening that doesn't appear to have a door. And that opening oh. appears to be uh, covered in a significant amount of rubble. As if something forced its way through here. Uh... So Eco does a blind sight out there. Um, does he see that thing back there? He does. Eco, as he flutters over to investigate further, uh, he sees a massive creature made out of stone. It appears to be rumbling about, taking slow and laborious footsteps. Hmm. It appears to be almost entirely focused on this large alchemical jug that is processing the slow in the center of the room. Ooh. 
Uh... It intones lowly. <laughs> Go to his flutters on just a little bit. Does it look like it looks like there's a hallway over there on the far side? Interesting. Okay. Uh, he will vacate. There is a low rumble as the earth elemental just takes a step. Boom. Rumble. Uh... Nico will flutter to like the next little canyon or like rock outcropping. Yep. Nico finds another uh, cave here that curls over to the east. Mm, he'll land on the wall and just kind of like climb along it for a little bit. Uh, here, it, it looks to be three multi-leveled baths. Uh, perhaps this was where Prismata once took solace and to bathe fancily. There are some fish heads spewing water. Uh, they're caked and mold and uh, I was like, what the fuck is the moss? I was like, it starts with an M and it's green and it grows everywhere. Spoilers, it's moss. <laughs> uh, yeah, everything is just absolutely coated in a thick coat of uh, either slime, moss, or disuse. This place could use a serious uh, shock bath. Uh, there is a basket in the corner. A basket? Oh, there's also baskets up here. Is that what those are? Mm-hmm. Um, Nico will kind of like flutter over to the side and just peek. Do they, does it, is there anything in there that he can tell? Uh, they all appear with his, at least, blind sight, uh, appear to be about fist-sized rock-like objects. Hmm. Okay. Flutters back out. Uh, is this like an actual wall here, or is this like another cave mouth that seems to go somewhere? Uh, it is another side? cave mouth that appears to go deeper in. There is a uh, blue light that appears to be emanating. Okay. Uh, he will skirt the edge up here, kind of like the top of the pillars. Um, can he get a glimpse into what's maybe emanating the light through there? Sure. Uh, give me one moment. Give me a second. Give me a second. Second. Half. GM lights. Um, GM lights. GM lights. Is that like dead lights? Yeah, Don't look like... at the dead lights. Oh boy. All right, let me know when you're loaded in. I'm loaded in. Okay. There's some shit. Okay. Uh, let me. I'm gonna look at your vision through eco. Okay. Inside this massive crystalline chamber, there appears to be water on the ground, not too deep, but it looks like it would be uh, difficult for anybody who is flying to, to, to traverse. There are some places to stand um, that are relatively short, rocky outcroppings. Uh, and in the center of the room, you see a massive crystal. But you also see... Uh, let me see if I could just show... Uh, I guess I can show this to everyone. Your echo location picks up uh, something massive. Not just the dragon. As you see, Prismata. Oh, she's pretty. Yeah, she's real pretty. However, she appears to be unconscious, laying on the ground next to the massive crystal. In the coils of something much larger. Much more sinister. A massive Rain. worm 
with the dragon in its coils. It is not emanating a red glow. Oh no, this one emanates a sinister blue glow, similar to the slow. And with Prismata wrapped tightly in its coils, it appears to be pondering her, like a cat playing with a mouse. Okay, so, um, like, Rain just speaks, like, without having any other senses. So I think this is definitely a rest out here situation, just FYI for everyone. Um, oh, what do you see? What do you see? Can't be that. Uh, well, I found... <laughs> I did find Prismata. Snort. Uh, I'm going to pull you back oh. to the previous scene. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Well, excellent. Let, let's get let's get to it then. Yes, yes. Um, it, she is uh, wrapped in the coils of uh, something approximately twice her size, though. Um, big, what, what? sluggy, snake, slow thing. Is it bigger than her or the same size as her? It is bigger than her. It is... Oh, okay, well... I mean, yeah. like, uh... Like, just based off of just, like, size on, like, an echolocation, like, a size category bigger than, than she was, right, Christina? It is a, So, uh, she was huge. That was Gargan... I'm sorry, that was Gargantuan. Yeah. Um, quite a bit bigger than she is. So, yeah, one size, size category larger than her. Um, there's also... There's also uh, the thing that you saw, Flix... Um, oh, Eco is gone from the scene. Or maybe, oh no, because I'm back on rain, so I don't know where he is. I, I deleted. Oh, you deleted him? Okay, that's fine. Oh, that's right, yes, the, the, the crystal centaur-looking creature. Yeah, yeah, there was that. There's also a side room that had a large rock elemental of some kind monitoring another one of these distillation devices. Hmm. Was the elemental blue? Uh, I don't think it was. Was you, it, Christina? You can't detect color with eco. Ah, that's fair, yeah. So, no idea. There was also at least one other uh, branching path that I did not explore, but uh, we at the very least have to get through that crystalline creature before we can even get to where Prismata is. Um, and then we have to contend with whatever that worm creature is. It did not look friendly, and it also looked very difficult to traverse the area in which she is. It's a lot of, a lot of water, although it looked like wading height, but still, um, you would be the only one unhindered entirely, Flix. Crash, but yeah, it's mobile. Just throw it out there. Yeah, if you dash, it's fine, but. <laughs> Just saying. Um, but a lot of a lot of like rocky outcroppings and climbing to even get to where she is, and who knows. Who knows what that thing has done to her lair um, to make it work in its benefit. Honestly, I'm a bit disappointed that we weren't more guileful with those goliaths outside. We could have used the extra combatants. Well, uh, I do think this calls for a strategic retreat and uh, maybe some rest and time to consider how we want to deal with this. Yeah, I think definitely a rest is good. I... I think we'd be okay for the most part, but we have to get through whatever that thing is in the middle, and I have no idea what the other thing can do, and that's the scariest part. Well, that offers it... us an opportunity to do a little research, yes? What do you mean by research? I don't know, maybe there's a library here. This is the lair of a dragon. Uh, Christina, has has Rain ever seen or heard of anything like the worm creature before? Uh, Rain can make me an arcana check. I suppose we all can, right? Yeah, feel free. Nice, 19. Well, based on your description, it sounds like this worm thing is in some way related to the other things that we've been dealing with around here, right? Um, it did look different. It didn't look... It didn't have all the crystalline features that everything else around here. I got 17 here. with Bless. Ooh, okay. Uh, Rain, you want to give me... Oh, you died, B. So you do not have Bless. 17 nope. and a 19. It's 19. So for the both of you, um, you are familiar with some subterranean magical creatures that can burrow. Uh, there are subterranean worms or even things like bullets, uh, which are more like subterranean sharks. Uh, but this thing uh, is not just massive. From Rain's notes and from what uh, Ecos uh, saw, 
This thing is definitely also touched by whatever corrupting magic of this slow. It's been warped somehow. Which means magic will most certainly have some kind of strange effects either in that room or on it. Yeah. Uh, or at the very least, it'll resist your most powerful spells. It may be best to depend on weapon attacks to do your damage, yes? Uh, Rain, you have you get a sinking feeling in your gut for just a moment because you remember a conversation with uh, Lou Nibblesworth about Lacaris and things like uh, his crystal form attracting uh, problems because of the significant amount of magic it's radiating. And surely this dragon's lair is now radiating a massive amount of magic if all of these things are now uh, processing or tainted by slow. Hmm. Could something like this potentially go to Borealis? Hmm. Yeah, I think we might be seeing here something to the effect of what might happen to Borealis if Lacaris' shard was to stay. I don't think all of these all of these creatures weren't sent here. They weren't here with the orcs. In fact, the things beyond this room certainly don't seem related to the orcs. It seems like the orcs haven't gone in there, like you said, Flix. But they came from elsewhere, perhaps. Attracted. Crash would hmm. where this is. Either way, I can go about setting up the dome back in maybe the tavern where it's safe and or safer, and we can at least rest. But it, it would at, probably need pretty long rest. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't see any way around it. I don't think we can fight that thing as we are. Oh, I I agree based on your description. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably best option. I do not know if making for making for town is best option given time constraints. I could, I could possibly, we could possibly try to sneak past the crystalline creature in the next room over um, after a rest, could say, try to get us through. It will be, on it. it will be somewhat difficult, but I think we would want to go through the other doorway if we wanted to do so. It's the only one that actually kind of bypasses the creature in the middle. Well, realistically, I don't think sneaking past any combatants in order to get to Prismata and fight this worm is a wise course of action. The worm itself will be a dangerous enough combatant without any surprises hitting us from behind. Well, I don't what I, I mean I don't I don't get the impression that they're working together anymore. Like they're not I think they're just creatures that have come to be opportunistic. If we well, can that, get past that, one that, that, you see you recognize this crystal centaur thing. Is it sentient? Could we convince it to help us? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Or, at the very least, it did seem to have eyes, unlike the other creatures here. We might be able to... I can make us invisible. We might be able to sneak past it and then only deal with the worm creature at Prismata. Well, either way, it sounds formidable. I'd like to make sure that uh, nose in top fighting form and that we have the extra firepower, as it were. Uh, Flix, are you following with the group? Yes, sorry, I thought we were static and chatting. And I have the giant worm crystal thing open in Prismata. Sorry. <laughs> so distracting. Uh, where did you guys go? <laughs> uh, back to the tavern. Huh? Huh? Huh, alright. Um, what is over here? Did we ever explore over here? Where's over here? Oh. Computer, define over here. I'm being extra sneaky. Nothing over Are here. you? Ah, okay. All right. Um, did we ever see if this guy had anything on him? Nope. Uh, I will check idly on the way past. One moment. Uh, on that creature, you you find an ivory medallion. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. 
Does it feel special? Uh, <laughs> uh, it is relatively flat. It has a simple hole drilled into it and an old, uh, kind of a swirly decorative design. Hmm. Well, I'm in the tavern. Uh, Rain will summon it. the hut. We're right here. We're right in the middle of the tavern. I don't see you for some reason. Let me refresh. Look, Rain. I found this medallion on one of the uh, creatures that was trying to murder us. Oh, well, I can look at all the things that we've collected so far as well while resting. Yes, let's figure out how it all works. All right, what are you doing? Rain summons the hut, and then we take a long rest. Uh, Rain will spend some time identifying once the hut is up. All righty, let me get you your uh, magic circle. One moment. <clears throat> Bong. Ring. Uh, bang. Magic circle. Magic circle, we love you. I'm gonna put it not on the table. There we go. Put it on the table, it's your life. Do what you want. Yeah, do what you want. All right, Rain, show me Liaman's tiny hut. Uh, da, 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 da. I have to actually like click into the spell to put it in since it's a ritual. All right. Rain, you summon up the hut to protect you and your friends. Do you all choose now to take a long rest? Yes. I think so. All right, Flix, get in the hut. I was in the hut. All right, there get we go. I, I, I took you away from the hut. How dare you. Now, Rain, one thing you are aware of is that there is definitely an, uh, some sort of elemental rumbling about here. And it's probably the thing that you felt earlier when you were listening at the door that is currently barricaded to the east. He's going to be rumbling about here, but he doesn't really have a reason to go to your current location. Mm. Oh, his room connects with this room? Is that what I'm gathering? Now, he or... may just come by here. But we'll see if he does. <laughs> okay, well. I mean, even if he does, that doesn't necessarily mean that he has anything to do with the tavern. Uh, Rain, roll me a d20, please. Nice middle of the road. <laughs> it's what we like to see. All right. For the first hour, you all complete your short rest. Please regain uh, any hit dice, and then we will see if you complete your long rest. Dice are rolling, poor Kashaba. Oh my god, rain. Okay. We have a we have a selection of magical items that we're identifying now too, I think. Uh, yeah. is that correct, Rain? But, yes, but I mean we'll do the short rest dealio first, real quick. Just get this out of the way. Yep, please complete your hit dice and then when you're done, please let me know. I'm done. Alright. Rain still healing, still healing. Five hit dice, yeah, okay. Like it doesn't, yeah, there we go. Cool, done. Right. Very good. Now, let's see, hmm. Ikashiba, roll me a d20. Oh no. What? Uh, 16, that's getting very high. As you all drift off to sleep in the sanctity of Rain's tiny hut, your short rest is completed, and you are, uh, thankfully, not bothered by any rampaging elementals. 
The next four hours pass, and it is relatively quiet, uh, aside from the snoring basilisk in the back. You all complete your long rest. Hooray! Excellent. What do all of our magical items do? Yay! Hooray! Mm -hmm. Okay. List them, and I shall tell you your secrets. Uh, okay, we've I'm got go the... Grab some meat while this is going on, I'll be right back. Yes, okay. go ahead. We got the set of pipes. Magical set of pipes. Ah, uh, these... are pipes that will... Uh, haunt you forever if you blow into them. They are pipes of haunting. Pipes of haunting. Is like a curse or? Uh, here. I, I so can look them up if that's if you are, the name of No, them. no, I, I have them right here. You must be okay. proficient with wind instruments to use these pipes. They have three charges. You can use an action to play them and expend a charge to create an eerie spellbinding tune. Each creature within 30 feet of you that hears you play must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or become frightened of you for one minute. If you wish, all creatures in the area that are not hostile towards you automatically succeed on the saving throw. Uh, it can repeat it on the end of its turn. If it succeeds, it's immune. So, toot horn, scare man. Okay. And that's within 30 feet, you said? Yes. Uh, so we had the purple potion. Uh, that is a potion of psychic resist. <laughs> That'll be useful. Uh, ivory medallion? The ivory uh, medallion. No, not there yet. Okay, fine. <laughs> the ivory medallion is not magical. Oh. Uh, we have the fluorescent orange potion. Uh, that is a potion of growth. All right. Uh, no has the potion of greater healing. I think that was it. Uh, we had the beautiful ivory tarot card set in a filigreed platinum box. I don't think that was magical, though. Non-magical. The thick leather mantle trimmed with arctic fox fur and the meticulous silk gown decorated with owl feathers. Oh, man, I was hoping that that mantle was magical. It is not. Okay. Uh, um, I think that is it, then. Uh, do any of us resonate with any of the new crystals or gems that we picked up? Uh, no resonant gems in this batch. Okay. However, I will remind you all that you do have your uh, Thanksgiving inspiration. Oh shit, we do. Don't forget. Just in case you know you're on the precipice of death. That would have been good to remember earlier. Do you would have? Okay, I'm gonna go grab a snack myself. I'll be back soon. All right, take a couple minutes. Uh, I will be back at about 5:05, and we will continue. Take three.
Hello. Hello. I have a monster. Had a bio break. Great. Let's, um, let's see. Grabbed my uh, tuna and Negi Toro bowl I got from Mitsua. Ooh. So, yeah. Enjoy me some seafood. Somebody downstairs got a uh, Burger King, and I have said many times I am not a huge fan of Burger King, so I think he took this opportunity to, like, try Burger King because he's never had it before. Dude, any, anytime, like, Kayla's out of town, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, time to buy some McDonald's, time to get some Burger King. <laughs> but she's, like, she's also not a Burger King fan, but, like, I grew up with the Flame Road Lock person. I don't know how you, I don't know how you do it, man. Um, I don't do it so much anymore. Oh, your, your mic is crackling a little bit. We lost him. We did. No, nope. is he back? Is he back? Hello. No. Kashiba. Sad. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I was a lifeguard, when I was like eighteen or nineteen, yeah. like every day I would just sit there and like get Burger King. <laughs> oh my god. A couple Whopper and a giant Mountain Dew while I was lifeguarding. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. That's so unhealthy. No, ever you know, it's no surprise to me at this point in my life I have like some noticeable health problems. No. <laughs> like what if I had just not eaten like crap? But in fairness, I really did not even know that I was eating like crap until like my mid twenties, until I took like a college course on it, because they don't actually teach you nutrition, at least in Florida high schools. <laughs> yeah, gr grew up eating the Burger Kings in the Mickey D's. Yeah, right. Like, I guess they just, like, rely on your parents, but if you come from, like, you know, the sort of home where that's just not a thing, you're just kind of SOL. I'm adjusting some of my spells off the long rest. Oh, yeah. Uh, Maybe yes. you should do, do the that. same, Akashiba. Do that! Do right, that! You're getting, you're getting healing word, but you're not getting fucking necromancy. I mean, I don't know. You cast necromancy on the uh, the Goliath outside, so... Uh, no, it's called Spare the Dying Drew, so it's like, he, you know, she was dying, and I stopped the dying from happening. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot like, you know, Revivify. No, uh, she was still alive. I just helped her, you know, make sure she stayed alive. It's very different, Drew. Mm. It's so different, you just wouldn't even believe it. You just don't even know where to draw the line. You're just making <laughs> up rules now. Akashiba is very You're good playing rules. God, Akashiba. No! I mean, I'm a cleric. I'm just saying, look, it's very simple. If you are dead, Akashiba's like, then stay dead. If you are not yet dead and Akashiba can stop you from being dead, then yeah, of course I'm going to be a bro. You are the worst doctor. Yeah. 100%. He's the worst cleric. Like, yeah, we, I've played with some bad clerics in D&D, <laughs> but holy shit, Akashiba takes the cake. Hey, but you have heard of me. <laughs> it's exactly it. This is my first time playing a cleric, and like as I have continued to evolve in this campaign, where you all were like, "Rob, use bless." I was like, "Yeah, bless is just really good." Okay, we'll use bless. And then you've asked me some other thing, you know, is like remove curse. Like, yeah, I would totally care to remove curse. But then you come up upon my religious beliefs that everything is dead should stay dead. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I have a religious exemption from being useful to the party. <laughs> Visit beautiful Polaris. Skeletons wanting to be friends with me. Yeah, fuck me that. surprised. But happy to be friends with skeletons. I, I did appreciate that Akashiba was literally going to murder Rain in cold blood. Uh, uh, with a fireball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, it's I see my friend is down. Let's chaw the cold. Won't help. Won't help. We'll murder, though. Happy, Ca happy Cauterize? to do that. Cauterize? Honestly, I did not have the reach to get to you. And I just didn't understand. For some reason, like, as someone who's never been in that situation before, I assumed that person who was dead just didn't take damage. I'm not making that up. I just thought they had eye frames or something. <laughs> they're like, oh, they're dead. So no, there's friendly them. fire in this game, Akashiba. <laughs> Emphasis yeah. on the fire. Listen, I'm very much learning how to play D&D, okay? I'm not some D&D expert like you are. Although you have given me excellent inspiration into the next magical item I am probably going to give you. <laughs> oh, God damn it! I'm concerned. <laughs> you should be. Is it the ring oh of God. better decision making? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but bad decision. The ring doesn't go on your finger. Nice. 
these decisions are getting more colorful all the time. You're like, but should I wear it anyway? <laughs> like, yes! Listen, the light doesn't discriminate when it comes to where you wear your ring, so the light <laughs> would be fine. <laughs> I also, like, straight up, the backstory of his Minotaur mentor, not that it's, like, really come up in detail, like, the Minotaur mentor was 100% like a Southern Baptist cleric of the light, so, like, there is only one of two ways of looking at things, which I know, like, Lakar has kind of touched on, where Lakar is like, well, maybe you just, you know, try to use your powers differently. <laughs> and, like, Akashma has, like, tried to, like, internalize that, but but good old Bartholomew did teach him. Now, look, like... Light... Oh, sorry, I totally interrupted no, you. Continue, fine. continue. Just to re reiterate just that, like, the light is for keeping people alive, and things that are dead should not come back. It's very simple. Yes. Lakaris definitely wanted to let you know of, like, the duality of light. Like, here's the part of light that is uh, searing purification. It burns everything around it into cinders until there's nothing left. Yeah. And then there's the nice part of light where it's, like, warm and comforting and blah, blah, blah. And it's, like, depending on where you are in your life, you could be both. And I feel like Akashiba is way on the first side. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because that's what his goddamn mentor said to do. And his mentor saved his life. And when a mentor saves your life, you just, you know, you carry on his teachings. Yeah, and he probably has a nice, like, brand on his butt uh, given to him by the light itself. Absolutely. Move. Look, if the light came up to me, it was like, Akash, but I need you to join my sex dungeon. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, that's what the light wants. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Feel like, I feel like we've saved Akashima's life, too, more than a few times. Like, how uh -oh. our opinion is really uh -oh. famous, though. Rain, you're going a little robotic. You might want to reset Discord. I banished yeah. thee. It's fine. Banish! Uh, you know. Aha, I banished. This is what happens when someone tries to resist the light. The light actually destroys their internet. Now, I... Stop the banish spell! Huzzah! <laughs> Damn it! Reconnect! Now! Come back. I'm a really terrible wizard. Drew and not playing this game because his internet won't hold up. Lol. Name a more iconic duo. I can't. I They're can't. the most iconic. Okay, I'm back, but eating okay. snacks, so I'll be. Welcome back. I uh, Welcome. I demanded uh, Rain to reset. Domo uh, Origano. Uh, Mr. Not So Roboto, you sound good. All right, are we ready to continue? Oh, oh, oh. I, I, actually, before we continue, um, are you guys shifting up which spells you have memorized? Yes. Yes, yeah. already happened. So I am patch notes here. I am minus one lesser restoration and plus one healing word. So. Okay. I am and plus it... zero revivifies. <laughs> uh, Rain, what did you change? Uh, I dropped haste in Tasha's bind whip for lightning bolt and slow. Okay. Very good. Very good. Rain, what are your you spells do? finalized? Are you locking your answer now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're final. I, Rain doesn't have infinite choices like Akashiba does, who just chooses not to use anything from his wealth of spell list. Uh, yes, Akashiba the Privileged. Yeah. <laughs> now, like, okay, meta discussion, like, really quick. My yeah. assumption is that because of the composition of the party, Akashiba needs to be hybrid DPS. And also, I don't actually get a lot of choice about the fact that, like, there's just a bunch of fire spells that I don't use clogging up my spell list. <laughs> like, I've, I don't think I've ever... No, I use Flaming Spear one time. Uh, can't get rid of that. Um, Scorching Ray is kind of like a little bit of like an ass spell. Well, like, things that you get Ray. from your domain, keep in mind, they don't take away from your spell list. They just add to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought they were yeah, the you reason... Get all those, you get all so, those memorized for free. Yeah, those are free, free. Like, they don't take away from anything. The reason you have very few spells to choose, or like very few spell slots, Akashiba, is because your wisdom is ass for a yes, cleric. Yes, your, your wisdom is relatively low. That's why you're, you don't have any many, uh, that Gee, many spells. man. What? It's 15. That's really that bad. For a cleric. That's like literally your most important stat as a cleric. So as we as we level up, you could probably stand to put a couple more points into your uh, wisdom and then you can take uh, slightly better spells. But also because of your domain, those spells automatically just come with your kit. So they're not going to take away from anything. And then there you have a smattering of spells that you can choose from uh, also based on your domain. I don't 
now we're on like session 30 or something and i'm just now being told that wisdom affects how many spells i can have you guys are not good party mates <laughs> because no we asked. assumed that that was yeah we i kind of assumed that that was like a personal decision like when you went with mobility like you let christina talk you into mobility instead of taking wisdom i was like no. that sounds like a personal choice to me no no no. listen i talk you know i asked if christina if mobility was a good choice and christina was like yeah that's a smart choice and in fairness mobility has been a good choice yeah. i just didn't know that the alternative was literally just have more spells to be um, fair mobility is a great feat i mean okay so, so mobility with a person with reach is actually good because if it's you play really smart good. nothing can hit you like yeah. straight up. So, because if you if you dome from ten feet away, and then you can just walk up, like they don't care about attacks of opportunity because you're already you already have bugbear reach, right? Uh, something yeah. Else, yeah. Something else that you may not be aware of, Rob, is that your wisdom directly impacts the save DC of your damaging spells. Yeah. Big no, wisdom. Big damn. This is, in fairness, like, I'm just throwing out there, this is basically the first time I have ever not just played a fighter in a D&D campaign, so, like, this was, like, a, this was a big reach for me, and I'm learning. But, but well, that's, that's Akashiba's... I'm proud of you, Rob. I'm that's not Akashiba's proud of Akashiba. Growth, right? Like, Akashiba is like, okay, like, did I go into, like, life wanting to be a warrior bugbear cleric? And then, you know, maybe he's learning, like, oh, if he becomes smarter, like, maybe he can just be a better cleric and less of a warrior. And that's, that's totally fine, too. Like, the way you're playing your character, like, mobility works. You are chucking around the mace, and you're making fireballs, and you're doing a lot of damage. Uh, but just, if somebody dies, I'm gonna grow increasingly concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, you cannot heal with fire. No, this um, is just me not taking any like sort of revival magic. This is literally just a tilt drew. That's fine. Yeah, that's that's fine. me doing that. That's on. A I mean, hey, it almost paid off for you uh, was, about an hour ago. I was. I just want you to be able to play a new character. I, I can tell you're getting tired of rain. Yeah, I can <laughs> tell you don't like rain. It's fine. But then again, I don't think you'd like any character that I would come uh, up and, with. And so for, it doesn't matter. That's also, fair. <laughs> for what it's for what it's worth, Rob. Us being super objectively rude about Akashiba's wisdom suckiness doesn't mean that Akashiba sucks ass. Akashiba's great. Oh, no, no, no. For the record, like, I just enjoy this banter, and I just want, like, a post-game talk show now where we roast each other. <laughs> rude, if you were to actually make a character that was a fighter that just cursed a lot and was rude, I would finally approve of your choice. That was just Ajax. Yeah, that was just Ajax. But Ajax was so stoic. I want someone a little more body, you know. Well, rocking. that's because Flix talked all the time, and there wasn't really any room for <laughs> that's true. For, for Ajax to get a word in edgewise. Flix so. takes up eighty percent of the economy of, of chatting. That's yeah, fine. it's true. I get that. Okay, um, real quick, finalize my spells. I dropped remove curse for control water. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I like control. That's water. very interesting. Yeah, decided, you know, you guys were roasting me for not having cool spells, so I just said, fuck it, I'm going to have a fun spell. I don't think this is actually going to do anything, but... Hey, people uh, <laughs> totally, like, create food and water and control water. Actually, pretty decent, like, combo. I, I, like the, I like the banter that happens a lot online of, like, can I create water inside the enemy's lungs? That's always <laughs> a good one. Oh, God. Yeah. Thankfully, Akashba lacks the imagination for that sort of thing, so he's just you also... a little water pool. You also can't, so... No. Nope. Oh. Yeah, you, you really can't. Oh. Yeah, you but can't But people just, ask a lot. Yeah, try and drown somebody in the air. Yeah, I My favorite that. response to that is like, yes, but if you do it, as a DM, like, but if you do it, the NPCs can also do it. Yeah, so basically I can't be a bloodbender. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless... All right. All right. Your long rest is now over, and the elemental did not disturb your position. The magic circle falls, and everyone, uh, including No, is healed to full. I have uh, removed No for the, the time being, and he can return when he is, well, ready to play. But otherwise, uh, everybody is de-blessed, de-blessed, because we've all taken a long rest. That is rather the concern, though, is that I'm not sure how much further we can get without the additional help. Uh, don't, you don't have to depend on no to do this encounter. Yeah, I also, like, I would assume, kind of like Christina did, I, she realized I always tweak like, based on how many yeah, people are like, here. when you realize Psychedelic Orb was not a charge spell, you very clearly, like, <laughs> diminish the difficulty of the encounter by just, they only cast it once per. They're only uh, supposed to cast it once per. I was like, this oh, is God. supposed to be a charge spell. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, okay, I think we can do it. Let's go. To be fair, their staff was good too. 
as the person who literally took greater than her entire total amount of hit points no, in I'm a not, single round. I'm not saying the encounters aren't potentially deadly. I'm just saying if you yeah. go in with, I'm, I'm not going to make us stop when we're having. Uh, we can. should so go, much fun. guys. We should go this way. We should go through these doors over here. Oh well, I mean, There's... either way, shouldn't we shouldn't we examine this chamber over here? What chamber? The one all the way to the right. Did we? Why? Because we didn't examine it thoroughly. Maybe there's something that will help us. I think that's where the elemental is. I mean, I think that's where I heard the rumbling. Uh, oh, you can look, I guess. I don't. I I think we should try and bypass the elemental as much as is possible. I I would rather only fight, have to potentially fight one thing before we get to the worm. Seems fair. Uh, did you see where I pinged? I I did. Yeah. I think that was what we were talking about. I think maybe you missed it right before we we took a rest. Yeah, probably. Um, Rain Rain thinks that that was the the rumbling sound that she heard uh, on the other side of the doorway in the tavern. That maybe it all connects. Oh, okay. See, I thought that this this There's... was not where the elemental was. I thought because like this is not connected with the crystal chamber that uh, Eco was exploring. There, there, there is an off branch, a branch off room that is on the far eastern side of the map, that's where the elemental was. Mm, okay. Yeah. So oh, I think... Oh, whatever. That's just me hypothesizing based off of context clues that Christina gave us. Um, All right. So any ideas about how we're going to beat this initial fellow? Well, I think what we can do... It, it did seem to have eyes. Yeah, right, Christina? I know it had eyes in the art, but it did seem to have eyes as it, I was... It seemed to have eye spots. Okay. We might, uh, I don't know if it's a perfect idea, but I can make us invisible and maybe Flix, you can try and, well, like maybe like throw a rock or something on the far to the far side of the room or flutter over to the far side of the room and make some conspicuous noise and we can try to slip past it on the left. It did not seem to have any interest in eco and I got somewhat close to it. Oh, rock. Have you not seen the amazing illusions I can create? You can't do that while you're invisible. Oh, right. So cover kind of all of the angles is what I'm suggesting. All right, all right. I'll gather up some random pebbles and whatnot. A uh, quick question, uh, I guess for Rain, maybe Flix as well. When you saw water in there, was it running water or mostly like standing still? It seemed like it was stagnant water, but... I didn't ask, Christina. From the uh, fountains on the east side, it was actually running. No, no I think in the, the main room. Yeah. Oh, the, the, or, the room with uh, with Prismata. Oh, um, there's some stagnant and some flowing, like there's puddles and things like that. But there's a significant amount of water in the room. But it was like wading level water, I think is what oh, you said. Oh, okay, so it's not, it's not like, it's not like... Not swim, but it'll be difficult to rain. Right. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Um, Flix, you can, you can cast invisibility on yourself, right? Or would you like me to cast it on you? It's a, it's a bigger spell for me to do it on all three of us, but I can do that if, if that's better for you. Well, I can cast it on myself, but I'm loath to use my limited powers to do so. Okay. On the other hand, most of the spells that I would cast likely aren't going to be of use in most of these encounters. Well, it's one... I, I only have two uses of a spell of that size, essentially. So, Well, I only you... have two spells to cast of any sort. So, would you rather me invisible, make you invisible along with myself and Akashaba? I think that makes sense. Okay, then I only have one shot at some of the bigger abilities that I can do. So, just so everybody's aware. All right, all right, fine. I'll cast invisibility on myself. No, it's not. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to guilt you. I just want to make sure that I want. I want to make the decision that is best for what we're trying to accomplish. That's all. If you would rather me do it right now, I will do it right now, and we will all be invisible. Yay! Yes, let's Joshua do that. just looks back and forth between you two as you two talk okay. about it. Uh, I cast. Uh, invisibility at fourth level. All right. 
Uh, and okay, so Flix, when we go through the doors, maybe you can flutter to the east and maybe make a little bit of ruckus. Um, rocks falling, things like that. Or maybe on pitter-patter along the ground a little bit before fluttering again. I don't know. Whatever right. seems to get its attention. Just don't cast anything, because you will... I repeat. remember the rules. Hey, can we be I know blessed? the spell now. Can we be blessed, but also invisible? Um, if you cast Bless before I cast Invisibility. Uh, Christina, am I good? Uh, yeah, that's fine. You can cast it before Rain casts Invisibility. Would you all like to be blessed, blessed, blessed? Okay, Akashva, so when we go through, uh, directly to the north there is a bridge. It is going to go to a central platform where this crystalline centaur-like creature is. We should wait to see if Flix is able to distract it, and then we can try and dash across the bridge and through to the north and bypass it. Nods, realizes he can't be seen. Oh, yeah, okay. Great. Three, two, one, open doors. Let's do it. All right, you press your crystals into the depressions and the doors click open. I need everybody to make me stealth checks, please. You can Do make them with advantage because you great. are invisible. Okay, nice crit. Plus bless. Plus bless. Oh, Billy. Uh, so mine Not is too bad. I am the stealthiest I've ever been. Uh, that is <laughs> insane. Uh, Rain with a 17, Akashaba with a 13? Yeah. I mean, he's still invisible, but yeah. I mean, it's about as good as we can hope. It's a little bit above average for you. Oh. All right. As you all open the doors quietly and creep into the room, you enter this massive chamber where the floors have broken away and descend into nothing. And as I described previously, you see on the central pr platform uh, kind of a spectral bridge connecting these two large slabs of stone. On the far end of the, uh, the room, those of you with uh, dark vision or who can actually just see that far, uh, see a cave going deeper into the east. Uh, and this is where Rain and Iko, uh, Iko saw the elemental. To the north, you all see uh, another small bridge, this going across to the central platform, where this large creature stands. It does not appear to see or hear you come in, and continues kind of pacing about. It appears to be agitated, occasionally scratching at its uh, skin and crystals, uh, Ironically, shedding glitter to the ground like dandruff. Gross. <laughs> Ew. Uh, Akasha, but even with your horrendous stealth roll, Rain's magic and your bless manages to uh, eke you out. It does not seem to notice you as you first enter the room. Okay. All right. Flix is going to zip across. Ashba can't see anybody, so he's just kind of like moving along the bridge. Like Rain, like grabs Akashiba. but well, I guess I can't see Akashiba either. I just know he started walking off. <laughs> Akashiba sta is in front of the bridge because he was told that he would wait until he saw a distraction to run across it. Yeah, that's. I start uh, hanging stones off of the uh, ground over here. How tall is the ceiling here? Uh, ceiling here is about thirty feet. Are you trying to purposely get its attention? Yes. Okay. Uh, it turns, hearing the rocks hit the ground. 
uh, and I'm looks kind in of that direction. Hanging the rocks down into this hallway. This is not where we need to go, right? Correct. Yep, we need to go. We need to go due north, th- where these pillars are. Rain kind of explained. It stumps forward a couple, uh, a couple feet. Akashiba sees it move and begins moving over the bridge. And it begins to stalk forward, lowering itself to the ground a bit more. Scratches at itself. <sighs> um, uh, I can use the Helm of Comprehend Languages without it affecting invisibility, right? Uh, nope. It nope, will nope. absolutely turn off your invisibility. Okay, alright. I should have used that first, I wasn't thinking. Um, plinking some pebbles into the water over here. Uh, yes, it's... hello, come this direction. I'd like to make friends. <clears throat> it can't fit in the hallway. And it uh, sticks its shoulders and head in and looks around. Oh, do, you want, do you want to be friends? Do you understand common? I'll try different languages that I know. I'll go run through common, elvish, sylvan, and under common. Uh, does not seem to be able to communicate with you. All right. How tall is it? Uh, this the thing itself. Uh, it is a large creature, so it is. So I've got plenty of clearance to go over its head and escape. Uh, you could go over its head, sure. Yeah, I'm gonna zip past it. and rejoin my compatriots. Was it acting, actually, can I roll a quick insight before I leave the chamber? Was it acting hostile or curious? Uh, roll insight. Ooh. Ah, uh, hostile. <laughs> Very hostile. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Incredibly so, yeah, hostile. So this is not something we can make friends with. This is... No, it's going to, uh, how would you say, uh, rock your world. It will probably try and kill you. Yes. Okay, noted. All right. One moment, please. Hurdle one down. And I can't see them, so I'm like, well, I hope they're through. All right, um, everyone loaded in. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if you. I don't know if any of you are around. I'm, let me descend closer to the ground. Uh, the cave opens up to a massive central chamber, and as I described to Iko, I won't uh, double describe. But the central dais is made up of a massive crystal, and lying next to the crystal is Prismata, the faceted. And within her coils, or excuse me, Prismata caught within this giant core spawns, coils, looks eager to make her its next meal. Water fills most of this room, uh, uh, probably about knee height, making it hard to, to traverse. These gray platforms here will be safe to stand on, and any water will be difficult to rain. So, um, whispering. So, I don't really, I didn't really get this far in planning. Um, any ideas? I could part water to make it easier to get there. Hmm. Uh, Frankly, I'm terrified of the thing, and I have no idea. I planned to hover as far away from it as possible and shoot it. Seems like a that certainly mm-hmm. seems like a plan. I don't know. It seems like every time we've come into dealing with crystals, uh, our magics do not work as intended. So I, as much as I would like to hang back and use uh, fire, I do not know that that will be option. Not to mention it's made out of rocks. Oh, 
You know, everything burns at some point. No. Maybe. <laughs> I... Uh, I'm gonna cast Armor of Agathis on myself. You're, You're going to lose invisibility if you do that. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, we, knew that, okay, we knew that the fine. other thing... If it just well, senses we're here suddenly and the fight starts, then yes, it matters. All right. Well, what do we know about these things? I don't think they rely on sight. It doesn't have any eyes. It's got the same pits that the others did. Uh, Christina, can I, like, see that it is visibly, like, in the water? Uh, it itself? Yeah, is, is the giant snake bad thing, like, actually touching the water with any part of its body? Uh, currently, yes. Okay. Well, that uh, I believe... Yeah, so the bottom four squares are all touching the water. Um, but he, so he's a four by four creature, so yeah. Okay, so he's in the water to some degree. Yep. Got it. <clears throat> Prismata is not. Okay. <coughs> hey, all then... right, I would like to try one thing before we all start. Okay. Now, Prismata is unconscious, correct? And this thing is wrapped around her. If I enlarge her, then it should pin that fucking thing, and then we can kill it with impunity. Could... What if... Hmm. Or it might just burst it all together. It's not bad to start. It's not bad to start playing. Is it possible, Akashba, could you try to heal Prismata so she'd actually have some amount of... <clears throat> well... Yeah. Autonomy on her own, and flicks enlarge her, and then, I mean, hell, that's a good as, as good a distraction as anything, and then we just fight it together. Uh, I could do some from a distance, but it would be best if I got up close to actually uh, heal. Hmm. I suspect we'll have to deal with the worm before we can help Prismat. Oh, flicks! But I, she I have... can't. She can't resist the magic if she's unconscious, is my point. She will get bigger. Maybe... Or that well, she should. Flix, if you can get close to her, and Rain will hand you a superior healing potion, you can try and pour this down her mouth, stealthily, and then we could communicate with her. I could communicate with her from here. I don't think that she's wounded. I I don't know if she is or isn't. Um, she's real big, and we can see her from here, correct? Pretty clearly. Uh, she is pretty big, but you guys are pretty far away. What uh, what are you trying to accomplish? I'm trying to determine whether a healing spell would or a healing potion would be useful at all in this case, because I don't. I'm loath to use an entire action trying to pour a healing potion down her throat if it's going to do nothing. Hmm. I will allow you to do a medicine or arcane or arcana check, please. Why don't you do the arcana check, Rain, and I'll do the medicine check. Oh, I can also do a medicine I got check. A, yeah, you're probably much better at the medicine check. I got a 14. Oh, hell yeah. Ooh. That's a crit. <clears throat> Nice. Uh, Akashaba no. and Rain, um, you know that a healing potion, if she had physical wounds, um, would definitely mend those. But Prismata does not appear to outwardly have uh, any sort of physical wounds. Um, her scales are still bright. She's not bloody. She's not missing any limbs. Um, she just appears to be unconscious. So you're not exactly sure uh, what is her malady. So. To answer your question, if you think a healing potion will uh, get her up and conscious again, you're you're not probably sh probably not probably hmm. not. Of all the times to forget to uh, <laughs> not have her move first. Um. Um. Oh, sorry. I wanted to add one more thing. Um. Rain, because of your high Arcana check as well. Um. Dragons are extremely magical creatures, and this proximity to all this slow uh, is probably at the, uh, the crux of her weakness. Hmm. And we still haven't found anything that even remotely counteracts slow in any way, right? No. 
Is the is the slow the crystal sticking out because the the rest is water down here, right? Uh, there's no slow in this room that you can see. There appear to be only uh, crystals that are illuminated. Okay, but so this the... thing is radiating slow, right? Sorry, like what's what like, thing? This thing is tainted like all the other slow tainted things, right? Uh the the big worm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it's probably the source of the slow. So okay. even if we got rid of all the barrels of dust, we'd still have to kill the one. Yeah. Probably. But always just walk up and try to banish it. <laughs> Can't hurt. I mean, it only has to make a 13 <laughs> to not be banished. Still, I mean, if you succeed, then yeah. we fucking win. Like, Well, that's assuming that it's extra planar. Otherwise, it still comes back. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it probably would just be like a minute away and then hope the dragon yeah. gets up with the Banish minute. Banish is great to give us some time to try and like get Prismata just out of here and like not fuck with this thing. Well, it's a charisma save of thirteen. I gotta I gotta feel like this thing's gonna make that. I don't think it's very charismatic. It doesn't look very charismatic you... to me. Perhaps it's charisma. It, it doesn't um, it doesn't it affect, affect saving throws, unfortunately. Ah. Just okay. ability checks. Only ability checks, so uh, I could hex its ability. I could hex its strength, so it's not very good at grappling. Well, that probably does a little bit less. But I mean, if it's free, it's free. But yeah, I was not. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure what spells I was going to cast, but uh, I was not planning to use hex. I, well, maybe I should actually. Okay, so uh, yeah, options here. We have like the hail mary of banishment. Um, I can try to slow it. You could slow it. We try. Um, I have a couple of well, chances at that. Like I said, I have the innate ability to make things larger and smaller. Yeah, if I get so close enough, it's... Christina, is it wrapped around uh, Prismata, or is it just kind of hanging out next to her? Uh, Prismata is, like, in its coil, but it's not, like, strangling her right now. She's unconscious, and she's, like, laying within loops of its coil. Okay. Got it. So, can I tell if I made her a full size larger, if it would pin or damage the worm? If you made her a size larger, it would mildly inconvenience the worm for a round. Okay, so it's not worth the effort then. It I would have it a, a chance to, uh, like, bump her off of it with a uh, athletics check. Hmm. It would be like a like a shove action or like a like something like that. No, I'm not really seeing any, like, right option other than just try to fight this thing, but... Yep, no cleverness here. I think this is just a straight-up brawl. Yeah. Well, for Either way. is it better if I just go ahead and part water when we want to start so we can at least get there with, like, little um, difficulty? Can we actually... Need... Can we actually climb up this, Christina? Like, this looks like it's a contiguous piece. Uh, you can, yeah. I think we should try and fight from the platforms, maybe but at least you and me. Yes, okay. obviously I'll be floating about. Yeah, make no. it come to us, I guess. It's I don't like want this thing it. to have the high ground on us. You I two stay we well away from it and get into position, and as soon as you are, I have a couple of spells that I wanted to cast. I, do, I honestly don't think our invisibility matters anymore. Well, That's fair. Okay. This, this reminds me of, uh, remember in fight in Hunt when we fought the giant mechanical squid thing? We... We on platform. We just try to take the smartest position and and do best we can with tools we have. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. And try desperately not to die. Yeah. All right, so we, we go on. Ahead. We go on you then, Flix. All right. Let me know when you're. Um, well, how about this? I'll give it a count of twenty. We're already. We already walked away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going on you, Flix. <laughs> yeah, he's going twenty. Blah 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 blah. He counts down to twenty. Uh, then I cast Armor of Agathis. Okay. Which is a non-concentration spell. Okay, your invisibility drops. Um, and then I'm going to haste <laughs> myself using my Ring of Spell Story. Which is a concentration spell. Hmm. So I am now hasted. When Rain feels the invisibility wear off of Flix, she'll uh, wait for him to kind of start getting into position and she will cast Mirror Image on herself. 
Uh, I imagine this chamber has a ceiling that's more like 50 feet, Christina. Uh, it is very high. Uh, I will allow it to be up to 60 feet. Okay, I will be 40 feet up. And mind you, if I, uh, <clears throat> you know, if I knock you prone, you will fall and you will take fall damage. And I do yep. love knocking flyers prone. That's my favorite thing. No, I'll fly over water then. It's, it's knee height. The water? Yes. Well, it's knee height to a human. It's a full body length for me. Two okay. full body lengths, maybe. Yeah, enjoy fall, enjoy more. falling in that. That's that's gonna yeah, that's not gonna hurt at all. Also, forty feet into water, regardless of shallowness, should be pretty good. You've you never you've never gone cliff diving jumps. before, have you? <laughs> There's actually just a bunch of jagged like high dive artists already. that would dive into like basically the forty bucket. feet's forty feet's very high. Um, quick question here, Christina, just because yeah. it's not actually explaining in the spell. So like. For redirecting the flow of water, even if it's like knee-high water, is it safe to assume that if the flow was, like if I created a flow of water, it would drag this giant thing, or is this thing just way too heavy? Uh, let, hold on, let me read your spell. Okay. Control water. Till the spell ends, you control any freestanding water inside an area you choose uh, as a cube up to 100 feet on a side. Uh, so you can make it rise. Okay, you can make a wave. So any huge or smaller creatures in the wave's path. So this thing is a gargantuan creature. Um, so you wouldn't be able to move it. Um, you would be able to move Prismata, who is a huge creature. Um, okay. Let's see, let me look at the part water. Okay, so part water would allow you to traverse the water without uh, incurring the, uh, the penalty to movement. Yeah. And let me see. Uh, reverse flow. Okay, that you can you could potentially do that. Whirlpool. Whirlpool is a non-factor from what I'm seeing, just because of the 25 feet deep requirement. <clears throat> uh, if you find water in here that is deep enough, uh, you could potentially use the whirlpool. Okay, so like just as an idea here, was thinking basically raise up the water to 20 feet using flood mm -hmm. and then redirect flow to move the thing back. But it sounds like because it's a gargantuan class thing, that probably doesn't work. Yes, because of the requirement, it would have to be uh, huge or smaller. Okay, cool. Good to know. Just wanted to check. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to prepare an action if this thing starts charging at us to cast a firewall uh, right here. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Right? Yep. <clears throat> uh, as you all get a little bit closer to this massive worm, and I'm going to give it a name for you all, that is holding Prismata in its coils, you notice that the worm itself seems to be emanating an aura, a faint blue aura that reminds you of uh, what came off of the slow in Grisha's chambers. And it appears to be uh, emanating this aura in about a ten-foot radius around it. Alright, go ahead. Okay, uh, 86 that wall of fire thing, by the way. Never mind all that. Uh, so we're all still invisible, um, and we're waiting uh, for- Not Flicks. the only one who's invisible. Yeah, Akashaba, you are still invis, Rain is not, and Flix is not. Okay, uh, then, yeah, Akashaba's just in you know, a battle yeah, state, it's waiting. It's not reacting to me, though, right? Uh, either it does not see you, or does not care. Alright, well, let's, let's see if it cares about this. I'm going to shoot it in one of its eyeballs. Or eye holes. Does an... Bless. Yep. Uh, does a 19 hit? A 19 hits. Excellent. Uh, that deals a total of 25 damage. All right, one moment, please. Flex, I'm gonna need you to roll initiative.
plus plus 23 feeling good about my initiative rolls this uh this session finally uh akashaba rain roll initiative for me oh with bless hold on oh yeah doesn't nice. matter much ouch all right flix what is your final initiative total uh, my final initiative total is 23. 23. Hey, Kashaba, what's your initiative total? 20. 20. And rain. It doesn't matter. It's, it is Seven. what it is. Seven? Seven. Oh, I mean, maybe this thing has really, really terrible decks and might roll lower than you. It's possible. Mm, it already rolled. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll forget. Oh, yeah, it did. And it yeah. didn't lose to yeah. you. So. No, it's fine. All right, Flix. Your crossbow bolt hits home. Right, right in the so middle that... of uh, a couple of the, the core spawn worms' plates and a little bit of blue icor splurts out. So that was like an opening attack. Was that part of my opening round or is this now my full combat round? Uh, that was your surprise round. Sweet, so, so now uh, I got a full combat round. So now, wait, hold on. How much damage did you do? 25. 25? All right. Top of the round. Round one, Flix. You're up. All right. Um, yeah, bonus action, uh, steady aim. Nice. Very nice. 22 hits. All right. And so that's a total of 30 damage. Ooh, I don't think that that's going to hit. That was 19. Oh, you're right. Uh, 21, 21 hits. Impact for another 21 damage. Okay. And then in touch track. So I'm, I'm like shooting multiple, like he's just sinking crossbow bolts into each of these little like eye hole things, hoping that it impedes it somehow. He's gone like full anime, my God. <laughs> pew, pew. And insights. What? Uh, what would you like to know? Uh, how much damage did I do? Uh, how many more hit points does this I have? feel like you could add that up yourself, Flix. <laughs> do you how want me to do the points is, does it have? Is that is that how you want to spend your question? Uh yeah, one second. Alright. You did a pretty significant amount of damage to it. Yeah, that was a nice opening round. It seems to be oozing slow. Let go of her, you bitch! Uh it, it rears up and it lets out an echoing ethereal screech. And then I'm going to zip 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, I'll be... Uh, actually, no, I'll go here. This is water beneath me, right? Uh, it is. It's about uh, knee height. On a human, so it's about it's two, full two, body feet. Length yeah, two feet. Yeah, full body length for me. Uh -huh. It's fine. It's great. It's great. That's fine. We love it. Uh huh. You know why they say no diving in a six foot pool? Because you can fucking <laughs> die. God damn it, my lifeguard memories are just coming back to me. <laughs> uh, Flix, does that end your round? It does. Akashaba, you're up. Uh, you are invisible, you are blessed. So because you can see Rain mm. turns and looks at her and points to the water and shouts, Lightning Staff! Lightning Staff! Uh, and then he's going to turn back around and inspired by Flix, he's going to go ahead and try his own shortbow anime wizardry. Ooh. Plus, 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 plus. Yeah, I'm just, I'm surprised it's actually going to hit for, like, my DC6, <laughs> the D6 minus one. Uh, a All 21 right. hits. Okay. 
gonna hit four. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> strikes. Yes. Oh my god. Get in here, blessed strikes. Um, uh, okay. Do you have blessed strikes on? Yeah. It's always but, on. Yeah, blessed yeah. strikes. Like if I slapped you on the face, you would take radiant damage. Uh. Once per round. What, what yeah. type of damage does radiant blessed strikes do? Is it radiant? radiant. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Uh, Ooh, is it vulnerable to the radiant? Plus it strikes a uh, deal one eight radiant damage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you actually forget to load an arrow, and you just accidentally just shoot radiant damage at him through your bow. <laughs> uh, so Akasha, but after flicks, you pull out your short bow, and you're like, "Yeah, I can do this too." Uh, and you shoot at the correspond worm. Now your arrow kind of thunks into its carapace. It, you like you hit it. It just didn't look like it did any damage. But then the bless strikes flares up. And the sparkle that like comes off of the radiant damage, uh, this thing appears to mirror it, and the entire thing kind of flares up with a radiant light. God, and, uh, Prismata roars in pain uh, as she takes seven damage uh, oh, and goes un full more unconscious than she was before. <laughs> Hold on one sec. I I need to step away real quick. My cats are doing something killing me as well. I'll be okay, right back. Okay, okay. Cats. Cat stuff. He's got a real cat stuff. Cat cats stuff. Does often have cat stuff. I, I empathize. Cat stuff. I have cat stuff as we speak, actually. My cat just clambered into my lap. How's it going, buddy? Meow. Cat stuff. We have worm. We have worm stuff to handle. And sometimes cat stuff is worm stuff, Christina. <laughs> as long as they're catching them. Oh, by the way, hey Flix, your potion <laughs> might actually work now because she's taken damage. Thanks, Akasha. The thumbs up, crying cat emoji. <laughs> You're welcome. Also, Stukov, Stukov decided to eat too fast and then throw it up, and then Al decided he wanted to try to eat it. So Al is here. In, Al is currently in my room with the door shut in baby jail. Oh, no. baby jail. Cats eating each other's vomit is a tried and true tradition of catdom. I'm not yeah, sure in the way of nature there, Rob. He's looking at the door right now, doing that like big, like dumb face of his. Like, why can't I eat it? Um, <laughs> why not, Ned? Um, Akashiba, you uh, have discovered that. The correspond worm seems to radiate, radiant damage inflicted upon it. How fortuitous. What kind of, what kind of fucking property thing. is that? What is wrong with these things, honestly? Okay, uh, Akashba is going to summon his spirit weapon as a bonus action. It's just going to be a level two spirit weapon. Um, he's just going to summon it, so. Um, uh, where would he like it? It can't, so you can't hit Sword Chan, calm down. Um, so it's just going to be right here next at his side. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, and I, I can only summon it 60 feet out, so I actually, well, hold on, wait a minute. I think well, I can. You can put it as close to the worm as hold possible, on. right? Hold yeah, because he's a slow boy, right? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> I just, oh my God, we can do it. Yes. Do it, Sword <laughs> Chen. <laughs> okay, Sword Chen swings for uh, a hit of 23. So does 23 hit? Yes. Uh, yes. Take four force damage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The core, yes. the core worm yes. radiates the force damage. The <laughs> mother screams in pain. You just, you just, everyone sees this fucking like sword fly from the ether across this like base and just like right next to the core spawn, just, just slash into him. Amazing. Okay. I, um, I like that one, Akasha, but it actually works. Uh, Akasha, but you are no longer invisible. Okay. Akashba is going to... Uh, well, I shot with a bow. Was I still invisible? Uh, no, I just forgot to take it off. Okay, just making sure. A little bit Wait. sooner. Okay, uh, inside check. Uh, <laughs> no! Even with a bless? Bless? 11? Nope. Unfortunately, uh, he's not a minion class minion. Rip. Okay, um, well, I just figured because he's real big, like, I can see him pretty well. Um... <laughs> Okay, that's the end of my turn. Uh, Akashima, at the end of your turn, the worm takes a paragon action. Uh-oh. That's my favorite things. Uh, and he's going to move. Bum, 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 bum. 
That's his yeah. speed. Bum, 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 Enjoy bum, the bum, attack bum. of opportunity my sword can't have. Uh, <laughs> brumph. No, brumph. <laughs> I thought I was going to take a paragon 25, action. 30. 35. Uh, your sword can take an attack of opportunity. Oh, shit. As the go. worm slowly uncoils its massive girth from around Prismata, and it begins it, to Sword slide Chan. towards the party. Take that full damage. <laughs> Sword Chan is your best spiritual weapon of all time. It really yeah. is. Getting work Like, done. I got a taste for blood. Oh, no, no, no. Those are the only two attacks it's going to get this game. Don't worry. It's well, not, yeah, not going to get more it, fights. At it least it hit. around. Oh, no. It is now the Correspond's turn, and after taking his Paragon action, begins to crawl up. Oof. Five, ten, fifteen. Uh -huh. He slithers up upon the platform and Hello. looks down upon the little cleric of the light. Oh, no. uh, I, ha I have to go AFK. i am come back to see a couple but probably different. Uh, one second, it's got reach, so I actually don't need to be that close. And the worm is going to take multi-attack, lashing out with its tentacles and its bite. It is going to... Bite Akashaba. Actually, no. Yes! How dare you! Just a little bugbear, don't do it. Okay. Uh, that's that's just a you know what? Don't don't pay any don't pay any attention to that. Uh, twenty five. Uh, boarding player. The worm, in all of its massive glory, rears up upon the platform, 10, 20 feet high, no, 30. It's massive. And Akashaba, it looks like it even could swallow you whole. A truly dreadful way to go. Uh, so just to be clear, you used bite and I used warding fire, so you have to roll bite again? So I get to roll bite again. Oof. And he misses. All right. His second attack. Aww. He will make instead with a tentacle. Plus 13 to hit, Jesus. Okay. Those stats seem to not be consistent with what Christina's actually rolling. They, they very rarely are, to be fair. A 21, Akashaba. Yeah, that'll do. I'm back. I hope I cause no delays. No, you're fine. I'm just getting wrecked. Fine. And the tentacle slashes at you. 23 piercing damage. Yeah, that'll do. Akashaba, you are uh -huh. currently grappled. Oof. Uh, oh, I gotta zoom in. Hang on. Where is my... Here it is. Grappled. You are restrained. But it can only grab one person at a time. Akashaba is lifted up off the ground just a little bit by the corresponding worm's tentacles. Akashaba lets out a confused yell. Uh, Prismata is unconscious. <laughs> and radiantly damaged. And radiantly damaged. Rain, you're up. Uh, Rain will open with an insight check. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, you can learn two things, Rain. Uh, let's go with any, like, resistances or immunities. Uh, one moment. Besides Radiant, I don't give a shit about Radiant. I already know what he does on Radiant. It is immune to fire and psychic damage. Okay. Immune to fire? Yes. Well, immune shit. to fire and reflects like some degree of radiant damage? Okay, well, bye. It doesn't matter if I die. <laughs> it was like, what's something that Akashaba just doesn't want to fight? <clears throat> this is because Christina wants me to heal. 
<laughs> what is, uh, can I ask what its, uh, its aura seems to do? Or do we already know that? Is that the radiant aura? Uh, n- no, um, its aura within 20 feet, you will also provoke uh, wild magic surges. What? Gotcha, okay. Um, okay, so Rain is going to activate Blade Song. Okay. Uh, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20. Just going to step back here outside of his aura. Okay. Uh, and she is going to cast. Flow. Oh shit. <clears throat> so she like reaches out and traces like a clock and this ethereal clock face manifests and she just grips it with both hands and twists. Oh, okay. Wisdom saving throw. DC 15. Nice spell effects, by the way. I appreciate you. Very nice. Thanks. All right. Do it. Ah. Uh... Oof. 16. Succeeds. All right. Uh, That is Rain's turn. I wish you guys had bend luck or anything like that. Yep, that's why. Actually, can I use my inspiration to make him roll again? I'll allow it. Oh, sweet. I will allow it. Wisdom saving throw. There. Yeah. All right, mark off your inspiration. Your your Thanksgiving is done. <laughs> <laughs> Leftovers are <laughs> over. Uh, and it is affected by slow. I'm going to give him a tiny little net. So it has minus two to AC. Uh, and if you want to know it's AC, you'll have to use uh, insight. Uh, dexterity saving throws can't use reactions. Okay, very good to know. It can use on its turn either an action or a bonus action, not both. Can't make more than one melee or ranged attack a turn. Okay. Okay. Uh, it doesn't say anything about paragon actions. No, I think those things tend to be separate. Okay. Okay, good to know. Rain, does that end your round after you slow the core spawn worm? Uh, she's going to take a couple steps back just to keep some distance for now. All right. Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me just count that out. 5, 10, 15. Yep, yeah, okay, that's good. She'll stay right there. Top of the round. Round two. Flix, you're up. Uh, the worm has a kashaba in its tentacles, and he is restrained. Oh, the hell with that. Um, uh, Christina? Yeah. If, can it perceive me if it's using, like, I presume it's using blind sight the way all this other core nonsense does? Is that a fair shake? You don't have to answer. I can insight it. But my, the reason why I'm asking is that I would get advantage on all my attacks if I'm outside of its blind sight radius. Because it can't perceive me. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, hold on one moment. Uh. I don't want to waste my bonus action. Yeah, my yeah, it would. Ahead. Um, hold on, let me just double check this range. Yeah, yeah, you would have advantage. All right, sweet. Uh, I literally can't do anything to get Akasha out of its grip, but I can shoot the shit out of it. I mean, that, that's uh, also great. I am going to use my bonus action to uh, do my hex mark, though. My hex blades curse. Okay. You're going to hex it? Uh, not hex, hex blades oh, curse. Oh, hex blades curse? Okay. Oops. Yep. I will mark it as hex it. So I crit on a 19 up, and I do plus three damage on all my attacks. And, uh, yeah, flicks Akashaba! And unloads on this thing. 
But can you get it before Akashaba is squished into a fine paste? Uh, I'm gonna do my damnedest. If Akashaba dies, though, you may get a real cleric next time. Uh, <laughs> right. a 17 uh, I'm not hits. gonna bother with Marks, because that hits. Alright, so that's uh, 24 damage. 24. All right, your crossbow bolts sink into it, and more slow begins to ooze out. Thankfully, not getting on top of Akashaba. Uh, another one hits for 19. The massive worm and moves slowly, and it's a very easy target flex. That was, that was my haste attack and not my bonus attack. 18 uh, hits. Another 20. So, okay, that was 24, 44, 50, 63... Plus another nine. All right. Damn. Flix done a massive amount of damage yeah, to this worm. 72, 72 total damage. Let him go. Uh, it you kind of like rocks Alex, backwards. Son of a bitch. Uh, it roars as the crossbow bolts hit home, hitting it in the vital areas of the eye parts question mark uh, and it tries to shake them off like flies buzzing around its head <clears throat> flex does um, that end your round let's see uh, <clears throat> i will zip through the air over here um it can't really hear me, can it? It's not reacting. Uh, it's probably reacting a lot more to my crossbow bolts poking it. Uh, I insight. mean, yeah, it reacts to that. Go ahead. What would you like to know? Does it have any vulnerabilities? It does. It is vulnerable to cold damage. Oh, hell yes. Do we have any cold damage? Rain does. <clears throat> Uh, Flix, does that end your round? That will end my round. Uh, Flix shouts. Look at that heat! I imagine cold would damage it! Put out its fire, Rain. <laughs> Put out its fire, indeed. Uh, so the slow uh, speed is halved? I'm just double checking. Uh, speed uh, is halved, yes. okay. All right, good to know. You good, Flix? I am good. Okay. He's still 40 feet up, obviously. Uh, at the end of your round, Flix, the worm is going to take a paragon action uh, oh. and lift up the Kashaba and try and take a lovely bite out of him. I <laughs> damn it. What? No, no, wait, stop. I told you specifically not to do that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> C crouch. Uh, wait, hold on, actually. Uh, Rain, did you harm it last round? I'm just double checking. Uh, does slow count as harming it? I didn't oh, deal damage to it. You didn't deal damage to it? Okay. No. Uh, actually, Flicks it will just... Shitload. It will just continue squeezing Akashaba with the uh, barbed tentacles. Ouch. Yeah, that'll that'll do. All right, yep. it squeezes you, Akashaba. Your bones creaking. Twenty points of damage. Akashaba just yells out very lamely. That hurts. <laughs> uh, Akashaba, you're up. Okay, so I need to roll an eighteen. Dex save to get out of this, right? Yeah. That is correct. Ooh. Uh, it's not... It's, I don't think it's dex. Oh! It, it is. Be, yeah. Well, it should weird. be... It's grapple, right? Oh, wait. So it it is a grapple. Uh, escape DC 18. So, so you that, can use strength that, if you want to. But he succeeded, so... Oh, but he succeeded oh. anyway. I got the rare... <laughs> uh, you are three. no longer grappled. Uh, so you... Do I, like, fall to the ground, or...? Uh, yeah, you weren't very far up, maybe like a couple feet. He only like kind of picked you up off the ground to keep you from moving. But now you are back on the ground, safe and sound. Was that my, so is, 
performing a grapple check, like, is that my whole action? Uh, hold on, let me just check. Uh, you can, you still have move, you still have a bonus action. Okay. Uh, so bonus action, um, we are going to chug this potion. Okay. Slam it. And remember, you can run away from it if you want to. It can't take Oh, no, trust me, I'm aware. <laughs> and Akashpa is going to, uh, is it going to get an attack of opportunity if I run? No, no it's slow. No, it does not get reactions. Oh, nice. Okay. Good job, team. Akashpa is going to run behind this crystal. And, like, actually, like, he is, like, pressed up against it, like, very clearly terrified of this thing. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's not going to be inciting. He's not thinking about that right now. Okay, that's the end of his turn. All right. The worm. Denied of his delicious dinner of bugbear. It lurches forward. Half burrowing through the rock. Half slithering. The five, ten. Half speed. Fifteen, twenty. It is half speed. I am keeping that in mind. Uh, I was just going with your half of everything motif. 25, 30. That is half speed. One moment. All right, Rain. Why don't we bite you instead? Seems good. Uh, one second. My... My thing and my, uh, actual ability are saying two different numerical things. Hang on. That's so weird. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know. Sorry. Um, this is actually at a plus eight. Yeah, it's been rolling at a plus eight this whole time. Okay, it should be at a plus eight. So it says 13. It should be an eight. Your blurbs oh. are usually off. Yeah. Um, in I think terms something, of their numbers. something is weird with the scaling sometimes, I'm, but. I'm surprised it's not a plus 13. Plus 13 is pretty high. It's yeah, really for high. these big, super strong things, though, that's usually how it goes. Uh, that's true. Well, let me just double check. Uh, Rain, the worm is attacking you. Is this with a disadvantage? Uh, yep. All right. That misses. All right. I'm imagining rain like cartwheeling out of the way. Uh, no, does it only no get one attack? attack? Oh yeah, it only gets one attack because it's slowed. Yeah, yeah no matter what, how many attacks it gets, it only gets one. It rears up, slowly roars. Uh, Prismata is unconscious. Rain, you're up. Well, it's very convenient that he uh, saved me the distance here. Uh, well, actually, uh, I will... I will hit it with Ray of Frost first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you do four cold damage, buddy. Mm. Uh, one moment. The snake eyes on D8s feels real bad, though. Yeah. Uh, okay. Give me a moment. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, all right. <laughs> because you are within 10 feet of the worm, or excuse me, 20 feet of the worm, uh, the wild magic surge goes off. And apparently, a coatl, uh, <laughs> sensing a spell being cast, appears. The fuck? <laughs> Surprise! What uh, kind of Looney Tune shit is this? And just goes. Scra! And looks at the worm. Uh, apparently, there's a coatl here now. Looks like a winged serpent that Rain apparently has summoned with the wild magic of the slow. Uh, anyway, continue your turn. Neat. A ray Super of frost, uh, a 22 hits. 
for two cold damage, and it is vulnerable to cold. It will take double damage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, she will take her second attack. Okay. Right, I, I, I told you to put the fire out. What was that? I, I put Oops. a very small fire out. Fuck you, Flix. <laughs> Uh, is an 18 hit? Uh, 18 hits. Uh, he takes 10. 10 piercing damage. Okay. Um, and... Ugh. Do I stay or do I go now? Um... I... He will stay. I All will right. stay and keep his attention from Akashiba. A good uh, idea. Oh, insight check. Ooh, good insights. All right, what would you like to know? Uh, does he have any other special abilities that we haven't seen? Uh, so you are, <clears throat> you can just see by uh, using your eyeballs that he does uh, shed light in a 20 foot radius because he's, uh, you know, made of lava and it's emanating from inside of him. Uh, but it is kind of a blue, slow lava. Plava. Uh, other lava. You um, are, let's see, so you've seen the bite miss um, and you do know that he could potentially swallow you um, and you would have to kind of fight your way out of the stomach which would be very very uh, difficult to do because you have to do a ton of damage to the temi in order to work your way out you also take a bunch of fire damage if you're swallowed Ooh, that's not bueno oops uh hold on just a moment i don't know why that's sending it to uh as a private role but i will just link it in chat here there's the bite Okay. Does that end your round, Rain? Yep, that's it. All right. Top of the round. Round three. Flix, you're up. You are 40 oh. feet up. Yeah. Um, I can shoot it from here. And uh, I'm going to with murder in his eyes. Uh, Flix looks for vulnerable bits on the back of the worm to shoot at. Right. Oh, hey, using, Christina. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, sorry, real quick point of order. Uh, he does get to roll uh, each turn uh, to get rid of slow. Oh, yeah, you should check because it will affect whether... At the end uh, of its turn. Right. Okay. But this will affect whether... Uh, it should have rolled at the end of its last turn, and that will affect whether... Well, what its armor class is when we're attacking it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just looking at what the roll is. What's the roll? It's uh, 15 DC, or DC 15 Wisdom. DC 15 Wisdom. Okay, here we go. Uh, hey. Fails. Okay, so he's still slowed through his end of his next turn, at least. Excellent. All right, Flix, uh, all you. Yeah, Flix lines up and unloads again. Uh, that will hit. 20 hits for 20 damage. There's the sneak attack damage. Okay, six damage. So it's damage. actually 29. Uh, let me... Is the extra three from your Hexblade's Curse? Is that what it is? Correct. Yeah, it's a curse. Ooh, yeah. ooh fancy, fancy. I don't always use Hexblade's Curse, but when I do, it's on big fucking monsters. <laughs> ooh, damn. Ooh. Yep, that's you and Sharpshooter, man. Yep. Oh, it's so good. You just have so many ways of lining up uh, advantage. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, 22 hits for 21 points of damage. The bless also helps, but Jesus. I'm rolling. I'm rolling ex like ridiculously. I'm rolling like Christina levels of awesome right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I uh... just thwap, thwap, thwap. Every crossbow yeah, bolt like... is a winner finding all the vulnerable, like it doesn't even hit the large carapace, like every single one is just think sinking deep into meat between plates. Uh, let's see. Um, just to make sure I got all this right. Oh, were any of those 19s? Uh, yeah, those yeah. were the last two. The were. Last uh, two those, were. Were, those were crits then. 
Uh, then I need the crit damage, please. The Oka's hex plates crit. Fuck, dude. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So it's another six damage on top of everything else. All right. You're welcome for the haste, by the way. Uh, it's working out wonderfully, it's, Ray. It's I want to imagine that you're just like fucking hopped up, like you just took like a shot of espresso. Oh, and you're like, holy right. fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Flix is vibrating like a bumblebee. I totally forgot to roleplay the haste. Oh my god, what a wasted opportunity. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flix, does that end your round? Uh, yeah, let me calculate this up for you. Uh, that was an 83 damage round. Yeah, that was ridiculous. That was fucking beautiful. Turns out haste plus advantage plus bless is just... Plus slow. <sighs> yeah, plus slow. Beautiful. Um... Yeah, that's right. That's right, you giant phallic monstrosity. <laughs> Fill you full of holes. So many holes. <laughs> He's like keeping up a constant stream of invective through the whole fight. Uh, at the end of Flix's round, the worm is going to take a paragon action. Uh, rain, it's going to bite you. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, disadvantage? Yep. Eh. That is a miss. All right, Akashiba, you're up. The rain, uh or sorry, the worm like tries to charge down and bite rain. She just dodges out of the way. Uh, so, random question. Does this thing understand common? Uh, one moment. Let me see. Uh, you'll have to make an insight check to receive that answer. Bless. Eh? Thirteen? Uh, it understands deep speech, but cannot speak. So it only understands something called deep speech. Got That's it. correct. Okay. Wow, I literally can do peace. I actually do almost nothing to this guy. Um, you can dome him. Well, then it would that's... make radiant damage on both of us. Oh, uh, that's peace. true. That's true, because you can't turn that off, can you? Or can you? I, can uh, I mean, you could. You could always choose not to use a voluntary ability. Let's see. Blessed strikes. Um... It's not really showing me how to turn it off. Like it's just like... you can just opt to not not use it. That is that is entirely up to you. Okay. Uh, so as a bonus action, can you move my uh, sword twenty feet in this direction? Uh oh god. It's Where all, it's not gonna make it before ah! it's gonna be Okay. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Sword chin. No. Wouldn't it just be easier to dismiss it and then resummon it? No, it's, that's not how we do things here. Okay. Um, <laughs> sword Chan is a whole spell just, slot. What if I summon a new sword and it's not Sword Chan? Okay, we can't take the risk. Then it's um, Sword Sama. Sword Sama. Ah! Um, some Forger Base. Ooh, bless. Bless! He's got little bitty AC. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, hold on, well. I have to math. <laughs> Uh, hold on, it's minus three AC? <laughs> it's minus two. Uh, you miss. Okay, Akashpa, like, you just see Rain Akashpa, like, peek out from behind the crystal. He's so scared, he misses, and he goes back behind his little crystal. <gasps> I want to say before the slow, its AC was 18 or 19, based on the hits that we're hitting. So it's probably yeah. going to be uh, 16 or 17 AC. Okay, uh, that is Akashpa's turn. Scared little bugbear. The worm. The worm. Oh, he uh, big mad. Oh, he big mad. He big mad, y'all. It is time for the single attack. <laughs> uh, he is going to bite. Eighteen yeah. rain. That misses. The worm is Shit. so slow, so frustrated. Uh, it makes a wisdom saving throw to try and shake the slow effect. It's wisdom, yep. right? 15? Yep, 15 oh, wisdom. Oh, shit. Crits. That's okay. all right. We got two rounds out of slow. That's pretty fucking good. Yeah, that was amazing. The amount of damage that that probably saved is incredible. 
Uh, Prismoda's unconscious. Rain, you're up. <laughs> um, Rain is going to... I can cast a spell and a cantrip in the same round, right? Uh, yes, it cannot be a leveled spell. Right, okay. Um, then I am going to... I am going to cast Misty Step. Uh, I love me some Misty Step. It's a bonus action. Yep. 20. <clears throat> that gets me out of his his thing about Bob, right? Uh, yeah. Yep, I got to roll wild magic. One moment. Oh, fuck. It was the pointless then to do this anyway, because he was still going to roll wild magic. Yeah, I did was... it. I'm doing it. I'm nope, doing... it's fine. Go for it. We like mild magic. M mild magic? Hold on. Uh, wild magic. Uh, Bring me my table. Magic gone wild. Uh, hold on, my table is not popping up. this magic does. No! Uh, ooh, 10,000 wild magic searches? No, 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 that'll crash my browser. Hang on. So many coaddles. All right. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Rain, the caster experiences extreme discomfort in their stomach for two turns before finally releasing a monstrous belch for another turn. The belch functions as per the description of the spell Gust of Wind, with the direction of the wind being whichever the direction the caster is facing. You are currently facing the worm. Uh, okay, you have two turns of uh, stomach discomfort before you are going to Gust of Wind. Okay. <laughs> uh, your stomach begins to gurgle. As the magic begins to pull apart your essence. Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Now do your thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll cast Ray of Frost at it. You need a ginger ale, Rain. <laughs> uh, Twenty-four hits uh, for uh, eighteen cold damage. Yeah. Uh, there we go. A bit better. Rain. Rain just closes the distance again and takes her second second attack. Four, six piercing damage. Ah, okay. I do love, though, that the minimum that I could roll on the rapier is still better than that previous Ray of Frost with uh, vulnerability. <laughs> Put it out there. <laughs> That's it. That's Rain's turn. All right. Off the round. Round four flicks. You're up. Oh, You're putting well, all those okay. crossbow bolts go. in all the right places. Let's go. Am I not worth fighting? I'm right here, and I'm amazing, and you're ridiculous. He like zips over and, well, not that close actually. Eh, he's good. This should be fine, right? It still can't perceive me. I still have advantage. Uh, you're gonna have to insight. All right. Well, I'm gonna try it anyway. Uh, you let me know if I should be rolling uh, advantage or not at this range. Uh. Go ahead and roll advantage. I'll pick the one I like more. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to rattle off the three attacks one after the other. Uh, hold on. I actually do need to see how he's receiving you. I actually have to measure this. Uh, you have, you have advantage. Sweet. All right. And uh, none of those were 19s. So, no crits, but we do lots of damage. Uh, Flix, this barrage of attacks. 69. Nice. Uh, nice. <laughs> we'll nice. kill the core spawn worm. Do you want more cloacas? <laughs> I have more cloacas for you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and he, like, does a strafing run, and one of the crossbow bolts finally penetrates, like, the back of its carapace, penetrating deep into its brain. And with a horrible squelch and an earth-shaking thud, the worm flops to the ground and slow begins to leak from all the holes that Flix put in it. Apparently Flix plus haste equals rocket raccoon. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> My goodness, Rain, you've been holding out on me. This is an amazing feeling. Why haven't I been doing this the entire time? He is Where did you dead? learn this spell? Is I it... want to learn this spell. This spell I... is amazing. I heard a crash. Is it dead? It's 
I think it's dead. It's oozing. Oh, okay. I mean, it stopped moving. I can shoot it more if you like. He starts shooting it more. <laughs> Raid steps back. It's a really big target, but still steps back. if you can tell us christina but like i assume there was a line of play where like we like remove curse oh I, we haven't solved it yet never mind i'm just obviously this worked out really well but i'm curious what the other intended lines were <laughs> all right let's okay uh let's let's go Gosh, let's are you all right do you yeah. need do you yeah. need more potions no, he's fine. Honestly, you know, learning experience, uh, normally this is why we let you be in front. Uh, I am not so evasive as you in this thing. Uh, figure that out relatively quickly. So, again, lesson learned. Well, I feel like we learned that lesson in the reverse previously, so... So we're yeah, out of combat. I presume that haste lasts for one minute, correct? Yes, once one minute is up, you yeah. crash so, hard. Yeah, so Flix is, like, uh, zooming around uh talking about like just babbling his face off super excited he's doing loop to loops and then <laughs> out of nowhere he just kind of plummets into the water <laughs> just zero <laughs> all right please set your uh vertical to zero please he he ran out of the zoomies yeah <laughs> uh and then after three seconds like emerges from the water spluttering and going <laughs> you didn't tell me about that part rain I literally, you literally see me go through it every time I've used that spell, Flix. I don't pay that much attention to you. That's a Christina, little hurtful. Christina, how high up is this ledge? Uh, the ledge is only about two feet higher than the water. And the water is about a foot down. Hashblood jumps in and begins making his way with disadvantage, because he's not dashing. <laughs> slosh, slosh. To the uh, uh, rain will the investigate cold? the body, just in case. Uh, it's very cold. Ooh, press the digitation to dry off. You are dry. So it gets out of the water and shakes like a dog. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Uh, Rain, what exactly are you looking for? Uh, she's digging around this thing uh, to find any useful parts, anything interesting. Maybe this thing eats interesting things. Uh, uh, Rain, the first thing you that catches your eyes, you're looking over the corpse of this gargantuan lava worm uh, is what appears to be the, the hilt of a weapon sticking out from between a couple back plates. Hmm. Pulls it out. Uh, and you're not sure what you pull out initially. It looks almost like a cross between uh, a short sword and a shard of crystal. But it's embedded deep within the worm. It looks like a lovely sword. Uh, does it count as a short sword? Uh, one, or... one moment. I have to look. Uh, it is a short sword. Neat. Uh, uh, sorry, Kashba, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say, Kashba is going to roll a medicine check on the dragon that he's close up. And even with glass, I'm going to assume... Yeah, nine. Okay, great. <laughs> um, uh, the, the dragon appears to be exhausted. She lays there unconscious her eyes closed and her breathing very labored uh akashiba is going to cast cure wounds on the dragon Whoa. wow okay akashiba uh like hesitates for a moment understanding he has to touch the dragon and then just kind of like sucks it up and like put, places his hands like delicately on the dragon um, and begins praying to the light in his hands glow and exude holy healing energy the dragon's breathing becomes a, a little less labored and after a long moment one of her eyes cracks open and a diamond like iris 
tilts and regards you. And she kind of lets out a, a breath. <sighs> and in your mind, Ikashaba, you hear a psychic voice. And it's weak. Who, who are you? Ikashaba, like, withdraws his hands and, like, looks, make, makes eye contact with the giant eye. Oh, hello. I am Akashiba, and this is Flix, and we have come to rescue you. The dragon, very weakly, lifts her head, and unable to keep it aloft, she flops it back down. Oh. I have... Uh, been sick for a very long time little one my time grows nigh there is Browns. no hope her eyes shuts again she appears to have resigned herself to her fate Akashiba uh, casts cure wounds again <laughs> Uh, you heal her for 19 damage. And although some of the glimmer comes back to her body, when you press your hands into her scales and suffuse her body with healing energy, the light pours into her and creates a shimmering rainbow around the room. But you see dark blue clouds emanating from her, wafting off of her like a seeping corruption, leaving her body as you infuse her with light. Uh, Akashiba frowns again and, and turns and looks in Rain's direction and bellows, Rain, get over here! Uh, Rain, you are, uh, you cast Gust of Wind? <laughs> uh, you... In response, Rain belches, like, catastrophically. Uh, Rain, you propel forward a strong line of wind from your mouth, uh, 60 feet long, 10 feet wide. Um, any creature in the line must spend two minutes movement, blah, 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 disperses gas or vapor, extinguishes candles, torches, uh, extinguishes flames. Uh, it moves the corpse back, like, five feet. Well, I was hoping Rain would face us and send Flick's ass over tea kettle. Uh, actually, you know what? It's, it fails the uh, strength saving throw. It goes 15 feet. Uh, and it just kind of folds up against the mouth of the cave that you came from. Excuse, er excuse me. Dude. Uncool. <laughs> uncool. Uh, yes, Akashiba, are you... Do you know what's wrong with her? Uh... So Kashima saw these blue clouds. He's going to make an arcana, arcana check. I guess this would probably not be medicine. So um, I'm going to assume it's arcana. Now you can roll whichever is better. Okay. My medicine is, is a lot higher. So I'll yeah, go ahead and roll that. Bless. Okay, and then bless. Bless. So does Kashima know exactly with uh, with a 17 what these clouds would be? Uh, she appears as if she is corrupted by the slow uh, dragons are innately extremely magical creatures. And the proximity to the slow seems to be tearing her apart from the inside. She, It is hard for her to keep a, a form in this realm. Uh, Akashiba looks over to, to Rain and Flix. I think we have to get Dragon away from slow. Slow seems to be a breaking body. Um... I, I mean, I can, I can alter her form to make her small, and we can walk out of here with her. That's perfect. Um, yes. If if she would permit such a thing, I'm pretty sure I can't. I'm not going to be able to effectively will it against. Yes, against her will. Do you 
do you are you able to do that and still have enough for us to stealthily get to buy uh, what is outside? If we take a short rest, I I could, um, but I I can't have both spells up at the same time. Kasha but nods. Um. Um. I, hmm. Kakashiba looks at Prismata. Uh, this is Rain Silversong. She wishes to make you into a smaller dragon so that we can remove you from this place. I think it will help your condition. The dragon uh, closes her eyes and she you, you hear her voice in your mind. I do not believe I could resist if I wanted to. Do what you must. Uh, here's here's the thing, Akashaba. If I if I do this, we're gonna have to take probably make a run for it past that thing. Unless, Flix, maybe you can lure it away again, um, at least to give us a running chance. But if there's anything, there's there's not gonna be any coming back here. Well, after she's feeling better. If she feels better, then... Uh, when we... she feels better. Yes, when she feels better. She can aid us. Hey, okay, um, so Flix, you make you make distraction then, yes? Yes. No, uh, no, no. A uh, Prismata, like, lifts her, lifts her head. No, no. The, she looks at the crystal that's behind her. The, the massive thing taking up most of the room. I understand what is happening. I know I the, the slow is coming up through the ground and encroaching on my lair. I'm sorry, little ones, that I could not do more. She uh, looks up at the crystal. I have been unable to stop the flow of the slow, but I have done everything in my power to keep its energies from tainting the crystal. She looks down at you three. You adventurers from surely a nearby city. Tell me, does Borealis still stand? Yes, it, it does. She breathes a sigh of relief. I have taken in most of the emanating slow from the area into my body in order to staunch it, to stop it from reaching the city. But I cannot take it much more. Little ones, you... You must warn Borealis. We're not going to leave you here to die. She looks down at you. With the white dragon rhyme fang constantly gnawing at my door. And my body growing weaker. I will not be able to put up much of a fight for longer. Well, on that subject, if you're able to help us out with a couple of small acquisitions, we might be able to take care of this rhyme fang problem for you. Or at least with your aid. I am in no state to be of much help, little one. What is it you need? Well, we just need a pair of Borealis shards. 
large enough to power an airship, different colors. You seem to have an excess of them, he says, kind of looking around the cavern. She shakes her head. Not all shards are made equally, and each serve a different purpose. In my weakened state, most of the shards that could help you have been taken away by Rhymefang. He desires my hoard more than any other. And I have been unable to retrieve the shards. Well, the problem is that we need the shards to reach him. Surely there's something left. She looks down at you. Yes. The winds of Rhymefang's cliff would surely tear you apart. But, she tilts her head and slowly gets to her feet. There is one way. Uh, she gets, like, hop, not hops down, but kind of slowly crawls down into the water, half splashing awkwardly and she falls down at one point she gets back to her feet I sense the good in your hearts little ones and I know you wish to aid me. Akashiba nods at that very enthusiastically. I do not have much strength left. But I may be able to bear you near Rhymefang's lair. Oh. She swivels her head down to look at you. Why? You seem surprised. Yes. Quite surprised. You have a desire for shards, and I wish for them to be home. Them in Rhymefang's hands is nothing but trouble, and he will cause much destruction. But the last of my power, at the very least, let me bear you near his lair. If there are shards you desire, you can find them there. But you will have to deal with Rhymefang himself. What about your crystal here that you've been protecting do we need to do something before you leave she looks at it and back to you this crystal is my heart I cannot move it or take it or give it and it beats just as yours beats in your chest. And when the light of that crystal fades, so will I. It is Surely only a there matter has to of be. time. Surely there must be some way of siphoning the slow away from... Like, it can't possibly infect everything it touches. It must have some weakness. Some reaction Prismata <clears throat> lowers her head into the water tire tiredly I do not know of such a way the slow it it tears out our being we dragons bridges 
between this realm and Arctis. It threatens our very being. It unravels us. If you can find a way to reverse or slow it, I could only be so hopeful. But until that time, you and Borealis is in grave danger. Sounds like first thing is to deal with Rhymefang, then. She nods. Is it, though? Is... I mean... Shit, like... There has to if... be a way to save you. I mean, if this thing is infecting everything in Borealis and, and all of Arctis, surely this is the most important thing. I mean... I, I'm sorry, guys. I know we have other things to do and other people to aid, but this feels really damn important. And I I know I can solve it. Prismata, like, shuts her eyes for a moment. And I have lived on for many a year in the slow. It takes you very slowly eats away at your essence. It may not be something you experience even in your lifetime. I would surely hope not. And I hope for all of Arctis's sake that the slow is eventually stopped. But I do so what I can to protect the people of Borealis. Man, it sounds like solving this issue with Polaris is not possible in a short amount of time. But we can do something about the rhyme thing. Prismata nods. With me in my weakened state and Rhymefang in possession of Borean shards, he will soon turn his sights on Borealis itself. He is a creature of rage and spite, wishes to see nothing but destruction. Well, if we're to face Rhymefang, is there anything in your horde that will aid us? He looks down at you. Looks around. This is my horde, little one. I do not sit on piles of coins, trinkets and baubles. My horde is the essence of Arctis itself. Crystallize manifested, utilized. I'm sorry, I do not have more. No, that's... It's, it's fine. It's no, fine. this is great. I just don't accept that this is fucking hopeless. Fine, Akasha, but we can... We, we I can agree. Leave. I agree with you, Rain. Let's get Prismata out of here. Let's make sure that Rhymefang can't harm her when we arrive. And let's but, fix this. But if this is her heart, it doesn't matter. That's... Fine. No, it, it, it's fine. Well, it's not fine. I agree with you. We shouldn't just accept things the way we, they are when we have the not opportunity to change them. things. Akashiba turns. We are not accepting things. There is something we can do now, so we go to do that. After, we see what else we can do. We have to do it one step at a time. And this is what we can do right now. This is what Prismata wants. Prismata, who brought the slow here? Or did it get here on its own? It got here on its own. Possibly. As an infection to the the ley lines of Arctis. The slow itself will tap into a line similar to one might 
puncture a precious human vein. And from there flows down the rivers of magic. We, unfortunately, sit on the chart of where the slow touch the ley line. And this entire branch potentially become corrupted. And us dragons, crystal dragons, specifically. We have done what we can to put a stop to the slow, even taking in its magical properties into our own bodies. We, we can only slow it, not stop it. I, I would love to talk with you more while, while we're traveling. Anything you can impart would be helpful. Of course. About slow. I will answer what I can. She, like, bumps over in the water a little bit. And kneels down. Come. Climb upon my back. The crystals on her back kind of flatten down a little bit, so you're not sitting on, you know, a, a jagged rock. <laughs> like, snestles down between her horns. And she, like, slowly kind of starts thumping out of her lair. Thump, thump, thump. Oh, um, we have a friend that uh, should come he, along. He'll, he'll be coming. Oh, we were going the other way. I think she knows how to leave her own horde. Flix. Well, I, I, I know. I didn't know that there was a back entrance. All right. And as Prismata stomps through the water to the back end of her lair, she takes you through a couple twisty tunnels until they almost go entirely vertical. And with great effort, she hunkers down and takes to wing, projecting herself up, up through the spires of Arctis into the crystal clear blue skies beyond. And that is where we'll end today's session. Huzzah! All right! Hooray! All right, dragon stuff! Uh... Are you guys, do you, Here's are you a guys, dragon. You murders wanna, it immediately. You guys want to kill a dragon? You guys want to kill another dragon? Yeah. I want to kill the bad dragon. Yeah, do we level? Do we level? Do we level? Are you going to level on the back of the dragon? Yes. And find out what that short sword does. I mean, in I'm terms of like gaining experience, there are very few experiences like riding on the back of a dragon. So I feel pretty That's true. I feel like it's worth a level by itself. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh... You all can level to level nine. Hog? Hog? Oh, shit. Yes. Level nine is huge, actually. Level nine That's fifth level spells. is huge, and you are going to need it, because you are going to be battling a white dragon. Fuck. We gonna get killed. Uh, yeah, so prepare yourself, and whatever may lurk in a white dragon's lair. Can I have another haste? Why do you want every haste? Because I mean, I, now I'm addicted. I mean, I don't actually even have haste prepared right now. <laughs> I prepared slow instead. So no, you can't have another haste. Oh. Unless How about we're gonna get castings of shield. Um, I mean, yeah, I can give you that, but like, are we gonna actually get a, a full rest here? I mean, I did squander my two level four spells trying to heal this dragon who insists on dying. Uh, so <laughs> so um, <laughs> as you guys are flying through Arctis uh, over to Gale Cutter's End, um, you will all be suffused with the energy from Prismata, uh, acting like a long rest without having to take another long rest. Um, so let it be known that she is giving you her life force, uh, and you killed the dragon. Don't do. Don't be yeah. like. Don't I, I, be I, like so that. yeah, you can have your long rest. Sure. 
<laughs> Go ahead, guilt free smile. Damn. Not like this is not I... this is not cruelty free long rest. I mean, you can decide not to take your long rest. Uh, but I really want my level four. Um, okay, anyway. <laughs> no, you you need your long rest. You're going to be suffused with power, whether you like it or not. Uh, but please, next session, be level nine. Okay. Uh, oh, I, figure I'm out your spells. I'm level nine right now. <laughs> what? I, I actually forget. How do I level up in uh, D&D Beyond? It's been so long. Oh, yeah. So you, you, just... you click on your uh, the little oh, gear so next to your name in the character sheet. It's Sorry, I click on the what next to my name? There's like a little gear. Uh, it looks like an anvil, I think, doesn't it? Oh, did they change it? Here, let me look at it. It just says manage now. It's oh, just yeah, it's a little button. button. Okay, so on your sheet, um, next to your name on your character sheet, just hit manage. Yeah, I found it now. Yeah, and then manage your character and levels, and then go, go bananas. Bananas, bananas. Bananas. Uh, so prepare yourselves for a battle with a white dragon uh, and any sort of... Uh, things you may want to take for next session, because uh, otherwise we will play uh, Wednesday at six. Um, real quick, Nick, before I take a long rest, what did you want in your ring? I have uh, you have three spell slots. I can do a slow. I can do a lightning bolt. I can do a dispel magic, a counter spell. I can do a bunch of oh. shields, whatever. Yeah, a bunch of shields. Is fine. Okay. Uh, I can do up to four shields, so however many you need. Three before I take is how many spell slots that I have. Great. Hates would be great, but you don't have it, so we'll we'll do this. I will probably put it back for this next one, but like, yeah, but you we were going up against one big bad. I wanted you're to need that. Yeah. I put in slow because we were going up against one big bad, and that's better than making myself vulnerable. Let's see what level five spells look like for your boy. Oh, well, they looking yeah. pretty good. Yeah, actually, I will take uh, one casting of uh, absorb elements and two castings of shield. <laughs> sure. Oh shit! I can just I can call up my local divinity and ask them up to three annoying questions. Oh, <laughs> oh! You should totally do that as often Hello? as you can. Hello, the light. It's it's Akashaba. <laughs> uh, Akashaba, when you call the light, who picks up on the other end? I don't fucking know. I feel like it's well, you're gonna find out next session. <laughs> the light is nebulous. It's just you know, you didn't bring back anybody from the dead, did you? No, well, you're, you're gonna. Brave. It's gonna be a fucking ascended uh, shenanigans because now Akashaba's got a direct line. Yeah, can we have a fucking conversation with Tessa Polcanis fucking unleashing like literal magic aids yeah. on the world? <laughs> I'm yeah, sure it's pretty bad. And be like, yo, I need you to explain your actions. Okay, so uh, let me let me be real. I was like, look, guys, blue lava, and you're like, ooh, blue lava, and now I'm like, blue lava is killing the world, and you're like, no, yeah, I don't, I don't like the blue lava up, anymore. Pick up. Pick I didn't like the blue lava in the first place. Pick a real threat to this world, right? You've got Lacaris and the crystal. By the way, this is now the post. This is now the talk show post game. This is the Talking Dead segment, basically. <laughs> Um, you know, you've got Lacaris and a fucking crystal. Yeah. You've got slow. Yeah. Like, you know, even Marvel's like, yo, here's one bat at a time. <laughs> well, you know, life is complicated. We have to we have use our advice. So, um, Rob, like, you, you got, can you be totally forgiven because you... You totally forgot about the uh, vampire cabal uh, trying to round up artifacts to create an army of uh, undead oh, that's monsters. Like a, that's like a lesser... I'm sorry. <laughs> Rob, you know, totally, under other circumstances... Look at this guy like saying that the, the undead guys are the lesser evil. Okay, cleric of the light. I'm sorry. Rob, you didn't have the benefit of playing World of Darkness with us. Like, <laughs> Christina's all about, like, like... Like, she's got the whole next fucking, like, phase of the MCU planned out. Like, there's going to be a fucking, like, cosmic threat in every fucking new movie that we're going to be, like, launching from here on out. No, right? I, I, I'm downsizing from cosmic threats. I want uh, Okay, yeah, continental be, threats. There we go. Supposed to be, this was supposed to be, like, the friendly Animal Crossing thing. What happened? I remember we used to go to carnival. She did warn us. She you did know, like, warn us. That I pet. You guys are on the back of a dragon. I don't know why you're complaining. A dragon who's dying from magic aids. <laughs> it, was, it was really cute though, because like Arc just started off, oh, it's all wholesome yeah. and cute and homey, and it's like, 
I'm dying. You want to what? say, no, save eat me. My <laughs> life has to be drained. Let me shake the, oh, stumble, stumble, fall. Oh, I will now aid you with the very last of my strength. Yeah, you, you know, I, like, I like to, like, I'm like, hey, I have all these healing things. Can I help you? And the dragon's like, nah, just let me die. <laughs> I mean, how many how many great like good guy NPCs has Christina mercilessly murdered in our World of Darkness campaign? Like, there's a yeah. lot of names that I've crossed out on that fucking character <laughs> list over time, our and not even Excel half of them yeah, are we didn't people even get we a murdered. Chance to get attached to Prismata before she murdered Prismata, I, don't, I feel like we built up Prismata in our heads, guys, and honestly, didn't didn't live up to it. Like, it was. We're gonna be friends with Prismata. That's that's the goal. We're we decided we were going to be friends Prismata, with Prismata, and then Prismata's, Prismata's like, I don't want to be friends with you. I would rather die. What? <laughs> Prismata <laughs> loves <laughs> friends. Prismata uh, just understands that the slow is probably going to kill everybody in Borealis and is like, yeah. no, I'm going to eat that instead. Yeah, it's like fucking Prismata being played by Matthew McConaughey right now in like Dallas Buyers Club, like because this is fucking tragic. <laughs> Prismata's way to start off way less homophobic than him, though. Oh, That's fair. Like, Have you seen Dallas hopefully. Buyers Club? It's a great movie. I never. Oh no, it's Jared Leto. Jared Leto's the one who like wastes away, isn't it? In that movie. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Not important. Um, quick question for you guys mechanically: mm. Do you want Flix to continue to be able to produce illusions at will? Or do you want him to do even more damage <laughs> with Eld Eldritch Smite? I feel like your illusion stuff has gotten us by. Like we're we're a pretty he like long rest heavy comp, and I like yeah. that your long your illusions like buy us some alternatives for dealing with things rather than like literally having to fight with every single thing because it's very hard for me. And, and I, I think probably Rob feels the same way. It's very hard for me to marshal resources over like multiple small fights because it's yeah. very difficult especially with like the way the way things scale like with just more damage like if we just get fucking punked by a few bad rolls like it's we gotta dump a lot of stuff in to yeah get out. okay i found like ever since i got blessed strikes like i found like a good equilibrium for the most part in most fights like i'm just kind of a melee person and i use a spell slot to summon a sword that's like kind of my thing now because like even even the fire spells now in terms of like spell economy don't usually don't do enough damage to justify casting them on fire. Right? Like, that fireball, like, that level 4 fireball, people were like, nah, I hit my roll, and you're just like, okay. Well, to be fair, if you can bump up your wisdom, like, that will be yeah, much more effective. Yeah, yeah, the thing the thing about damage spells in D&D is that they're great for hitting a bunch of stuff. So, mm -hmm. if yeah. you have a lot of things, they're very... They don't typically do single-target damage real well. They kind well, of... Well, like, it's usually, like, fire, like, AoE damage, right? Like, you could be a good single target caster, like a utility caster, or you could be, like, you know, a wizard or a warlock who just has these great AoE spells. But, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, actually, the really great single target casters actually tend to be, like, the warlocks because they get their shit back on a short rest, so it's it's a freer expenditure, like, things like Eldritch Bolt and Eldritch Blast yeah, and shit and like that. Yeah, even then, they're doing their damage with a cantrip and a yeah. bunch of... But, like, a fireball in ideal better. circumstances is, like, super good, right? Yeah, it's so much damage. But if you're yeah, only fighting, I, like, I, one to two people, it's, like, meh. Yeah, I think yeah. Like, if I can if I can get my wisdom up, I think like things like scorching ray are just gonna matter more because like my scorching ray is just like. Oh yeah, wisdom also is your to hit roll for your spells too. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I feel like like scorching ray for a level four spell, like I'm always a little hesitant because it's like it's only a plus six. So like if I don't if I don't hit with like two of them, then it just feels like garbage. It is usually less efficient to cast like to up cast a spell. Like usually spells don't. Uh, they yeah, don't well, scale by being yeah. upcast as well as just get the spells at that level. Like that's that tends to be the most effective use of those spells is at level in terms of payout versus like investment of resource. But yeah, but it's it's the, you're paying for the versatility, right? I just got at level five. I just got flame strike, so that's forty six fire plus forty six radiant. So okay. oh yeah, and you just get that one probably for free. I would assume like it's just always lo uh, loaded. A creature takes 46 fire and 46 radiant damage on a failed save. Yeah, so that's just like my, I just get that at uh, fifth level. Yeah, and that's but that's that's always prepared for you as like yeah. the cleric of light. Yeah, so that's like yeah. that's like my new high damage spell from what I can tell. Um, yeah, so like, mm -hmm. I no, I, I take your point, and I think like 
for me, it's just kind of like raising wisdom over time. But I also think like my character's like role, you know, is like Flix becomes like much more capable of just dishing out the kind of damage he was dishing out in that last encounter. Like no, role, I was rolling his stupendous. rolls were well nutty. The, so the yeah. problem with Flix there is that he has to take a negative to his attack roll. So like we have like we can do things to enable it. We just happen to do all of the things to enable it there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the slow, it, and like the slow is super good when he's yeah. doing yeah. that sort, like that sort of stuff. Like right. I'm just going to start getting into a lot more of those save or suck spells that'll help with that stuff, but yeah, it'll be hard to land them. My, uh, right. my level five spells, to be honest, like I, I feel like like situationally they could be really good. Like the ones that just allow me to like mind control Fey and like celestials and stuff like that. But, oh, what are you um, looking at Rob? Is that dominate uh, monster or whatever? No, it's like planar binding. I think. Oh, planar oh, binding. Yeah. That one. Say. That one is not a combat spell. Keep that in mind. That's like magic circle. That takes time to do, I believe. Uh, casting time one hour. You attempt to bind. Oh, so how does this work? Like, I literally just have to sit by one of these things for like an so, hour. Okay. That's so like an RP hour. situation. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. So say you find uh like the earth elemental back there, and instead of uh you know killing it. You want to take an hour, you subdue it, and then you bind it. You pair planar binding with magic circle specifically. That's like yeah. those two spells since like the dawn of D&D have been like bread and butter. Um, you usually do magic circle, lure something into your magic circle, or summon something into your magic circle, yeah, and, and then, then you bind it. planar binding on it. Yep. So I also, I also have summon celestial like difficulty that takes concentration so like i don't think this is better than bless oh so summon celestial that's like part of the new range of spells they just added that's where my summon construct is comes from it's that same suite of spells that's just the the celestial version of it yeah and i mean it seems like they actually like are pretty fucking mean but um it just bless is so good like <laughs> bless honestly feels like pretty broken most of the time so like i just don't yeah there's ever a world if i can only have one concentration spell where it's not bless yeah that's where i'm at like it, it's tough to like pick up a bunch of different concentration spells because then if i like actually do land one it's like okay but i don't now i just don't drop it like right like i landed the one in the fight with the abishai on like the polymorph which was clutch right. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah but like can't yeah. can't leave it like can't let it go now and then like okay now just like literally 75 percent of my spell list that i have prepared is just like moot yeah yeah i think like see i'm okay with things like banishment because banishment are like offers like this kind of like risk reward thing that's worth it like if I banish was a great huge, spell. Right, like if I oh. banish a huge, like the thing like we were fighting, right? Like, okay, we, we kind of just win the fight, right? Like it's coming back, but like we just set it up to just like immediately die. Um, if we so are fighting like, fiends, yeah. it's just gone forever. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. like, like if you land it. worth dropping bless to me, but like a lot of other things on my like concentration things, like especially the auras, I don't understand for the life of me from a balance perspective, why auras are not a separate thing. Like auras do not seem like independently strong enough to me to where like they can't coexist with a concentration spell and like i feel like i feel like clerics the way i'm playing this cleric it would have like a more clear defined role as to what it's supposed to do i think the problem is that like from a domain perspective like fire is like okay fire gives you some teeth which is fine but like you kind of trade off like a lot of like the really cool cleric things you could do i don't know that's just how i read it you're you're picking up. Oh. You're starting to get high enough level and enough experience. You're picking up on the weakness, I think, with casters and five E. Casters yeah. and five E are way depowered from what they've been in previous like incarnations of D and D, and it's yeah. entirely because concentration spells are kind of suck. Like the no. most of them just suck. They're still really, really, really powerful. Casters are still better than melee for everything but single target damage. They literally do everything in the game better than like. But that that it. depends on your game. That just depends on like the game that you're playing and like what you're like mm, where mean, your game pretty, is going. It's pretty agreed upon, like in general, that casters are capable of more overall. Especially after you guys start getting up into fifth and sixth level spells, like the problems that you can solve with that magic oh, are sure. things that like a martial character is just not going to have any. I, I think like, right. what I want to clarify is like I'm not even like power level. Yeah, there are some situations where like I watch other things that are going on, I'm like, well, I can't like get anything near to that and I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. I'm more just kind of like mildly miffed about, it feels like I can't have as much fun with my classes as I want to because of concentration as a mechanic. Yeah, concentration, concentration as a mechanic really punishes like the cool things that you can do right. in combat. Like I agree, there's a whole bunch of spells that shouldn't be concentration that just are, but they're so weak already that like they're you you can never use your concentration on them and you, the, the auras absolutely I would totally agree with a bunch of the smite spells are like that 
Well, this auras. is why, like, I when when it comes to auras and things like that, I love putting aura effects on items so you can get the effect of an aura but not have to fuck with concentration. Yeah, so, that's, that's probably the best answer. Oh, uh, one thing that I do would suggest, though, Rob, is that you pick up the sacred flame cantrip uh, if you're willing to look into it. Um, Let me see if it's like actually in there. Because thaumaturgy is is like fun thematically, but you barely use it. And I think that having, because you have a melee, you have Word of Radiance, which is great for stuff that's close up, but Sacred Flame will give you a ranged option that isn't even an attack roll, it just forces a saving throw. Also, yeah. what you guys are telling me, especially Akashaba, is I need to make a homebrew magic item that's just like a necklace of auras where it's like, your auras don't invoke concentration checks, and then just, ah, just be done with it. Yeah, that's we'll cool. Like, but I don't, I don't know if that hey guys, I gotta hop off actually. Oh, uh, good okay. game. Thanks, Christina. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. All right. Oh, good night. All right. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. So like, yeah. but like some of your auras are like amongst the best spells in the game though. So like, for what, example, what are what are the auras you're looking at, Rob? Let's see. Aura of well, you got aura of life, aura of vitality, aura of purity. What else? Oh, we got I was here? thinking um, aura of this. Spirit Guardians is what I was thinking of as an aura, but I see what you're talking about. Like, those aura spells aren't very good. Uh, I'm trying to, like, actually filter them. Okay, aura of vitality, aura of life, and aura of purity. Look at aura of vitality. Healing energy radiates from you in an aura within a 30 foot radius until the spell ends. Aura moves with you, centered on you. You can use a bonus action, cause one creature in the aura, including you, to regain 2d6 hit points. Yeah, I mean, I. I agree that these do kind of suck up a concentration slot. It's a great, it's a great uh, ability to heal up the party between fights when you can't take a short rest. Yeah. It's amazing for that. Yeah, I, again, I'm not saying, this always just comes down to me to the context of like, literally, would I use this over Bless? That's the problem, It's right? context, right. though. Because it's That's like, Bless also... is good in combat, but it's kind of meh well, out of combat, out right? Of combat for skill checks. But this yeah, is like amazing. you just sit or like you sit around Akashaba and then wait for him to like pump you full of healing for a minute. And this like this has the capacity to do what is 2d6 times what 10 round 10 rounds? That'd be 20d6 healing? Like that's insane. Yeah, it's good healing, but it's not a combat spell. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's I, what I'm I saying. Feel, it's the context of when you're using it. Right? Yeah. Because Bless is good in combat. This is like, oh, we're doing a bunch of shit back to back to back. Uh I need to heal in between it, so stand yeah, around me and get the, like, the eels. If auras just work to where I could activate them without them costing a spell slot, like I like, I would be fine with that, right? Yeah. If I was just like, okay, fight's over, I'm gonna take off bless, I'm just gonna activate this aura without consuming a spell slot, and then I'll put on bless again later. Like I would honestly be fine with that. It's just, you know, okay, I cast a level like I cast a level one or two bless, great, and then I have to cast like a level three, like it being a third level spell too. It's just like, at least where I am now, I just, it, it's one of those things where it's like really costly for me to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's intended. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, and I like, I do enjoy Cleric, but it's just one of those things where like, every time I get like a bunch of new spells, every time I see that C next to it, I'm just like, oh. Right, yeah. right, and, that, and that's like, uh, that's, uh, that's a, a really bad problem. Group, like, well, it's the problem when you make a spell that's too good, right? Because you have bless, which every like every cleric has bless because it is just so good, and right. it's like, wow, should we just ban bless? Like, yeah. should I actually ban a spell from D and D? Bless created. You leave my bless alone. Mm. Yeah, I but like it, it creates that problem, right? Where his entire concentration thing is like, is it better than bless? And I hate that. Like, I hate that. But, but it, it every, also does but every class has that that question. There's oh. like staple spells where it's like is this spell better than x y or z if not then what else does it do so one one thing i will say though to the defense of blast aside from it just being mechanically very strong is like i found as somebody who is no, again somebody who has only ever played fighters i was able to like once you all were like rob get blessed i immediately felt like i mattered and made an impact in the party like, you make a huge impact on the party oh yeah but that's what i mean it's like but I can immediately tell, even when I'm not checking fireballs, like I can just see very material results from an accessibility standpoint that I, a newbie cleric, am still valuable valuable to my party because I have this ability, and that feels really good. So for what it's worth, Rob, the reason my build works is because of your character. Without Bless, I have a plus three to hit. I miss constantly. 
No, but that's like, that's what I mean. It's a great feeling. So like again, at the end of the day, like it all just kind of like levels out to like, yeah, I don't really like the concentration mechanic, and sometimes it stops me from doing fun things I'd want to do. But I am able to constantly just be like, okay, the thing I provide just by having this one spell on completely justifies like all the other like boneheaded decisions I made I might make <laughs> because having blast is just a hundred percent of the time better than not having. Well, here, here's the thing, like, we can theoretically have Akasha Bell, like, make a magic item where it's just, hey, Bless is maybe, like, no longer a concentration spell or, like, no longer takes up that slot, but it's only for Bless. And maybe it takes up, like, a magic item slot or something, like, something else that's a little more cumbersome. Uh, right. But still, like, like, tones an down. Or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, like, tones that down so you can open up your concentration for other stuff, like. Yeah. I, I want because you to do other stuff besides be a blessed bot. Like, being a blessed bot is just not fun. Well, I, I also, for the record, like, I kind of assume there's going to be, like, a jumping off point at some point in this campaign where either, like, Akashba dies or, like, wanders back into the woods, and then I'd probably just play something else. So, like, yeah, you think that. Me, you think that, and then, like, six years pass when you're playing the same session. <laughs> no, that, that's fair. Um, yeah, I think, like, that sounds like a cool fix to it in the future. Um, but it's not, like I said, it's not like right now I'm, like, not enjoying myself. Like I said, I just occasionally am, like, It'd be cool to use some of these other concentrations. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. I'm going to bounce, but yeah, thank you guys. This was fun, um, and I look forward to playing again on Wednesday. Yeah, good times. All right, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Cool. All Bye. Right, good night. Good night. Uh, and thank you guys for watching on the stream. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, we're going to have more Arctis Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a great night.